There is the legend of the sport. His 12th final, Jamie Hughes, three times winner, the man they all have to beat. People bet on this and a lot of the money has gone on Andy Bennett who won in 2019 and 2020, had a quiet year in 2021, but he is the hot favourite with many people in the know this year. Those are the legends of the sport. We have emerging stars as well. The youngest ever contestant in the final, the next gen champion is Charlie Law, who's only 18 years of age. I said young and old. 61's not that old really, is it? But Steve Openshaw is our senior competitor. This is a man who fishes every day of his life. He owns his own lake and he's got quite a fan club behind him. He has come from the Wirral. They have come from far and wide. Felix Schurman has come from Germany, from close to Frankfurt. Fishing for F1s is going to be a new experience for him. He's making a big holiday, as is Andre Schieper, who has come from the Netherlands. He's not had that smile off his face for the whole week, meeting the champions there, Harry Bignall. He's here for the fun that he says. Andy Powers won just about everything in angling, apart from the Fisher Mania title. Will 2022 be his year? 2019, 2020, 2021, they've all been years for Sarah Taylor, who's been the next gen champion, she's been the ladies champion, she's the reigning ladies champion. Can she add the Fisher Mania title to her silverware? He's been smiling for the last 12 months. He is Harry Bignall, he is the champion in 2021. He absolutely romped it last year. Can he hold on to that title? Well, stay with us for the next five and a half hours here on Sky Sports. A major fishing event wouldn't be the same without the face of fishing, or as he's known, Fish Face, Keith Arthur. And of course, we need experts and a man who won it, and he's been partying since 1999, is Steve Cooper. Steve Cooper, oh, Steve Cooper, <laughs> Steve Cook. I'm thinking Nottingham Forest, Steve Cook. I'll get your name right, I've only got five hours. Right, we'll have a word with the chaps in a second or two, but let's make things official official as Keith said with a fish in there by going to our uh, master of ceremonies today getting us off to a bang is Andy Scott well ladies and gentlemen welcome to the beautiful Westwood Lakes for this year's Fishermania 2022 without further delay to all of our anglers the very best of luck it's all in <laughs> As you can hear, we are off to a flyer. There are crowds and people laugh when I say there are crowds at Fishermania. The two and a half thousand tickets went just like that. Impossible to get the tickets for this afternoon to uh, be here at this carnival, this festival of fishing. And they are Keith Arthur congregating around the big names here this afternoon. They certainly are. I looked very early on and Andy Bennett had a crowd behind him and that's just grown bigger and bigger. Paul Wright's got a, a Paul Wright's catching the fish. Is he catching the fish? No, he's, he's got lots of fans here and he's in a very, very favoured peg. Everybody fancies his peg. Steve Cook, you know what it's like. The, the nerves will be jangling, won't they? The cookie, they won't be able to get their hands on there. and they, No. They, they, they will settle as the afternoon goes on. They want an early fish. Get an early fish in the net and it calms you down straight away. Then you, you're not chasing up and trying to catch other people. And they've been trying since, well, when's the first qualifier? Was it 22 qualifiers up and down the country? How many goes did you have this year? Uh, seven. Just seven. seven? Just seven, yes. Yeah, how close did you get? I didn't. You didn't? I didn't, but I, I want to be here. <laughs> Keith, the new venue, how different is it? And what are we going to see that's different this year? Well, we've never had a venue like it before. It's, it's classified as a snake lake. In other words, it's quite narrow and meanders around a bit. It's like, it's like a bit of a W shape. Um, it's got a completely new species of fish for Fishermania. We've got F1 carp, and F1 carp are hybrids between common carp, king carp, and brown goldfish. And they were bred originally for the table in Israel, but they're ideal for fish farms because apparently they don't breed, so if you stock them, you have to buy some more. And, but they're tricky customers. There can be millions in front of you. You can get thousands of bites and miss every single one. They are just tricky. Steve, last year the fish were a little bit shy, they didn't want to be on the television. This year they're saying a lot of the anglers are going to get over £100, the, pounds, we're, we're hoping. There'll be lots of weights today. It'll be, I think it'll be a very close match overall, not a lot of weight between the top, say five or six. But there'll be lots of fish to be caught, lots of fish being seen caught by everybody. Everybody's going to have a decent day today. Well, we have been going on Fishermania since the early 90s, 1994 to be exact. 
Steve was the winner back in 1999. He has made the roll of honour. These are the previous winners. We've had 24 winners over the, in 28 years. Of course, uh, Matt Hall and, and Jamie Hughes have won it several times. Andy Bennett won in 19 and 20. Jamie won in 15, 17, 13. And he didn't keep up that kind of record every other year by winning in 2019. But there were different circumstances there. But who will, at around 5 o'clock this afternoon, get their name on that roll of honour and take home the trophy and also a big bag of money as well. This is what's on offer this afternoon in Fishermania. The champion takes home £50,000. The runner-up, £10,000. And the five section winners, £2,000. So, Keith, there's going to be a lot of competition out there. Absolutely. In, in the old days of winner take all, it was very easy to, to give up and feel you weren't in with the chance. Now everybody's got a chance winning two grand right up to the last few minutes. And it will be an exciting match today because, as Steve said, there's lots and lots of fish. And every, one fish will make a difference. And the first, uh, the, you say, getting off the mark is important. This is Andy Powers on peg 19. Andy, well, he's he's won virtually everything, hasn't he? But he's never had a great deal of luck when it comes to the final of Fishermania. One, no. of, one of the things about where he is, it's, it's a barbel area. And, and he's just had a, a, a barbel. He's fishing for barbel, so I've got to fish for barbel to win this today, where he is. And that's what we got. They're usually a bigger stamp of fish, the, the way more than the F1s. Andy Bennett's just had one, he's actually playing another one as well, just had another fish. So people are starting to catch fish straight away. Harry Bignall is catching. Harry's last year's champion, comes from Beverly, just uh, north of Hull in East Yorkshire. Life changing experience last year, but he's not gone out and splashed all the cash. He said that he's put it in stocks and shares and some in the bank and reinvested a little bit and also treated his four year old daughter. Wise move, a wise move. The interesting thing today is how the F1s respond. They're smaller than the carp, they're smaller than the barbel, they're much more prolific, but we just don't know how they're going to react. They normally get caught, I think I'm right Steve, close to the surface. Yes, surface. And that's where the fish are going to be most disturbed, isn't it, on the surface? And it's not really deep. Anyway, there's nowhere much more than a metre deep on the whole lake, but normally the F1s are in the top few centimetres. Are they going to, are they going to be happy there? Is there a favoured area of the lake for you this afternoon, Steve? It, 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 General rule when fishing is, in the summer, you want the wind blowing somewhere towards you. Uh, and this end of this lake where we are, where Andy Bent is, it's got all the wind blowing from bo sort of both directions. It gives you a calm sp spot in front of you and all the fish congregate in that area. So that's another reason why everybody thinks Andy's going to do really well. Well, Keith, I think we can have a look at the shape of the lake. It's one it's known as a, a snake lake, as we see Christian Jones there get one in the back and this is an optical illusion as well because it looks like pegs 24, 25, 23 have a lot more space to fish in but it's, it's very neatly and precisely measured out there. I paced out the pegs the other day, they're all 10 metres apart and we've got the usual fishermania pegging, two pegs in one peg out so everybody's either got blank water to their right or left so they have got plenty of room. Incidentally the lake is the green bit, you'd think that would be the grass but the lake is considerably greener than the grass with the prolific algae growth which the fish enjoy and is good for them but the, the, it's been so dry everything is rock hard and, and, and the normal grass is Wind burnt. direction today where's the wind going from and to? The wind is blowing from the southwest at the moment it's likely to go more westerly so it's actually blowing into about well, almost where we are so 16, 15, 16, 17 around there and it's it's almost finished where Andy Bennett is and he's got a layer of scum on the water in front of him which he's sort of in the last lee bit. One of the things that people don't know, with the amount of people we've got on the bank and movement walking out, normally most of the fish here are caught close to the bank, near bank where you fish off, to probably halfway out, not, not further across, but nobody knows whether it's going to push all the fish to the far bank and change how it normally fishes it, because it's such a big change to how it's normally fished. Well, guys are normally used to just fishing there, a bit of scenarity, aren't we? Without kind of uh, crowds behind. One man who's been very popular this afternoon, by the way, is just to my right hand side because he's, he's been handing out goodies to all of the anglers and, and the spectators this afternoon. Is Andy May, a former champion. Andy, uh, I'm sorry to hear that you didn't qualify this year. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm delighted that you're here as our expert. Now, give us a bit of an insight. How are the, 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 the ladies and the gentlemen going to be fishing out there this afternoon? Yeah, um, it's, it's obviously the unknown this year. It's going to be absolutely amazing to see it all unfold. Obviously, the first time it's been on the Snake Lake, um, they, they can't back away anywhere. You know, so what, whatever fish are in front of them, they, they're going to stay there. You know what I mean? They can't, they can't be off caught or anything like that. It's not like big open water where they can chase out or anything like that. It's, it's really going to be interesting to see it unfold. I can't wait for it. Andy, you've had plenty of experience of F1 fishing, I know. Yeah. What difference do you think that the crowds and, and 
everyone is going to make to, to how the fish um, respond today? Yeah, obviously F1s, um, it's the crucian carp strain in them, so they're notorious for being a bit finicky, a little bit shy. But I think the fact there's so many of them in here, I, I, I can't see it um, being, a, being a problem for them. I, th I think they will feed. Obviously, there's other fish like big carp and barbel as well. So, um, yeah, I, I think it'll just make everything else feed. So, can't wait for it. And they were coming back to you during the course of the afternoon as conditions change and things begin to evolve here uh, to Westwood Lakes in Lincolnshire. Now, back in the day, we used to have the peg draw the night before the event when the partners and friends used to go and, and pull the ball out of the hat. What we do now, a little bit more organised, we have it in the middle of the week so the anglers can come and they can have a look and they can prepare and they can do their homework, they can bring their gear down and they, they can cast an eye over it. They can't cheat and come and have a practice in the days before. So we had the peg draw earlier in the week and this is how things evolved. This is the moment that the 25 anglers and their families and their bankmen have all been waiting for. One and two are supposed to be very well fancy. Uh, five, six, seven and eight. And 17, 18 and 19, there's a spinner, an aerator. Where we want to draw, I mean, I practiced Sunday and there was a lot of fish seemed to be at the bottom end of the lake, so it'd be like 13, 14 area. It's probably more likely to be tight map, really, with four or five people in the last hour going into it without a chance and then I, I, that's the sort of match I think it'll end up being. It's tough to call, but I think if I had to pick anywhere, it would be between like edge 12 and 19, maybe somewhere like round there. Emily Fraser handles a lot of major sporting celebrities, but she's never as nervous as this moment when she has 20, she hopes she's got 25 balls in the bag, and she's, she's got the velvet bag there. So Harry, this is where you are going to be. 23. Andre Schipper. Andre? Peg 24. He's a very fancy peg 24. One of the favourites with the book is, is a man who has well, lots of experience and success, and that is Bagger Andy Bennett. Peg 16. Bagger Bennett's on peg 16. This is Felix Schurman. 18. Sarah, the ladies' champion, will be on. Peg 8. Warren Jennings. 7. Now, the king of fisher mania, the great Jamie Hughes. Peg five. Number five, that's where the crowds are going to be congregating initially. Next up is Perry Stone, who will have Rob Hitchens, former winner, on his back as a bank runner. And Perry will be on... Peg 20. Peg number 20. Now, our junior champion is 18-year-old Charlie Law. Peg six. Are you sure that's number six? Yeah, we're going to the right oh, way. I'm sorry. Six. Yeah. <laughs> Andy Power? Number 19. Peg 19. So Harry, you now know which peg you're going to be sitting on. Peg 23, your reaction? Just what it is, isn't it? Just <laughs> 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 yeah. chill out and just, just fish a match, that's it. Done. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> There's obviously favoured pegs, but as, as Harry proved last year, the, the favoured pegs don't always mean they're going to win. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, with it being such a close call, I think any any of those draws could, to be honest, win it. It's it's very close. Well, Keith, after we talked to the guys there after the, the after the peg draw, they were all very very happy with with, with the pegs that they got. Previously, we've had favoured pegs, and the wind has blown in one direction. We had a little run where they were winning it in a certain area of the lake, but this year I get the impression that anybody could win it. Could come from absolutely anywhere. No one really knows. It really is difficult. Obviously, M pegs are always an advantage. So one and 25, we've got Andy Dyson and Paul Wright on those two pegs. Paul Wright, I know, is very highly fancied. He, can't, he fishes a lot of Lindholm where they catch a lot of F1s as well. So he's very uh, used to the fishing. Um, Art Hilmy, who's on peg 15, he's, he's on a real hot run of form at the moment. He's not in a bad area. But Bagger Bennett is in, you know, if you should call him Bung Old Bennett, really, because he's where he fished last weekend. So he knows the peg really well, and his conditions are really similar. He's got this layer of scum in front of him. Well, these are the odds. Andy Bennett, Jamie Hughes, Andy Power, who, who are established anglers, not unsurprisingly the bookies' favourites. Yeah, you've got to go on form. When you don't know how the lake's going to fish and, and how the, it's going to affect the pegging, then you have to go on form. And, you know, we've got some of the finest anglers in the country here at the moment, but they're money odds. They're not bookmaker odds. They're odds that have been decided by people placing bets things will have changed as the day goes on. Exactly. 
Well, let's go down to the water's edge and have a little shake around the lake and get to know our anglers a little bit better. Taking care of the, the early peg numbers, a day beyond fisher mania. It's a very big welcome to Claire Thomas. Thanks very much, Robert. It's a big day indeed. Now, you've mentioned that most of the carp to be found in these lakes are of the F1 variety, so it feels quite appropriate to start here because these pegs have been described by some locals as being pole position. At peg number one, you'll find debutant Andy Dyson, 38 years old. He hails from Crewe, which is actually where he qualified for this festival of fishing. Old Hoff is his local venue. Now, that might not be too far away, but he has left the wife and four kids at home. Apparently they're a little bit distracting when he's trying to focus on all things fishy. Don't panic, he has got them a Sky Sports subscription for the day, so they are watching on. Shelley and kids, hope you're enjoying watching Dad make a splash his first time out here. Let's wander along and meet another debutant. Jamie Howarth can be found over at peg number two. Now, when Jamie's not angling, he loves a game of pool alongside his close friend, Andy Bennett. Now, as we know, the former champion left his own qualifying very late. So up until he squeaked into the draw here for the grand final, Jamie was going to have a very celebrated bank runner indeed. In his absence, Craig Ebrell has stepped up and will be bank running for the Mancunian today. When I came by to meet him this morning, he was knelt at this bank you can see just here, feverishly cutting away at those reeds with a pair of nail scissors. He'd left his garden shears at home, so I think that took a little while, but they are neatly shorn and he is underway. He's got a couple of fish in that net already. Now, fishing is a sport intrinsically linked with the virtue of patience. So cue our next angler who's been waiting for a place at this, the hottest of all pole parties, for 28 years. Wayne has been attempting to qualify for this one since 1994. He's finished second six times in qualifiers, once by a single ounce. So he's delighted to finally be here at a Fishmania Grand Final. Less delighted by the outfit that he's found himself in here today. He's a die-hard United fan, so I think the blue ensemble wasn't met with too much appreciation. It's a veritable obstacle course here, so round we go to meet the angler at peg number four. It's John Alexander, a 30-year-old who is a bait trader uh, when he's not actually out angling himself. So several of the anglers here today will be using his products as they bid to become the king of fish. And the queen of fish, of course, will meet Sarah Taylor a little bit later on. John is full of confidence. He was here just last weekend and won a top level event. So he reckons he knows these waters well and they suit him very nicely. Now, the angler on peg number five needs no introduction, but my producer says I have to give him one anyway. So here we go. Let's head over and meet a man described to me earlier in the week as the Lionel Messi of the angling world. It is three-time champion Jamie Hughes making his 11th consecutive appearance in these finals, his 12th appearance overall. He has got experience in spades and it shows in the way that he fishes. He knows every technique going. He's a very adaptable angler, we understand. So regardless of the peg, he is always a threat. And being watched on by wife Emma and daughter Sophie, who woke him up at half past two this morning. Hopefully he might be deprived of sleep, but he's not deprived of fish. Rob will catch up with the rest of the anglers later on. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Claire. Back to you in a second or two. Jamie Hughes doesn't just have his family behind him. There's a lot of uh, anglers watching his every move, learning it's like a university of uh, fishing this afternoon, isn't it, Steve? Watching these guys out there, looking at their techniques, the way that they, they, they keep their nerve as well and their concentration. Pretty much most people are doing very similar things. There's not a lot of uh, tactics that you can choose from here apart from fishing pole. So it's all going to be pole, very little rod and line fishing. And they're going to decide what they're going to fish for, either carp, F1s or uh, barbell like Andy Powers. There is with another fish there, Steve. Just to have another fish, yeah. That's incredible because somebody who's fishing the match today told me in the week the barbel are gone. Yeah. No barbel. And I thought, well, they're by that spin. No, they're not. Mm -hmm. So they are. I spoke to him in depth this morning, Andy, and he said, for me to win today, I must catch barbel. He says, so I've got to fish through. If they decide not to feed and they are a temperamental fish, uh, I've got no chance. But if they do, he's got a real chance of winning it from an unfavoured area, really. 
Steve, you, you've been there, you've done it, you've won it, you've got the T-shirt, the trophy is very proudly on your mantelpiece at home. How, how, how do you block out the crowds and everything that's going on around you? Catch a fish. Yeah? You, you don't need to be in front, but you need to be catching fish. And especially when other people are catching, what happens is nerves start to take over you. And time runs away really quick in this competition, really, really quick. We mentioned that uh, Claire is a debutant this afternoon. Let's go uh, meet the rest of the anglers down on her pegs, six to eight. And I believe they're all debutants as well. They are indeed, Rob, and none of them younger than Charlie Law, known to his mates as Claw. He's behind me and has just caught an absolute whopper. Proof that if you are good enough, you are old enough. Now, he might be only 18. So about when Jamie Hughes was making his debut back in 2009, he was probably still learning how to spell fish. But he is the reigning youth and junior champion and was very quietly confident when we caught up this morning, looking to really make waves as he steps up to this big senior of stages here today. Now, over on peg seven, another debutant, Warren Jennings, known to his mates as Wazza. He is a carpenter, uh, so carpenter and a carp catcher, a lot of carp in that sentence. He's someone who wins a lot out at elite level in angling competitions, but very softly spoken, very humble. So a bit of a dark horse perhaps today. He told me earlier on that if he were to win the £50,000 jackpot, he would spend it on a holiday for himself. I'll tell you what, you can get a good holiday for £50,000, can't you? He was very keen to stress, though, that it wouldn't be a fishing holiday. He would use it as a bit of time away after his winning exploits. Now, if that's a man who wants to spend his £50,000 on a trip abroad, this angler would spend it on something a little bit closer to home because Sarah Taylor, the reigning UK women's champion, would spend her prize money on refurbishing a wardrobe in her house, which she is transforming into a TARDIS. She's a massive Doctor Who fan, and much like her favourite Doctor Jodie Whittaker, she is a woman making history. She's won the next gen event here. She's the women's champion. No one one has ever done the treble. No one has won those two accolades, come to Fishermania and conquered. We're looking forward to seeing how she gets on today. 22 next week. What a birthday that would be to win the biggest prize of them all. Well, there you have it. The first eight anglers here at the 2022 Fishermania title hunt. Let's head over to Andy Scott. He's going to introduce us to some more of them. Yeah, Claire, thank you. Welcome to Peg 9. John Jones just behind me, 38-year-old from Dudley. Uh, first time at Fishermania, but he's a Golden Reel finalist. He works for Dudley Council as a carpenter, plasterer, plumber and bricklayer. Where on earth does he find time to fish? He's also just qualified for his pyrotechnics licence. He'll be hoping for some fireworks from Peg number 9. He uh, Actually, in the last competition that he fished, he set off the fireworks when he came runner-up, so uh, nice little story there. Now, Peg 10, Christian Jones, very, very strong start for the 23-year-old from Ellesmere Port. His bank runner is Kieran Marsden. He's a fishing coach down at Partridge Lakes. He won the Westwood Lakes Autumn Classic. Very happy with this peg. When we were here yesterday, the wind was actually blowing in the opposite direction. Still on Peg 10 here, the, uh, the wind is actually blowing into him. He's had a very strong start, already a number of fish in the net. Let's just walk you on now to peg number 11. Very popular man on the lake today. Stephen Openshaw. Steve, uh, his bank runner is Alan Dewhurst. Now he's a four-time Fisho finalist. Uh, he came fifth in 2015-2018. He said to me, I don't even count them. If I didn't win it, I don't count them. Uh, got to give a shout out to Lingmere Fisheries as a day job. Steve actually runs Lingmere Fisheries and he has just become a granddad for the third time so he wasn't too happy about me talking about his age so I'm going to leave it out but congratulations to Steve granddad for the third time and he again has had a number of fish in the net already strong start over on this side of the bank Rob. Well thanks Andy uh, I'm sure as you know if you're tuned in to us the way it works this afternoon the guys catch the fish every half an hour their bank runner heads off, very important, it's like having a caddy in golf. They weigh the fish and then come, what was it, about uh, 4.30 this afternoon. Uh, we will do the calculations to see who has caught the most fish over five hours. That's the idiot's guide and we've got the experts here, I'm the idiot. <laughs> so when these guys get a little bit too technical, I go in and ask the stupid questions. But we're hoping to see less of us 
this afternoon and a lot more of this. And I think we're going to, Keith, aren't we? We're going to see a lot of fishing already. Everybody's getting off the mark. There's a lot of fish being caught, lots of various fish as well. And, and Steve mentioned right at the start about Andy Power catching the barb. Well, we've, see, we've seen him catch four or five and we need eyes yeah. in the back of our heads to yeah. see that. Yeah. But he's, he's definitely set out his stall to catch barb. But you watch him and it's incredible. No other sport do you see anything like this. He's fighting a fish. He feeds down the edge, picks his catapult up, feeds further out, puts his catapult down and carries on fighting the fish and oh. then nets it. So he's, he's a, he is genuinely a fishing machine. And Harry last year, the reigning champion, had, uh, I mean, he, he, he came from nowhere, didn't he? And he absolutely he blew apart the field last year. Yep. The fish ended up on that bar in front of him, the shallower bar. They were definitely there and he exploited that brilliantly. Well, let's go back to uh, the, the lakeside and hear from more of the anglers. Back to Andy Scott's Peg 12. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Peg 12, Jimmy Brooks. Lots of applause already. Jimmy's had two F1s, two carp, and a number of smaller fish in the net already. The local guy from Kingsland, so he's only 35 miles down the road. He says, I fish this lake hundreds of times for pleasure. Slightly different in a matchy environment. He thinks, actually, the road is very tight to the bank here. He said the cars and the crowd it won't make a difference. It will be those nets coming in and out of the water every half an hour. He's an electrician by trade and he also loves a game of five-a-side football. Let's make our way down to Dave Shire's peg 13. Don't want to bother Dave here. Um, it's his second final. He was sixth in Fishermaner 2018 father of two i just want to say hello to everybody so isla and dylan sitting right behind you here big wave guys wishing dad all the very very best of luck dave qualified from uh, lindholm so he's had a strong start as well dave going to keep you coming down here adam richards from 33 now adam worried me last night the uh, 33 year old from easing world uh, his bank runner is nick speed a former chef. I said, what are you going to do tonight, Adam? He said, we're going to have a barbecue and it's all on Nick as the former chef. Delighted to say that everybody has reported to duty, fit and ready, although Adam did say that some of the chicken was a little bit pink. You just can't keep some people happy. Uh, so let's just keep going on down the bank here. I'm trying to keep my voice down because I didn't think we'd be this close. As uh, Art Hilmi's into a fish here. I'm going to turn you round. This is Art Hilmi, peg 15. Timing is everything. We're joining him at just the right time. The 42-year-old from Cottingham. His bank runner is Harry O'Sullivan. Now, it's Art's Fishermania debut. And a uh, nice little story here. John Alexander, who we heard from on the, uh, the other side of the lake with Claire. Art was fishing in a match with him when John qualified, and they found a feather in the back of the, uh, the tackle box. And John said it must be a lucky feather. When Art qualified, he also found a lucky feather. It's in the back of his phone case, and he went on and qualified. Um, all feathers are available from the Art Hilmi uh, souvenir shop, £50 a pop. So that is Art Hilmi on peg number 15. Rob, back over to you guys. Well, this is what we want to see, guys, isn't it? We want to see fish being caught this afternoon. <laughs> okay, talking in simple parlance, there's not a lot of massive fish out there, but there's a lot of good good size fish. Yeah, there's there's the, the F1s the F1, average yeah. a, maybe three quarters of a kilo up to a kilo. There's some slightly bigger, but they're, yeah. they're the smaller ones. The carp go up to three kilos and the barbel two, two and a half kilos. Two and a half, three so. kilo for a yeah. big one, yeah. Well, that, yeah. that was John Jones there, keeping up with the Joneses. His uh, neighbour this afternoon is Chris Jones from Ellesmere Port, who came ninth in uh, Fishermania back in 2019. It looks like they've got a, a hot area of the lake. Yeah. I think everywhere's hot though, Rob, at the moment. You know, if you look round, you'll see landing handles up in the air, you'll see elastic coming out almost everywhere. It's, it, you know, we like to get photo, we like to get shots of the floats in the water, and they're not still long enough no. to get a photo, to get a, a shot of them at all. Let's go back uh, and meet more of the anglers and let's go back down there to Andy Scott who's with a, a very familiar face. Needs a little introduction really. Rob, you took the words out of my mouth really. On peg 16, I reckon it is the most popular peg for fans. Everyone you could get space is behind Andy Bagger Bennett's peg. And the reason for that is if you're talking about CVs, records, match achievements, there's just too many to list. In terms of Fishermania, uh, the 19 
2019 winner, 2020 winner. He was actually a late qualifier this time round. Interestingly, Bagger Bennett fished a practice on here on Sunday. Two of the five hours he spent just uh, plumbing the depths, trying out different things. He only actually fished for three hours. In those three hours, he still managed to come second. As you said at the top of the show, Rob and Keith, so many people, bookie-wise, are backing Bagger Bennett. 17, Danny Keenan. Now, I want to make sure that I get this right because Danny came and found me this morning because when I asked him yesterday, I just said, you know, anyone you want to uh, shout out to, anybody you want to, uh, to thank? He said, oh, no, really, I'm just concentrating on it. He came and found me this morning and he said, there's a big party in Crumlin. They've got the big screen up at Annie's house. Mum, Irene, she would kill him if we didn't give her a shout out. So big shout out to everybody in Crumlin. The bank runner is Ben Summerscales. Uh, Danny, I said, uh, do you have any superstitions? He said, no, none whatsoever. And then his partner, Jan, said, well, actually, on the way to every match, he gets a chunky Kit Kat, so a man after my own heart. Other brands of confectionery are, are available. And let's just finish off on this little run of the lake. Peg 18, Felix Schumann, the 29-year-old from Germany, based just outside of Frankfurt. Key man here is Adam Wakelin, he's bank runner, who's been a real uh, ear to bend um, tactics-wise. And, and really, that's because there's no F1s in Germany. There's no F1s for him to practice on. So this really is all new to him. Uh, he is the former feeder world champion uh, that was out in Italy. And they've had a few sessions on the lake. You know, he's had a few sessions just to practice, but he is at a disadvantage. But it'll be interesting to see how Felix gets on today. Let's make our way further down the bank to Peter. Yeah, very uh, good Good afternoon, actually. I was going to say good morning, but it's gone midday and it's been a terrific start for uh, Andy Power. You need a good start in any sport. The 34-year-old from Somerset, let's have a, a look at him in action. Five barbel, three car, one tension at the last count. Very fast-moving situation. He wasn't sure what sort of day he was going to have in this water, one of the deepest parts of the lake, but he's started really, really well. Says he's going to spend all his winnings, should he win it, on fuel because he lives out in the wilds of Somerset. Interesting part-time job though. He's a sign writer. Imagine that on the sign outside Mr. Power's residence. Fisherman champion. We'll leave him and uh, let's have a walk onto uh, peg number 20. Interesting story this, Perry Stone. We must stop and stay here. Angela, how are you? Yeah, that's uh, that's Perry's wife and Angela's got a very very big interest in today's event because her car actually blew up this week so Perry busy there just uh, putting his baits in Perry's got on record as saying should he win the big money it's a new car for Angela so no going back on that but uh, his runner sat over there just taking it all in the winner in 2004 Rob Nice to see you. A big thumbs up from Rob. Right, let's uh, hair on down the bank to number 21, Greg Wellsby. This is a really good story. Two men from the army. Louis is bank runner there, as you can see. Now, Louis is uh, Greg Wellsby's boss in the British Army, but not today. Don't know who's calling who's... <laughs> <laughs> He's got a big grin on his face there. You're not calling him, sir. I don't think he draws the line at that. But Greg is a City fan. He's Matt. His brother is a big United fan. Uh, but all set for a really good day here, hopefully. Any winnings would go into a new house. But these two men from the army, very, very much on parade and very focused. Now back to you. Well, great to hear from Pete Stevens. I used to watch Pete on the television when I was a kid. He's done everything in television, but he's finally doing Fashionmania. You can hear when Pete was talking there, the hooter in the background. You're going to be hearing that every 30 minutes this afternoon, and then you can see a lot of activity behind the anglers as their bank runners head over to the scales and will very carefully and neatly weigh the fish. And these are the nervous moments when they get to find out, Keith, exactly what's in the bag. It's like Christmas Day. It's like Christmas Day. And I'll tell you what's in, even more like Christmas Day. As our reporters have come round the bank, we've seen more people with fish than not with fish. And that's astonishing. For this, the first hour of Fishermania, that's unheard of. And, and Andy Power had an assortment of fish. Exactly. There as well. yeah. It's like a stall at the market. <laughs> one pound fish, one... No, we won't do that one. <laughs> what would you want? What would you want in there, Steve? What would be a good wait in that first half an hour? 
uh, 10, 12 kilos, something like that, 20 pounds. And I think Andy's going to be somewhere near that. He's going to be close to that, I don't think. So if, if he's got five barbels, three carp and a tench, he's not going to be far away, no, is he? No, no, I'm sure. I'm sure. And straight away, if you get a good weight at first half an hour, you're putting people under pressure. Yeah. They're, uh, 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 people who are not catching what they thought they were going to catch as quick start to think, I need to make changes. And the plan goes out the window. And I know that we are preaching to the converted, to the angling world here today, but in the making of this programme, Keith, no fish get hurt, do they? No, they no. treat them with a great deal of respect. Absolutely. Well, they're, they're a valuable commodity. It's a commercial <laughs> fishery. Yeah. Every fish that's in here has cost money. They've all got a value, as well as being semi-wild creatures. And, and anglers look after their quarry probably better than anyone else. You were telling me last night, he, he can judge how, what, what, what the weight's going to be by just looking and he, he, he did you a disservice a few years ago, didn't he? Or, or... Uh, no, it was a scalesman to be. Keith recognised that they'd over, they gave me too much, so yeah. they had to re-weigh me again. He's like twice, that. twice that happened. He's like, he checks the bill every time in the restaurant as well. <laughs> doesn't happen now, incidentally. Keith never all... sees a bill. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. What's a bill? Yeah. You're paying restaurants. No, they're every, they're all the scales nowadays are digital, Yep. so they can't be fiddled, they can't be changed, there's no adjust the screw. You push a button, it's zeroes, put the fish on, no way. And of course, getting something in the bag in the first half hour is important, but very rarely is it that the leader in the first hour, the first two hours, is the leader come about 4.30 this afternoon. It, it, it runs on the board, like Steve said, when you catch fish early, you're putting pressure on other anglers. Am I doing it right? Are they doing it different? Can I do what they're doing? So it, it is important to, to put a marker down early. The, the thing is, if you've got three fish at a kilo apiece, and you're three kilo in front, that's, they've got to catch three to be, yes. to be level, so you're always in front. We're seeing some busy scales, that's for sure. They might need new scales, he's broken them. Andy Powers, superb half hour. And he's playing one at the minute as well, so. Andy started like you'd, you'd want to start. Put pressure on people. He's not catching small fish, he's catching pretty decent size. And as you say, he's got a bit of everything in there. As he actually says that he, he most enjoys catching pike at Chew Valley. There's none of those here today, but he, he's, he's got the whole kind of variation in the bag. I think about Andy Power, he's brilliant at everything he does, every discipline. Uh, only thing I don't know he does is fly fishing, and I would assume that he does, but every discipline he's really good at. He might be catching those pike on bites and chew it. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, chew it. It's, a, it's a, a trout reservoir yeah. where the, the pike are a bycatch, but they bait fish as well in the winter. Well, we've uh, met most of our anglers so far, but let's go down and meet the, the final four and get back to the waterside with Peter Stevenson. Yeah, thanks, Rob. It's uh, a wonderful time down here. As you say, loads of sports I've covered over the years. Can't remember anything so tranquil, but with that underlying bit of tension. And as we've said already today, this competition's been going a long, long time. Alex Hume behind me, watched it as a youngster, and now here he is, getting the chance as a grown-up to come down and try his hand. He's uh, training to be a lorry driver. He's got mum, dad, brother, back home and crew all watching this, all keeping their fingers crossed that he can uh, have a good day. Now let's move on to one big, big name from uh, last year. Harry Bignall is the one everybody was talking about. The champion on debut, 50,000 prize, first prize. Tells me he's been stopped in supermarkets, asked for selfies because he's now the face of Fishermania. Really, really nice story. Hopes he can do it again uh, this year. Um, he spent his money on stocks and shares and that's where he'll probably go again uh, if he got chance to pick up the big pot again this year. But a really nice story. We thought about Peg 23, but he says it's his roulette number and it's also his mum's birth date. So he's not too bothered. Right. Let's Let's get a move on. We're going to go round the back of peg 23 on to 24 to find our visitors from the Netherlands. We've got uh, here he is. Now then, this is uh, Andre Schipper from the Netherlands. Caught the ferry over into Harwich last night. Uh, Looks like it was a smooth sailing because he looks like he's in decent form. Uh, loved his fishing in the Netherlands uh, since he was a youngster. Liked a bit of mountain biking as well. And as uh, we're talking, his, uh, his number two, Peter, just finished away. But we're going to go this way under the trees, guys. Let's go. Round the back of the pole. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Bit of a tight fit. Mind all the kit. And we've got one nice long walk. 
onto uh, Paul Wright. He's on peg 25. He said he was looking forward to this because he's got plenty of room to play with. He's got Michael, his uh, bank runner, with him. Nice story, this, because he was 37 on Thursday. So that would be a lovely birthday present. In common with quite a few other anglers here today, he's just turned angling coach as well. So uh, devoting his life towards this wonderful sport and uh, hoping, should he win any money today, a go towards a, uh, a purpose-built van to put all this very impressive kitten so there you go Rob it's back to you from 25 thank you Peter Stevenson who is nimbly getting around uh, the equipment there he's been training all week he's been doing pole artists <laughs> hey we're here all week we know we're here for five hours this afternoon and when we come back after the break we'll have the results of the first weigh in Well, the whole Sky Sports Roadshow and, well, two and a half thousand keen anglers have congregated here at Westwood Lakes in Boston, Lincolnshire for the biggest fishing event of 2022. 50,000 pound goes to the winner this afternoon. The winner last year was Harry Bignall. Let's cast our minds back. So let's meet some of your 2021 Fishermania anglers. That is Raz Ryan Laycock, and he's the first angler to get a fish in the bag. Andy May, 2016 champion, competing in his fifth at Fishermania. Harry Bignall. Now, Harry, he's in his first Fishermania final. He tells me he likes his chances. Andy Bennett has gone off to an absolute flyer. This is why this guy the reigning champion, or champion for the last two years, is the bucket's favourite. It was cold and raining last year. This year it's just chilly after a heat wave, so the fish will be moving around. To Peg 21, where we have got the one and only Samantha Sim. It's her first Fishermania, but she is the first lady to win four Fishermania ladies' titles. It's kicked off a bit better than I wanted it to, really. In the opening half an hour, it was Andy Bagger Bennett, the reigning champion, who caught just under five kilos. We have 24 top class anglers. We also have eight of the next generation. We've got defending champion Sarah Taylor. Well, that is our leader at the moment. Owen Newman, Jamie Hughes. And he's getting another one. Harry Bignall is leading at the moment with 13.32 kilos. Second place is Robert Taylor, but things may change when they hear this noise. <laughs> magic. How'd you do it? Harry Bignall in that way and had 13.125 kilos. In second place, during the course of the afternoon, Robert Taylor had 15.6 kilos. So he caught almost as much in the last half an hour as his nearest rival, Robert Taylor, had all afternoon. He has another fish, surprise, surprise. Nobody else has any fish because he is taking them all. The winner of next gen is Owen Newman by 25 grams. <laughs> This is in the main event. Guess who's catching again? Harry now has the second ever biggest weight in Fishermania. Stand very tall. Be very proud. Harry Bignall from Bedley in East Yorkshire. One of the most immense performances ever in Fishermania. He has absolutely stormed it and deserves every single penny of the £50,000. Well, his reign is over, but he's still sitting on his throne, thrown over there, Harry Bignall. He's had a, a quiet start. I can tell you a little secret here. We'll tell you uh, exactly what the anglers have got in their bag in the first half an hour or so in a second. There's a flurry of activity behind us. Harry has got off to an OK start. In fact, all 25 of the anglers have caught something in the first 30 minutes. Keith, they will want to know, won't they? They'll want to know their weight as, uh, as well, Steve. They'll, they'll want an idea of how they've got off the mark, whether they've hit a six or a four, is a, a quick single that they've, they've got off to in, in, in cricket terms. They'll need to know whether they want to make changes straight away and, and how far they're behind, whether they just keep doing what they're hoping your peg's going to pick up. Uh, it, it, it's not one in first half an hour. 
that's the main thing. If it was, if we've quit, quit now, I suspect it might be Andy Power. We'll find out exactly what he's caught in a second or two because they're, they're trying to let those scales settle behind us. But he, he won't mind, will he? He's, he's got those glasses on, he's just fully focused. This is one of those venues, Steve, where you, you, you set up to build a swim. So do you, you catch what you can as quickly as possible, but you, you feed another area or two to, for, in case the fish move or you run out? Yeah, they keep swapping positions letting fish settle down and they'll pick a few fish out of one area then they'll come back to another or they'll wait for it to build up and, and finally attack it later on but we've already seen Andy catch four since he's weighing so if he carries on like he's going to start building an early lead but will the fish like that all day? We talk about equipment as well uh, we see Andy May over there wearing a, a great pair of shades he's just doing it because he's a poser but he's got those shades on for a reason it helps with his focus doesn't it? It helps with everything. It takes the glare off the water. They're yep. polarised glasses, so they straighten out the razor light. It helps you see through the water, which doesn't really work here because it's, it, the, the visibility is virtually zero. But the, they do also focus you. It's like they put blinkers on a horse, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. the same kind of thing. You tend to concentrate in front, but mostly it's to protect the eyes, the eyes from the glare of the water. Stops you from be... blinking and all, so yeah. all sorts of things. Yeah. We hey, see it alongside him there. T tell. Mm -hmm the viewers that don't know what that contraption is in the water, the, the aerator. That's what does an aerator, that yeah. Oh, thank you. So what that does, that keeps, when you, this time of year, the oxygen levels drop overnight because photosynthesis makes the algae grow. It's an education. Well, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 um, <laughs> the algae dies off during the night, gives off carbon dioxide like all plants do. So in the morning, the oxygen levels, where there's lots of fish, can do with a boost. And the aerators do that. We've got a, a fountain aerator on this side. On the other side, there's a paddle type aerator, a splasher. We're watching there peg number one, which is Andy Dyson, who's making his debut this year. He has uh, Martin Steele on his shoulder. He says his first ever memory of Fishermania is watching Matt Horwin, another legend of this sport. Absolutely, yeah. You notice as well that although you, you try and keep focused, when you've just caught a fish or when you're doing something like Andy was doing there, he's, he's changing his bait, feeding maybe, you try and take everything else in. Your bank runner should be doing that. And Andy Power is really disciplined at letting the bank runner do it. But my eyes, I don't know about yours, Cookie, my eyes are everywhere when uh, I'm fishing. Well, only thing, well, one of the things I can say is like Andy will be focused. He won't need anybody to tell him what to do. But it's Andy, if you're like me, you'll get focused on something and somebody will say to you, look, you've spent too long doing that and you're not putting enough in your net. You need to change. And sometimes you need that, like a nudge in your back. But Andy and Bennett and the top men don't. It's quite interesting before, you know, watching Wayne Kearney, who's an experienced angler alongside James Howarth. Uh, even though they're rivals this afternoon, Wayne is much more experienced, was passing tips, almost almost lecturing James alongside him, who's a newbie in this tournament. <laughs> I used to use a little strategy. I used to ask anglers, are oh, you catching on so-and-so, knowing they probably were? And I'd go, oh, really? And I'd be doing the same thing, but wouldn't let them know. There is a bit of kidology as well, isn't it? I mean, obviously we use catapults. And in past times, I've been to venues where you pick your cattle up and feed. You weren't actually feeding in bait, but people would think you were feeding a lot of bait, so they'd start to feed if you were catching a lot of fish. So we do have a bit of kidology as well. Gamesmanship. Yeah, gamesmanship. And yeah. everybody does it, and it's all in yeah. fun, there's nothing sinister about it. But your top anglers, if you were to speak to Andy, what are you going to do it? He'll tell you exactly what he's going to do. Because in, yeah. in Andy's mind, and, and, and same as Jamie Hughes, in their mind, they're better than you and they'll 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 push ahead in front of you even telling you what they're doing well andy power is one expert our resident expert this afternoon is the champion of fishermania back in 2016 it's getting longer and longer <laughs> away that isn't it andy may the guys here saying about changing your tactics is maybe a little bit too early andy to do anything rash after just over what well, 45 minutes or so of fishermania 2022 but talk tactics to us right okay so tactics wise i've had a i've had a quick sneaky walk around uh, this half of the lake where they seem to be doing really well so the likes of art hill me uh the bagger Andy Bennett and Andy Power doing really well and the catching so I'll talk you through the rig that Andy Power's catching on uh, to start with and that's a rig similar to what we've got here so it's set at sort of three or four foot deep it's not a deep lake this and he's only fishing really close in so he's got three and a half four foot of water he's got quite a nice positive float on the slimline body so when he gets the bite of the fish he's straight into them and basically all the shots if you follow my finger down all the shots are in the bottom third of the rig. Now what that's doing is creating, um, making the sorry, making the bait nice and stable on the bottom for these barbels to come along, see the bait and nail it straight into the fish. A little hook on the bottom, just got a four inch hook length on, so it's really, really positive. Now the other style uh, that certainly Art and Andy Bennett is doing, um, 
that's what we know is like shallow fishing or you know fishing up in the water so where you've got sort of the deepest bit of water down the middle as i say it's only three and a half to four foot they'll be fishing rigs similar to this uh, so real short bit of line pulled up to float now what that does is creates a tight line from your the top of your pole to your float so when you get a bite you're straight into the fish little tiny babby floats and then we've got a tiny tiny little bulk of shot down here with a very small two or three inch hook length on it's just very very positive for the fish i can't to be honest with you i can't see it really changing much there's there's another couple of different styles that that will come into it but we can go through that later on i don't want to talk you all through it now i want to want to talk about some later on as well don't i andy may i get the impression that you'll never be short of things to tell us the only thing that would improve your broadcasting we're putting those glasses on and maybe a covid mask as well Right, behind the scenes, we've been doing the calculations. Uh, everybody has caught something so far, but this is the top 10 of the 25 anglers here at Westwood Lakes this afternoon. Off to an absolute flyer. He's got a variation of fish in his bag, is Andy Power. Not far behind him is Art Hilmy, who had, a, I think he was in the open last week. Uh, he and his pal uh, are both gonna share the money if they win, and he's not far behind Andy. Andy Power. Chris Jones is one of our younger anglers. Andy Dyson, the one of the debutants. Look at Charlie Law, only 18 years of age. The next gen champion. He's not just here for the ride. Jamie Hughes in eighth place at the moment on peg five, not so far away from Wayne Kearney. So even 10th place, he's got five kilos in the bag so far. If you, you've got that every half an hour, you'd be very happy, Keith. Absolutely. Be even happier with eight kilos, 700 every half hour, wouldn't you? Well, that's, that's a hell of a weight, you know. That's what Andy Power's got over there on peg number 19. The Somerset Spotter. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Andy the Power Power. It's a matchroom production, so everybody's got to have some kind of nickname, don't they? A spotter is a device for feeding bait a long way without a hook on it. So you tie it to the end of your line, it's like a, a almost like a, a soft drinks can. Fill it up with bait, cast down, and it tips the bait where you want it to go. Just explaining what a spot is in case you thought it was something different. <laughs> That is over on peg number 15, and that is uh, Art Hilmy, who is a self-taught angler. He said the first time he went out fishing, he caught absolutely nothing at all. Experienced angler came over to him, put an arm around him and said, listen, this is the way you want to do it. Started catching fish on the river hole and hasn't stopped catching fish since. He's the man who's got the lucky feather. And if he is successful, this afternoon he's going to be sharing the winnings with John Alexander who's on the opposite side of the lake on peg number four. Must have been a long arm because he's a bit of a unit but he's on an absolute roll at the moment. He's been winning matches week in week out hasn't he Steve? Yeah. Very recently. When, you, when you're on a roll as well you become really positive in what you do and you believe in yourself that's the main thing. When you're having a bad run you think oh should I shouldn't to do this but when you think it's you're winning you're doing it right all the time. Peg ten. Christian Jones, after the first weigh-in, he was in third place. He came ninth in 2019. If he wins this afternoon, he's going to invest, like many of the anglers today, so that if uh, they are successful, they can reinvest in their angling and buy himself a new van. He used to fish in the same junior team as Sarah Taylor. Dave Shires. They all started, didn't they, around uh, the same Lake, uh, it's the Openshaws Lake in Liso on the Wirral. This is Dave Shires, who's uh, currently in 15th place. He's on peg number 13, Dave Shires. To be fair, I thought this is this this would suit Dave. He fishes at Lindome a lot, this type of fishing. It's a little bit bigger lakes, but this type of fishing will suit him. And he was really positive this morning, so I think it, it's coming all right, it's not. It's hanging in there with everybody. First off, and now it's never like I said earlier. It's not one in the first hour. That's for sure. Do you know what, Steve? You don't know this, but we, we asked the anglers to give us their first memories and their, what what inspired them to go fishing back in the day. And he says his first ever memory of fishing Maine. He was back in 1999 when you won it. What a guy! <laughs> I didn't think you were that old. <laughs> I, had, I had no grey hair then. I was actually I'm actually a ginger. I know he can't believe that. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's great. People have come here, Keith, haven't they, to see people catch fish this afternoon. And wherever you place yourself on the lake, you're going to be seeing some action this afternoon. Yeah, there's, there's fish coming all round. I mean, some areas, as all, all will always be the case, are better than others. And it will change. You know, make no mistake about it. The wind is going to change a little bit, but the fishing will change. Andy Power's bagging up. How many barbel are there? Enough room to be catching them all day? Has he got a plan B? Has he got something else he's setting out to do? If you watch what he's doing, he's feeding his far line over to the Marines as well. So he's, he is keeping his options open. Um, it surprised me how, how quiet it is. Like for, for the bagger, I thought it had started off a lot quicker. Uh, and then sort of eased off a bit and just kept adding fish. Uh, and he's made some changes. I've noticed he made quite a few changes to his tactics already, which maybe says that he doesn't think it's fishing how we thought it was going to do. Well, we've mentioned uh, the concentration, and as you can see, he's there, his eyes are focused, he's got the shades on. But the, the downside of fishing menu in doing well is that you may get a distraction of one of our uh, reporters talking to him. And you can see Peter Stevenson just in the edge of that shot. And Peter is down there, and I think he's going to have a little chat with his bank runner. I think it's Matty Dawes. Yeah, because Andy's very, very intent on focusing on his fishing, and you can understand why he's made a terrific start. So let's, as you say, talk a little bit and reflect with, with, uh, with Matt. Um, what do you make of this? Because before, when we talked this morning, he wasn't that optimistic, was he? Uh, he quietly was, to be fair, but this area, these two pegs here, because I aerate a barbel, I live in this area, and I think... Andy thought we need is to catch them to do well. And then the first three fish we have a barbel, so it's a good sign. I didn't think it's because the net's going in and out, it's making it a bit iffy for a little bit, so I might have to change to a cross just to, because the fish feel safer further away for now, but we've got, got a few fish in the net now, so ticking along, but I think a change is going to have to happen soon, I think. You're not getting too excited, I can tell, but maybe that's your natural demeanour. Nah, you? nice and relaxed. <laughs> Get wrinkles if you stress. <laughs> What, what about as the day wears on and if he still stays up there? At what point do you start to get a bit of tension? Uh, no, you've got to do your job. Look, look around the lake, try and keep Andy calm. It's like the first time I've been with Andy, so I haven't fished him, sat behind him when he's fishing, so it's trying to, trying to work out what time just to say, oh, thinking when to move and stuff and doing the right decision, that's all. So, so the headline could be Lucky Charm, to be fair, for you, if yeah, it's the first time. that's it. <laughs> Could be it now, could be my job full time, travel with Andy. No, it should be all right. Keep going, I think. But. Okay, well, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day and keep an eye on him. Yeah, we'll keep going. Cheers, thank, thank you. you. Well, Peter Stevenson talking to the bank runner there, but as the afternoon goes on, Andy Parrott, if he is leading, has got to uh, really forget about that shyness because we're going to be wiring them for sound and talking to the leaders as things evolve. We've had an hour almost of Fishermania. The second weigh in is due after the break. It is an absolutely glorious afternoon in the Lincolnshire countryside. We are at Westwood Lakes for Fishermania 2022. <laughs> anything disturbing the peaches that hooter in the background but it's something the anglers want to hear because it means that we've been going an hour in fisher mania and we'll find out what is in the bag as we have our second weigh in let's go down to the water side and get a live weigh in from a legend of this sport jamie hughes who's been followed very closely this afternoon by claire thomas well, I'm down at Peg 5 where Jamie Hughes is looking for a historic fourth Fishermania title. Here comes his second haul. He had 6.475 kilograms after the first weigh-in. So an opportunity now to close in on those top spots. He was placed eighth coming into this. So let's have a look and find out what is in that bag. I can see a fair few fish in there. Three kilo, five hundred. 3.5 kilos, so not the haul that he had the first time around, but a healthy haul and an opportunity to keep building that catch. Jamie's, of course, here for the 13th time. He's got plenty of experience. He won't be panicking. There's plenty more where those came from. Well, the man who was second in the first half an hour was a debutant in the finals of Fishermania, Art Hilmy, who is also from East Yorkshire. I think he's had a good uh, second half an hour. We'll find out. Let's go see what's in the bag with uh, Andy Scott. 
Yeah, Rob, let's see if he can make it back to back. Very strong first half an hour, just over eight kilos in second place. So let's let's just uh, nudge Harry O'Sullivan, the bank runner. Let's bring this net up to the scales. Almost as soon as you left us first time, fish after fish are on a very strong run at the moment. You could say it's an art attack. Plenty of F1s in the net. Let's just uh, keep one eye on the scales here. Let's just let it settle. Yeah. 6.725 6.725 to go on top of the uh, the 8 that put him in second place at the start so very strong start from Art down here on 15 It's good to see uh, Andy waking Harry up there it was Harry up Harry come on wasn't it we're going down the, there is a pub here this afternoon as well there's everything in this festival of fishing but all eyes in the first half an hour on peg number 19 and Andy Power who'd got off to an absolute Flyer, how's he progressing? Peter Stevenson. I'm told he's been busy, but maybe not just as busy in that first half an hour. I tell you, the crowd's really built up down around this peg. Uh, Matt, his uh, bank runner, as I talk, is uh, wrestling his, uh, his net out of the water. Off you come, Matt. Straight across to the winging scales. 8.7 in the first half an hour. Not just maybe as much as that, but they'll be hoping to still try and there we go. What are we looking at, Alan? We are looking at five kilo, nine hundred grams. Five kilo, nine hundred to add to that. Uh, great totals to start off with. It looks like being a decent day for Mr. Power. Well, a great start there for uh, the Power, who uh, is leading. Every single angler has caught something this afternoon. Young, old, male, female, from the Netherlands, from. From, uh, from where we go from Germany as well. They've come from everywhere. I know we're being watched, by the way, today in Canada, over there in Ireland as well. Welcome to Lincolnshire. What an afternoon we're having, Keith. Fantastic. Sunny Lincolnshire. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> it's unbelievable. But the, the fishing is, is I'm, I'm actually surprised how good it is. I wasn't sure how the fishing reacts to the crowds. I wasn't quite sure how to respond to the sun. It was dull and overcast and chilly here yesterday. It's not quite back to what it was in the week, but it's certainly a very warm day today. It's turning into a spectator sport as well, isn't it? For, for once, there's plenty to keep people occupied all around. <laughs> They're not just little areas where they congregated. They congregated around all the way around the lake because everybody's catching a few fish. Tell us what's also going on around here today. Because as we drove in, there is literally a fishing village here. People come here and spend a week's holiday. You can't get a, a bed here for love and the money this week. The anglers couldn't get the finalists. They're staying all over the place. Uh, and also, the, the, there's a lot of uh, equipment that they're showing off here today. And if you're into angling, this is the epicentre of the world. Most tactical manufacturers are displaying the goods there today for people to look at and some t uh, companies even selling equipment. It's, it, you've, you've got a ready-made market here, people are interested in fishing and they're here to watch fishing and want to see all the new equipment that's available out there on the market. I tried to book a midweek mid stay here in May, couldn't get one. It's a very, very popular You're venue. You have to treat a girl, don't you? There you go. <laughs> Bit of fishing. <laughs> Bit of a hot tub. <laughs> Apparently there's one or two rooms in Skegness if you want to head along the coast oh, later got on. got friends there. <laughs> well, that's where our cameras have been trained early today, over on Peg 19. Andy Power, who is leading after the first uh, weigh-in. Of course, it was Art Hilmy, one of our debutants, who was in second place. But uh, we're not official yet, but there has been a, a lot of movement on the leaderboard. After an hour, and the first hour has flown by. Time does fly when you're seeing lots of fish Absolutely. being caught. I've just um, seen there Andy Power, who caught early, very, very short. And Steve said he looked like he'd lost the fish a little bit, but he was feeding long. You remember Steve said he was feeding with the catapult long. He's gone long and he's got a fish. Um, on. One of the things is because obviously, with it being fishing mania, you're always going to have problems with spectators and film crews. And the film crews are quite close to him when they're filming. And he's caught so short, which isn't normal what we normally do in fishing. We're always fishing quite long, as far away from your banks are disturbance. And it's starting to affect his fish that have moved away from him into the deeper water. So that's why he would have done that. that. He's gone across and it just shows you what sort of angle. When, when things aren't right, 
to make a quick decision to change it to start putting fish in there and he's just had one straight away. John, John says actually over there on, on peg number nine that he just prefer fishing down the edges. Mm. <clears throat> yes, it's usually a place to be. I mean, Andy, um, Jamie Hughes said to me this morning, you can throw a pinch of pellets in two inches from the bank and within seconds there's fish on it. You only catch one and they go again and yeah. you have to feed somewhere else. And, and, and it, but they are, there's a lot of fish in here and they're very hungry. Well, that is Jamie Hughes, peg number five. Winner in 2013, 2015, 2017. Last year was in the final, but finished in 12th place. And he said there's the most fish ever for a fish show final. This is uh, peg 23, our reigning champion, Big Nell. As I've written down here, Big Nell. <laughs> there might be another story, but Harry Big Nell. The biggest ever margin last year, he won by 63 kilograms from Sam Brown, who finished in second place. There won't be a gap like that this year. No, no. Uh, it, it, it was just a one-off year. They made some alteration to that place, like it's at Hayfield. They dug some of the back, bank back because it went out into a point to make it more level. And it left a shallow, like a shallow bar. And Harry knew that, and Harry fished on it. And fish wanted to be in shallow water because it's quite a deep lake as normal. But here, it's, you know, it's a shallow lake, pretty much the same all the way around. A tradition of Fisher Mania is that you go head first into the water when you win at around 4.30. They'll probably afternoon. die if that happens. <laughs> it's not very deep here, is no, it? How deep is it? Three foot. Yeah. Three foot. So they want to walk in, I think, or just paddle. I think that's what it's going to be. Peg five, Jamie Hughes. You never write that man off, do we? No. Not when it's down to a fishing race, which, which it could well be. He it, 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 did a bit of a chat about... Um, how many big finals did fish? This is fished 20 some odd finals and I've only won three fisher manias. I thought, well, I've, I've fished in nearly that many, 18 and some other big finals. I've only won one. You know, I think he's quite greedy actually. <laughs> it's incredible, really, when you think that he's qualified as many times as he has because to qualify for fisher mania, you've got to win a match with at least 100 anglers. Yep. There aren't many of those around these no, days. No. And to win that many is. Well, it is beyond belief. No. It's... This is Sarah Taylor, Peg 8, the reigning women's national champion. She turns 22 years of age last week. She's been on a fishing vacation since last Wednesday. She's here this weekend. And the folks are behind her. You'll, you'll, you'll see them there in the, the expensive seats behind. So what do you want to do for your birthday? Guess what she wants to do? Fishing. Go fishing. fishing yeah. When you're that way inclined. And she's good. She's a good lady angler. Catches plenty of fish. She's beat a few men on the next peg. Well, she beat the boys in the next year in 2020, didn't she? Yeah, there you go. And she is here in her own right. <clears throat> and she makes fishing her life as well. Graduated last year. Comes from the Wirral. Very accomplished. She's, she's, she's got a bedroom to die for because her back window overlooks Hoy Lake Golf Course, where the open is. Is there any fish in them lakes there? There's lots of fish if you look beyond it in the, the River Dee. Yeah. It meets the, actually, it's a great place where she is. It's where the, the Mersey meets the Dee, meets the Irish Sea. But today, we're at Westwood Lakes. And, and this is a, it's a speed. This could be important, how quickly you get that fish in, get it in there, and you get your bait out and start catching again. Yeah, all the hooks are barbless, so they come out, you can roll them out really easily. You don't need to pull or jag on them to get them out. They go in easier as well, barbless hooks, so they're, they're very efficient. It's, it's about getting in a rhythm, Rob. It's about getting in a nice rhythm. Feed, lower your rig into the fish, get a bite of a fish, feed again and, and play your fish. Feed while you're playing your fish. Unhook your fish, feed again, go back out and, and get in a nice rhythm and don't come out of that rhythm. A few years ago, we, we put heart monitors on the anglers. Yeah, didn't I, I, had it, it. I had it on. Yeah, yeah. I, I had I, it. and we joked. We joked that it's an athletic sport. But it doesn't, the heart goes up and the, the adrenaline pumps as well. Mine never dropped below 160. 160? 160. Yeah, that's, honestly, yeah. 160. I, I'm not, my resting heartbeat is normally about 56. It was yeah. 160 from, from very start all the way through. Till, I think till the last half an hour when you all couldn't win it. But yeah, yeah. To give you an idea, Steve, when, when footballers warm up, Premier League footballers before the game, the sports scientists ask them to get their heartbeat to 140. So you're above <laughs> a you're fine <laughs> specimen. You're I'm only 22. Hundred... Look at the state of me. <laughs> Are you saying he should be a footballer? <laughs> I'm sorry. You... <laughs> Jokes apart, over the years, they do look more like athletes, oh, the anglers, don't they? They, yeah. they are proper sports. Yeah, I'm a proper athlete. Folk. 
But it happens in all sports, you know, darts players, everybody yeah. gets more athletic because you need to add that extra edge, don't you? And if, if that edge means you're you know, five kilos lighter than you were, then you do it. I was talking to Rob Hitchens today, who was winner back whenever, and, and he's with Perry Stone today, and he looks exactly the same yeah. as when yeah. he won it back in the 90s, yeah. 1990s. Well, that yeah. is Peg Nine, that is John Jones, who said his first ever memory of fishing was using a branch from a tree and a hook, and he managed to get perch and minnows. He's waiting to find out what face comes out of the water. A picture of concentration. We all started like that, holding us rock, you know. Yeah, I don't know what it is, what does make... Because I never feel like my heart's racing when I'm fishing, but it, obviously I wear a, a monitor now anyway. But it, it, it's often 160 up and 160 on. That's John Jones, who was in 22nd place the last time that we had a weigh-in. Reminder at the top of the pile was Andy Power. But Andy Power is no longer the leader. The man who is in second place, the likeable Art Hilmy on peg number 15, has got a tiddler more than him, 14.775 kilos. Just above Andy Power, Wayne Keely, who has been trying to get into the final of Fishermania since 1994. When we first started this event, he's having a good afternoon. He's in third place. One of our younger anglers, anglers a former next-gen contestant, Christian Jones is currently in fifth place. Then we have Adam Richards and then Sarah Taylor, the reigning UK women's champion. Jamie Hughes is lurking there. He's, he's like a shark, just basking underneath the water, waiting to pounce on those above and, well, less than five kilos behind the leader, Art Hilmy. Andy Bagger Bennett, surprisingly, down in 12th place. Good to see everybody's name there. Maybe not unsurprisingly, Felix Schurman, who's made uh, the journey across uh, the North Sea to join us here from, uh, from Germany. He's currently in last place. It's a new experience for him. But Andre Schieper from uh, the Netherlands is in 19th place with almost six and a half kilos. And there's some big names down there as well. Perry Stone, who's been here before, currently in 18th place. And the vastly experienced, the veteran, Steve Openshaw, currently in 15th place. But it's great to see the lead is changing hands. It's Absolutely. going to swap and change all day. Absolutely. And if you think Felix, although Felix isn't catching brilliantly well, Danny Keenan's next to him, a good, a good British angler, and he's struggling as well. So it's obviously an area just to our left here, actually, that isn't as prolific as it could be. You know, one of the things is we think we know what, what the fish do and how they react and where they're going to be, but we're not 100% sure. We, we play uh, a game of chance, really. We think that the chances are they're going to be there, but sometimes they're not. Well, currently in pole position, the man with the pole in his hand from East Yorkshire is Art Hilmy. He's come from second into first place, but this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. the women's match play tomorrow live on Sky Sports action from one o'clock the PDC darts who will be the women's world match play champion well the women's champion when it comes to angling is here with us this afternoon she's some peg eight she's a very decent opening out that is Sarah Taylor going to speak into Sarah in a second or two but she's well, she's busy at the moment so let's listen to what she had to tell us yesterday So I started fishing when I was about four, my dad took me and then kind of got into match fishing around the age of about ten, started fishing my first match and just kind of carried on from there really. So my first fisher memory I remember going down to watch um, like a, a junior fishermania, this was about 2013, 2014. Fellow competitor in this year's final, Christian Jones was actually in it and he was a, he's a good mate of mine so I went down to see him, yeah. So taken from that day, I really wanted to be involved in the day as well and be in such a high profile competition and like it's crazy to be in such a massive final now, it's, it's crazy, it's a dream come true. So 
so 2019 uh, was a, a crazy year. I mean, I, it was one of those matches where everything just kind of went to plan. You know, I practiced a few days before and then the plan was executed on the day and everything just kind of went my way and then ended up winning the trophy. And yeah, it was, it was a surreal feeling walking up on that stage and collecting that trophy. I love being able to do that massive cheer on the stage. It was like a lot of, a lot of years of dreaming suddenly coming out on the stage. It was, it was really awesome, yeah. And the crowd behind me was also brilliant. So 2020 was a completely different time to 2019. So I went more down the carp route rather than the silverfish and the skimmers. Um, and luckily I've managed to catch a load of fish down the edge in the last hour to really boost my weight and be able to take the title, yeah. I remember saying years ago about um, being the only person to ever win all three titles. And to be two thirds of the way there is just ridiculous. I mean, I used to joke about it, but now it's two thirds of reality. It's crazy. The next dream for me, uh, probably get back in it. Obviously, depending on the result, well, not depending on the result, but I want to get back in it, you know, try and get back into finals, go for all the majors, try and, you know, qualify for as many as I can and hopefully in the process, win as many as I can. I think that's any kind of, any person's dream really is to win as many major trophies as you can. Well, Sarah Taylor is a great, well, spokesperson, salesperson for the sport and he's destined one day to be in our studio. But the problem, Sarah, is that you're always out there, either in the next-gen final or the ladies' final, winning those, or in the Fishermania final. What, what's it like being out there on the big stage? It's crazy, mate. It's, oh, it's unbelievable. I love fishing these events. You know, it's, to be on such a, a worldwide stage, it's, it's, yeah, it's something I've always dreamed of, and to be putting it into practice, it's crazy, yeah. I, I, and you, I mean, you got a media degree, so you, you've been trained in speaking to us as you've got those uh, eyes uh, focusing on the fish. How different has it been being in this to being in the, the next gen or the ladies' finals? Say that again for me, sorry? How, how, different, how different is this to the other finals that you've been in? Well, you're fishing for a bigger prize for a start. <laughs> I mean, that's all really makes a difference, but yeah, I mean, the atmosphere. It's just completely different. You know, you're fishing against 20, 25 anglers. That well, I'm fishing against 24 anglers. But there's 25 of you. You know, you're fishing for bigger prize money, and yeah, it's it's a different feeling. But at the same time, it's uh, I don't want to say a familiar feeling, but it, it is. You know. Do you, do you know where you are in the field? You were 17th after half an hour. Do you know where you are now? No, not a clue. Seventh. Oh, nice. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I like the sevens. That's cool. Working your way up, Sarah. Yes, hey, Keith. How are you catching? How am I catching? Mm. Um, I'm, I'm on my shallow line on the deck at the minute, just trying that. I was catching down my edge earlier on, um, but I'm just trying over my shallow line now. I'll probably be going shallow in a minute. You get any signs out there? Uh, I've had a couple of fish out here, but yeah, they seem to be getting a lot of liners and yeah, showing signs that they're coming up, so. What, what have you had, sir? Is it Steve there? Have you had carp or have you had F1s? I've had a bit of both, so I've had, to be fair, the first fish I had was an F1, um, but the rest have just kind of been like small carp, like about, like smallest has been about two pound, biggest has been about five or six pound, it's been nice. Oh. I, I, have the beans. I'll let you play that. You concentrate on what you're doing. <laughs> Come on, fish. Is it, is it a foul looker, Sarah? I don't think so. I'm having a couple, like I said, because I'm fishing on the deck of Michelle line, but... We'll be, we'll be quiet. You, you carry on. You concentrate what you do, but we're going to listen to what you're doing. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to commentate playing in, in, in the, 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 the ten foots of hole. So commentate on yourself. I commentate to myself all the time anyway, to be fair. <laughs> what I will say, Sarah, is really impressive that you, you feel really at ease with that camera spe um, speaking to us and having cameras around you. For, well, your, for a young age, you feel really at ease with it. That's it it. helps having that degree in journalism, I suppose. <laughs> well, yeah. It wasn't money wasted, was it? Come on. <coughs> no. Concentrate. Concentrate, girl. There you go. Yeah, well done. <laughs> you only a small one, but all ounces count. And the fans go wild. <laughs> yeah. My posse behind me go wild. <laughs> That's mum and dad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, mum, dad, few friends as well, yeah. Have, have you got a plan, Sarah? Is well, I kind of, yeah, I do have a bit of a plan. Obviously, I've got like plan A as the main plan and then B, C all the way to Z in case <laughs> things don't work. Are we still on A? But um, yeah, just about on A. Um, 
Like I said, there are options to go B and C and D, but at the minute I'm still on plan A, so. Well, you're holding your own at the minute, so. Sorry. Just, just keep putting fish in the net and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, that's that's the aim, really. It's just, just keep going, really. Well, you know what it's like. It's not a sprint, is it? It's never over till it lasts. Whistle. So. Mm. Sarah, Ooh. thank you very much, Sarah. We, we will let you concentrate on what you do best. But you're absolutely excellent at broadcasting, it has to be said as well. Uh, Sarah Taylor, who's down there on peg number seven, or currently in seventh position on peg number 17 with 10.225 kilos. The leader at the moment on peg 15 is Art Hilmy, who has a narrow lead with 14.775 kilos. This is peg number 22. This is Alex Hume, another one of our debutants, a lorry driver from Crewe. I've got a feeling he stops off at a few places as he's got to work with his, uh, his tachometer and there's a little bit of fishing on the side as well. That's another one of them bar uh, barbels that uh, he's just put in his net. I tell you what's really strange, Keith, that there's not that many F1s being caught. For the amount of F1s that's in here, they seem to have gone a little bit quiet. Now, whether that's because of the pressure of the people on the bank or the film crews walking about, or, or, or what I don't know, but it, it's surprising. Everybody thought the F1s were going to be the bread and butter fish, and carp and barber were going to be also rams, but it's turned the other way around at the minute. I, I couldn't say it before the start because we weren't on, but I did say it to several people before the start. I actually thought that's what would happen. In fact, I said it to you, yes, didn't I? Silly old carp will feed yeah. when the smaller fish don't. And, and that is what, I mean, Sarah says six pound carp. It's a big fish for this thing. Yes. Down in position number 11, or peg number 11, Steve Openshaw who, Openshaw, who qualified in the early weeks of April at Heronbrook Fisheries, likes to uh, fish Castor Shallow, and uh, he is the, he's the granddaddy of the sport. Spanner, as he's known to his pals, the, uh, the senior statesman, 61 years of age. That's not old. No, no. that's a boy. It should have short trousers on. <laughs> he actually said that, but he had a problem with the trousers. And yeah. uh, when they arrived, they were a little bit too tight for him. They, we uh, suspect that they got the wrong size. So he's, he's got his tracksuit bottoms out there, Steve Openshaw. If he wins, apparently he's giving them money to Mrs. Openshaw. It's a very, I don't think, very I, wise decision. I don't think he had any choice in that no, matter. No, no. <laughs> we know the bosses. Yeah, I think it, it, it surprised them. A lot of people, these people who come here regular and, and fish this type of place, were all expecting an F1 feast, and at the moment it hadn't occurred. But, you know, there's plenty of time for that to happen, and these lads catch £100 really, really quickly. When I came here a couple of weeks ago to have a look round, what Steve was doing there, how long was his pole still for? I never saw a pole that still. No, no. This is the reigning champion, Peg 23, Harry Bignall, who won last year with a catch of 85.22 kilos. If he wins, well, he invested his money last year. He uh, gave his daughter a big treat. He will be taking them this year, he says, on a family holiday. But oof, that is uh, a significant catch. That's a is that, is that carp? another barbell? No, it's a carp, that one, I think, Keith. I'm sure it's a carp. Definitely. It is yeah, a carp. See the tail. It's probably like five pound, four or yeah. five pound. Uh, Harry's got uh, his bank runner there is like an excellent angler, really underrated lad, and it'll keep him really down to earth and grounded for this again today. Same last year, wasn't it? Sure. Yeah. 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 And Harry's very aggressive, isn't he? He's very, yes. very quick at landing fish. He's got that great ability to be able to net fish early yeah. rather than chase him around with a landing net like this old timer does. He's on it. This is Peg 12, Jimmy Brooks who's bravely soldiering on. He uh, has picked up a little bit of a foot injury. He uh, was fishing here last weekend as well, finished third in the open. So familiar <laughs> with the waters. Again, this sort of venue really suits Jimmy. It's this type of, uh, of venue. I was going to say another good angler, but to, to, to fish in this competition being the fine, they're all good anglers. You have to be. Yeah, there's no venues anymore where you can go and be and, and draw that one peg, no. which we know has happened in the past, where you just can't be beat. And, you know, to be honest, on the qualifiers, everybody else can go home with a fishing for Paul's money. Yeah, it's not like that. No. 
The noise you can hear means that we've been angling now for 90 minutes. We are due the third way. And a reminder, at the top of the pile is uh, Art Hilmi with 14.775 kilos. In second place is Andy Power on peg number 19, 14.6 kilos. That is, well, you can see, Keith, well, this is, this is a, an idea of where the fish have been caught this afternoon. It's been spread right across the lake. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's how I think we'd like to see it, uh, spread out across the lake with quite a few people in with a chance and hopefully it'll just keep pushing on and adding to that. 15, 19, 3, 10, that's well spread out, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, the weigh-in is due. Let's go down and Art will want to know exactly what he's caught in there. The third half hour, keeping an eye on his progress, is Andy Scott. Rob, thanks very much. I sound like I'm sort of cutting and pacing and repeating, but this net here, Harry O'Sullivan's bringing it over for our third weigh-in. Again, very healthy catch of fish here. So, second place after the first half hour, he was top with a total of 14.775. So all eyes on this scale. Let's just have a look and let it settle. 6.700. Boris confirms 6.700. So another, from what we've seen through the first two rounds, similar to what he caught in the second half hour, very, very strong stuff from Art Rob over here on 15. Well, we suspect that Andy Dyson on peg number one has had a good half an hour. Let's find out, Claire Thomas. Andy Dyson with a carp tattooed on that right forearm, as you can just see, a fish very close to his heart. Let's see how many are in that basket we're just starting the process of getting his third weigh-in of the day underway currently placed in fifth it's been a strong showing on debut so far for the man from crew his family watching on as we mentioned earlier on in the day how many fish has dyson hoovered up well some good sounding thuds in that basket let's see what the tally results in he'll be looking to narrow the gap on those ahead of him on the leaderboard as things stand 5 kilos 625 well another very solid haul by the man making his first appearance here at Fishermania we'll be making our way around some other pegs and bringing you third round weigh-ins as the afternoon progresses well, in TV terms, we call it a Manhattan, don't we? Because it's like a skyscraper to see where the fish have been caught. And a lot of activity has been right there in the, in the middle pegs in the lake. Yeah, and, and that isn't really what was predicted. Mm -hmm. The prediction was that the early, the very early and the very high pegs would be likely to produce the biggest bags of fish. But, you know, as we said, all along they swim and they like to follow the wind and they don't necessarily look like they want to get away from the crowds. I, I think the crowds are all congregated. out. Gentlemen, you okay? Uh, yeah, I think, good, yeah. I think what's yeah. happened is um, generally this late matches a one white by F1s and a, a few carp uh, because F1s are more ferocious and feed shallow and get to the bait before it gets to the carp. Because they're not really feeding the F1s, it's giving chance for your other fish to uh, to feed. So it's 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 sewn it on its head a little bit. We're, we're expecting F1s and to follow the wind and be where they are. It's not it's not worked out like that at the minute. That was Paul Wright on peg 25. He was actually the last out of the draw on, was it Tuesday we had the draw, wasn't it? And uh, actually got the final peg, got peg number 25 as well, but he said he was quite happy with that and he's hoping to celebrate his birthday later in the week. If you've just tuned in and you wonder what on earth you're watching, this is five and a half hours of live fishing on Sky Sports Action this afternoon. It is the mecca of fishing. The winner takes home £50,000, second place £10,000, section winners a couple of grand and anybody who's anybody in fishing is here this afternoon. We actually have former champions who are bank runners this afternoon. It's like being at the Open and having Tiger Woods on your bag, isn't it? I wouldn't know, Rob. <laughs> well, I'm sending you for sandwiches, you'll find out in the next break. <laughs> It is a fantastic day, there's no getting away from that, the weather is idyllic, there's a, that lovely breeze just to take the, the edge off the heat. 
Do you know, I used to go to a school called Mallet Lambert in Hull and we've had many fine sporting achievements, rugby players, athletes, footballers. This guy could be the first fisherman to go on our Hall of Fame on James Reckitt Avenue. But he's John Alexander from Hull, who says that if he wins today, he's going to share the prize pot with Art Hilmy. And he's hoping that Art keeps his side of that agreement because Art is currently winning. And it's great to have that camaraderie. It's always a good off. It's, it's a good hedge your bets as well. I used to share with someone back in the eighties, and um, it was always good fun. And then he suddenly won a lot of money on one match, and said, "Oh, I will give you half." And the following week, I won nearly as much. So he was much happier then. <laughs> well, this is one of our European contestants from uh, Maiden Bleak. He qualified from Snake Lake de Berenquil. I hope I've said that right. Uh, I've been practicing my Dutch. It's the uh, representative of the Netherlands, Andre Schepper. Well, we mentioned Paul Wright there, who has had a flurry of activity. Let's find out what's going on with Paul down on peg 25. Peter Stevenson is alongside him. Yeah, Paul is very, very focused, but Michael, his bank runner, off you go, Michael, is uh, going to pull out and we can catch up with the, uh, the way team. Just getting the bag out of the water. Apparently he's gone, had a pretty good morning. Very formidable looking way team here. <laughs> here we go. Fish in the basket. Get them in. Piece of crowd watching as well. Get it all in, don't miss any. Here we go, onto the scales. And we're looking at. Five kilo five seven five. Five kilo five seven five. Very decent. We, we've said if you could catch five or six kilos every half an hour, Keith, that might be the the target to aim for this afternoon. So Paul Wright will be happy with. It. He's got Michael Owen as his bank runner. We'll be hoping he doesn't pull a hamstring four and a half hours of <laughs> continuous activity. <laughs> We're getting right to love on. <laughs> pump up. They're working harder than the anglers, the bank runners. It needs to be on the weights, it needs to be in the gym. Well done, Michael, have a rest now. Top work. It's nice to see fish being caught from every angle of the lake and everybody's catching a few fish. And like I said earlier, none of these guys are out of it yet. Two or three of the anglers, that's the, their, their nets being taken out of the water to be weighed. You've seen them actually playing a fish at the same yeah. time. Yeah. This is peg 14, Adam Richards, who was in Fishermania back in 2018, didn't have a, a great year, but uh, the former chef is having, well, I was going to say a little bit of luck, but no, he's, he's, he's finally catching. Very that, well, very well fancy for today yes, as well. That again, that's a carp again. So there's a lot more carp being caught than uh, F1. And the average weight, you've probably got to get three F1s to equal a yes, carp, maybe yeah. even four or five. Because some of the F1s are quite small, but most of the carp are, are I've considerably been, big. I was speaking to Andy and Jamie this morning. They both sort of suggested or seemed to think that you'd want 110, 220 ish to win. Pounds. But there'd be a, yeah, yeah, pounds. And there'd be a lot of people in that ballpark figure. Uh, and, and it's looking like that's where it's, it's going to be. So you're looking at 50 kilos. We've got two leaders with both over 20. Well, Keith and Steve don't hear the same voices in the heads that I hear on a, on a regular basis, but the voice in my head is telling me that the lead has changed yet again. Art Hilmi is now in second place. Andy Power, who had a great opening half an hour, has gone back into the top position. Andy Dyson on peg number one. And James Howth suggests that the, the fish are having a little congregation over there in pegs one, two, maybe three as well, because Wayne Keane has had a decent half an hour as well. So Andy Power is proving that he's consistent. He, we saw him change tactics. And obviously the change worked. He went over, he went longer. He, he is feeding slightly differently over there. He is catapulting out bait, but he's also feeding in a little pot on the end of his pole, which really concentrates the fish around your float. You literally drop the bait in and drop your float in behind it. And it, it, everything's in a really tight circle. And, and that looks like it's paying uh, dividends. It was forced into that yeah. by camera crew, really. 
This is the uh, 25 to 14 <laughs> positions. Uh, Andy got almost eight kilos in the last way, and I think I'm right in saying as well. So one of those guys gets eight kilos, like Harry Bignall in 14th place, our reigning champion. He, he's up there in the top three again, so things can change. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, we're three tenths of the way through. Is this the time now? At what point do you change your tactics? You talked to Sarah who said she could go from plan A to Z. We, we will be talking to Andy May in a moment or two as well on maybe how you evolve your tactics. Would you, I wouldn't say panicking, but would you be now in bed and looking you, at it differently? You want to be ticking over. You, you, you don't want to be falling each, each way in further and further behind. You want to maybe maintain your distance and hope for it to pick up at some point during the day. But at some point you've got to say, I've got to attack it and start to take me up that leaderboard because you've got to make up the difference between what they've got in front of you and to get in front of them. So it's, it's a lot of fish that um, need to be um, caught. To start it's it's not like we've normally had fish in many venues. There's been big fish. So one six kilo fish, seven, eight kilo fish could bump you up quite quickly, three or four positions. This, you haven't really got that. Well, that's the current leader, Andy Power, on peg number 19, who has been runner up on two occasions. In second place is Art Hilmy, who's a debutant. Just 400 grams difference between first and second place. A reminder of the way that it works. During the weigh-in, you're allowed to get your fish in there. But come on, it's gonna be 4.30-ish this afternoon. Once they hear that final hooter, the fish have gotta be caught. If it's caught. not in the net, it doesn't count. Exactly. No, no, it's got to be in the net, Keith. A lot of matches you get 15 minutes <coughs> after the end to, to play a particularly big or difficult fish. There's none of that in Fisherman and the Hooter there goes. Things to go to, exactly. You, know? You, know? you have to pull really hard, Keith, don't you? Yeah, you do. You have yeah. To do. I remember it well. I remember <laughs> 1999 watching that little coy skimming across the top. <laughs> but and there's no VAR either today. No. no. It's, uh, well, I was speaking to him this morning, I said, I think like, Andy Power served his apprenticeship in this, in this competition. He's been here quite a few times. Well, let's have a little chat with another one of our former champions now. Andy May is our sage. I, I could actually throw a pebble and hit him here, but uh, that disturbed the fish. <laughs> but Andy, one. We, we mentioned before that the, the anglers may change their tactics. Give us yeah. a, an insight in, into what they're thinking now. Yeah, so definitely the tactics have changed. Um, Andy Power has gone from fishing close in, which is the method that I showed you earlier on in one of the demos. Um, it's gone for fishing tight across. Now, um, the idea of fishing tight across is to make sure your hook bait is right amongst your loose feed offerings and it's pinned down to the bottom. So what the anglers will be using is a nice positive float uh, with a robust body so it keeps the rig in position. Uh, you notice the shot right close to the hook and fishing it pretty much over depth. Um, so you're, oh, you're getting the fish coming into your peg, you're seeing the sort of like indications on your float but the beauty of fishing quite positive, you're not striking until that fish pulls your float under and it's on, it's hooked. Now, I've also noticed that there's a few anglers still fishing shallow, but not like on the other rig that I showed you before. So you get that initial run of the fish coming straight into the bait. Um, but what happens when they get a little bit used to it, a little bit like that, you need a, a through the water rig. Now through the water rig, you, you'll see the anglers slapping the rig over float settles and then we've got some nice small shots down the line now that bait is for sorry falling very very slow through the water um, leaving it settled for a maximum eight to ten seconds and then slapping it over again just repeating the business and keeping that bait going in all the time that's the key and you know there's a few anglers doing really well with them tactics how much bait do you think of using in a match like this, Andy? How much would you be You're asking budgeting? the wrong person in me, mate. I'll just fill it in, <laughs> don't I? You know what I'm like. That's why um, I asked you. Like bees' wings. <laughs> I'd say uh, a pint an hour is not uncommon. You know, a pint of maggots, casters, whatever they're feeding, it's not uncommon. The thing is, obviously, as you know, Keith, it's to get the fish competing. You need to put enough bait in to get the fish there, but then obviously you've got to hold them there, but then you've got to th think not of putting too much in that you're going to fill them up too quick or send them down to the bottom you just need to get them there and compete in so around a pint an hour I'd say from, I'd from, from what we've hour. been seeing and 
have you noticed there seems to be lots of carp being caught today, not as many F1s? Yeah, so we, we touched upon that earlier, didn't we, and how shy and crafty <laughs> the F1s are. Um, yeah, it's surprising with the carp, but I'm not surprised that the F1s aren't feeding off. Obviously, there's been a few barbel caught as well earlier on, which, you know, you know what barbel are like. They just want to get straight into the bait. But obviously, they've disappeared now. Carp are coming in. Wouldn't surprise me if there'd be a last, last run, <laughs> last hour maybe, of F1s. Uh, should, should feed later on, I would have thought. Andy, mate, thank you very much. There's another happy Andy over there on Peg 19. He's our leader. I think he's just extending the lead, uh, Andy Pow. It's great that uh, Andy May's talking us through the tactics and he's giving us a perfect demonstration on how to catch fish at Westwood Lakes. So Andy, it's going exactly to plan. He, he said what he was going to do to me this morning. He said, this is what I've got to do. I've got to catch barbel and that's what his main fish are at the moment in his net so and one of the things when you're fishing for barbel you're not fishing the right method or technique to catch f1s so if you get an f1 it's sort of a bit of a lucky bonus he's actually fishing for the fish that want to feed hard on the bottom don't want to come off the bottom so you have to feed quite aggressive to keep them and pin them down I am aware, Keith, that we're getting new viewers as the, as the afternoon rolls on. I know you mentioned it in the opening half an hour, but tell us about the fish that are being caught and the changes that we've got to a, a different lake, a different venue this year. Right, so it, it's a snake type venue, so in other words, it's a narrow channel that works its way around a field. The fish that we're catching, the fish that the anglers were aiming for originally, are F1s, which are a hybrid carp. They originally came from Israel, where they were bred for the table, believe it or not, because they come up a nice uniform size, like those bass you see in the supermarket. They're all the same size. F1s are the same. Uh, they're, they, they're not supposed to be able to breed. F1 is a hybrid, like your F1 plants in the garden. Their seeds aren't really viable. So they're that kind of fish. The other fish, the other fish that we've got, as usual, are carp. And carp, we know, are a bit silly which is why the F1s are a bit cleverer than carp. They decide they're going to feed in a different way so it makes it more difficult for them to be caught. Whereas the carp are just greedy and they'll come in and they'll hoover everything up. And barbel, as Steve just said, are going to feed more on the bottom. Now there are other species in there. There's a few roach, there's a few tench, Andy Power caught a tench in his first catch. They're not really counters. They're not really bonus. They're unbonus fish because they're smaller than the fish you're targeting. So catch one of those, it's almost a nuisance. There we go. Those are the stars of the show, but so is Claire Thomas. Let's get back to the water's edge, Claire Thomas. Thanks so much, Rob. I am down at peg two with Craig Eprils, who is bank runner to James Howarth, who is sparkling on debut. He doesn't look flustered at all. No, he's not. He's, he's calm. He's, he's had a bit of an early, early start and he's a bit slow, but he's had a good last half hour, so hopefully I'll carry on. You talk to him a lot more, I've noticed, than the other bank runners do to their anglers. What is it that you're saying and how have you figured out how make to how best to make that relationship work? Yeah, because of good baits, you just talk to each other. Shall we try this, shall we try that, shall we feed a bit more? That sort of thing, that's all. And what have you made of the conditions out here? It's not great here uh, because this wind has stopped now, so it might it might go a lot harder than it has been. I, I fancy I think the pegs down the bottom will get a lot stronger towards the day it goes on. And down on peg three is Wayne Kearney. I understand that the three of you are thick as thieves. Is it nice to have familiar faces next door? It is, it is. It's, it's all come down together. I'll have a laugh, we're all in it together. So we're all fishing the same method. So I'd be glad of any of them, wouldn't it? But the visor goes down, doesn't it, once the competition starts? Friendship ends oh, once that claxon yeah, goes. You can see you can see the daggers, how's he catching? And like, well, oh, he's catching it. I'm going to change to that, yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, absolutely does. Thanks so much for your time, Craig. Good luck for the rest of the afternoon. We'll give it a go. Cheers. See you in a bit. That's bad, yeah. Well, over on Peg 18 is Felix Schurman from Frankfurt, who has watched this event back home in Germany on Sky Sports, he says, for many years. But now he's at the heart of it, one at the Carpodrome in Erzi Felix with a, a massive weight of 222 pounds. He dream of that this afternoon, but in truth, he says he's just happy to be here. But he's he's had a slow start, then a good third way in. He's a very competent pole angler, but he's probably the best feeder angler in the world. And sadly, this isn't a feeder venue. I, I spoke to Adam Wakeley, who's his bank runner this, bank runner this morning, and he said if this was a feeder match for Roach, everybody else would be fishing for second. <laughs> yeah. He is that good. Yes. So he's very good at catching fish, mm -hmm. and he I think he qualified on the feeder. Peg 25 is Paul Wright who has uh, had, had an excellent previous uh, 30 minutes. He got uh, almost six kilos after, a, well, an okay start, a probably average start, 
Well, Paul Riley's currently in 11th place. If he gets another five kilos, then you know you could move up into the top five. And we've been going a couple of hours now. Time flies when you have it. Does. It does. I've been looking, at, just thinking about the geography of the lake and seeing, as, as uh, Craig just said there, the winds change slightly. And it is now blowing up that peninsula a bit more where, where Paul's on MPEG, where Paul's yes. 25. So it is blowing up a bit more into that area. This is Peg 9, John Jones, 38 years of age, who has a very familiar face as his banker. And he's got Kieran Rich alongside him, who's been in the final on five occasions, but Kieran is uh, that wise voice on his shoulder today. John uh, qualified from Moreland's Farms at the, uh, the back end of June. Not sure if Kieran's ever been described as wise before. I've known him for quite a few years as his cookie. Mm -hmm. And he's a very, very good lad, isn't he? But wise, he's wise one of his? I would say he's the most aggressive angler that I've ever... I mean, don't mean that in a... That's why I uh, call him wise. I <laughs> want to get aggressive. I meant aggressive in his, uh, how he fishes. He's his, a lovely lad. He fishes very, very, very positive. positive yeah. Very, very positive. Well, we've had, uh, what, was it three weigh-ins? We, 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 time goes, doesn't it? We, we, we remind you, watching Fisher Mania, somebody this afternoon is going to win £50,000. We've got no idea who it's going to be at the moment. Because Andy Power is leading. Very close behind him is Art Hilmy. And over there now is the reigning champion, Harry Bignall, who at this point last year was getting an inkling that he was walking away with it. This year... He's having a bit of a tussle. He's in 14th place. Catching a couple of quality fish, now. though. He's catching carp now, so it, it, if he keeps putting like three kilo, two, three kilo fish in his net, you soon pull that back. But there's got to become a time when you have to start to say, I've got, I've got to be more, a little bit more aggressive. Whether that's the reason they're catching down, there, or whether it's like Keith says, that wind's changed a little bit and give him a little bit more ripple on his pay. But this morning, when I walked down there, there was carp everywhere in them, that bottom peg where nobody really fancied. The wind was blowing down that way yesterday, wasn't it? It's yes. changed, it's changed it's almost 180 degrees overnight. Yeah. Well, well Harry said his life changed overnight when he won Fisher Mania. The money is one thing, <clears> that can be a, a life-changing event, but also wherever he went, everybody recognised him because he was uh, the man upon the podium in Fisher Mania 2021. His banker owner has spotted a fish that he wants to go for. We'll be back after we've had a, a little break. We will be back after the hake. Sorry, back after the break is what I meant to say. Hake break. I'm glad you're still with us. We've got your hooked, haven't we? Look how many cars are here today. If you didn't have a parking permit, you didn't stand a chance. They sold out Fisher Mania for spectators earlier in the week. Almost 3,000 are watching the anglers. 25 are by the Snake Lake here in Westwood Lakes. It's Fisher Mania 2022. It's a complete festival of fishing. Well, a lot of these guys are also rugby league supporters. I've seen some Hull FC and Hull KR shirts as well. Well, Hull KR in action against Wigan on Thursday night, 7.30 Sky Sports Arena. And it's Cass against Wakefield, 7.30 Sky Sports Arena on Friday night. Well, I suspect coming from um, Hull that Art Hilmy is probably a rugby fan. I know he's a fishing fan, he's currently in second place. Is it Rovers a hole for you, Art? Uh, neither, Liverpool FC. <laughs> Liverpool FC. <laughs> You'll never walk alone, you do know that, don't That's you? That's the one. Art, how are you enjoying your first experience of the Fisher Mania final? It's pretty hectic. Yeah? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, started off well. Eight kilos seems, in the first way in? Yeah, it seems to be slowing down each half hour though, so I might have to change something. Well, eight. Then 6.75 and then just over 6 as well. I think if you keep that up during the course of the afternoon, you're very much going to be in contention. Do you know how close you are to Andy Power? Yeah, I know. I've got my bank runner watching him, to be honest. I don't think he's had one this half hour. Not that we've seen anyway. So I just need to maybe you know, overtake him and put a bit of a distance between us. You need to have a word with your bank runner because he has had one. Well, has he? <laughs> just well, he's he's not that. paying attention. <laughs> he's been struggling to count the number of fish as well. Yeah, he's just, he's just had one actually, sure. Uh, 
we'll go I'll just go barber. silent a sec, Art. Just let you concentrate on doing your job. Oh, look at that. Multitasking. That was lucky. Self hooking fish. Yeah, the range you want. He did say self hooking then, didn't he? Yeah. Self hooking. Hooking is what he said. Yeah. Our director just had a heart attack. <laughs> self hooking. You're okay, Mike. Yeah. What are you catching, right? You're catching F1s or yeah, carp? All, all F1s. All F1s. Yeah. yeah, they seem to be in quite short supply for a lot of people. We've seen a lot of carp caught. I mean, obviously, we can only see what the camera's pointing us at at the time. Yeah. We've seen a lot of carp, a lot of barbel. Maybe it's that we can get to those fish because they take a bit longer to land than the F1s. Yeah, maybe. To be honest, my plan was to just stick out and fish for F1s. I'd, as long as I got them going, I know I'd get a few. Yeah, they were there quite early, but, but as I say, there's quite a few people struggled. Are you doing something, obviously you don't know what you're doing that's different, are you doing something that's not the usual method here? No, to be honest, it's pretty standard, just constantly alternating the way I present the bait. Rather than having to constantly swap rigs, I'm, I'm constantly swapping the way I'm putting it in the water. What, like slapping it or laying yeah, it in? Yeah, slapping it, flopping it in, laying it in, lift, lifting, dropping it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the, you get a couple of fish? Yeah, it, it, to be honest, it, it, it seems to, when we practice on Sunday, it seems to come in, come in spells. So you'll get, you'll see, you'll see signs of fish and then you'll catch a few and then it'll go quiet. Normally, most venues, you'd expect them to go deeper and you might put a deeper rig on. But I tried that on Sunday and they, would, they actually did disappear. So it's a case of trying to bring them back in, in front of you. Well done, mate, you're doing well. Oh, keep up the good work, keep concentrating. Thanks for letting us uh, into your world. Thanks very much. Continue in second place at the moment is Art Hilmy. I'm sure with a whole accent that he said a self-hooking fish, but if you heard something else, we do offer our apologies. Um, if you thought uh, that Art may have used some uh, foul language, he hasn't been uh, foul hooking fish, has he? No, foul no. hooking fish. It was, it was self unhooking fish. It's, 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 it's in the net, they do it all the time. <laughs> well, over on Peg Four is his big pal, John Alexander, who uh, will share the money with Art if either of them win the £50,000. We are due weigh-in number four. The anglers and their bank runners have just heard in the background the uh, air raid siren go off, which signals that uh, in the next few moments we're gonna be going around to uh, our reporters and finding out what the weigh-in has been. This is, John Alexander had a, a decent start, 4.725 kilos, then he went quiet in the second half an hour, then 3.4 kilos currently in 20th place. But what we want to know is how the leader Andy Power is doing, and the man that can tell us is Peter Stevens. Yeah, very, very interesting, and as a result, a huge crowd building up here. Matt, his bank runner, is just uh, getting his, uh, his net out. And we can then see uh, where he stands at the moment. Really, really good uh, start today by, uh, by Andy, and uh, really, Interesting to see how he's gone in the last half an hour, whether he can hang on to that lead. Matt just waiting very, very patiently. Here we go. Right, let's have a see. The total on the way scale. Whoa, two or three big ones in there. Let's have a look. And the numbers we're after. Two kilos. 600 dead. Two kilos, 600. Okay, 2.6, over to you. Well, thanks, Peter Stevenson, for letting us know exactly what's happening with uh, Andy Power. He will uh, want to know what is happening down there. I think it's peg, around peg 19. Let's go down to find out how Art Hilmy is doing with Andy Scott. Yeah, it's still down here at 15. Uh, Harry O'Sullivan. Art Hilmy's bank runner is just going to bring this net out and it was a, a sort of a slow passage in the middle there but slowly but surely certainly towards the end of this half an hour there's a 400 grams difference and that's not a bad looking net yeah plenty of carp in there Keith plenty of carp in there let's have a look at the scales here it's 
So we 4. think... 4.325. 4.325. We think, unofficially, that should take him back ahead of Andy Power. So that's 6.7 last time out. 4.325. Now that's 25.8 for Art Hilmi. Still down here at 15, still catching. Well, there's a great match developing between Art Hilmi and Andy Power. Andy, who has, well, won many, many majors in the fishing world over the years, never fisher mania. And Art, who is one of the form fishermen in the country, Keith. Absolutely. He's been doing really well lately at various venues. He came here, and I think the first time he came here, he, he framed, he won some money. So he's, he's, he, the thing is with these F1s, Rob, wherever you go, they're the same. Yes. Doesn't matter whether you catch them in the northwest, the northeast, the south of England, the way they behave, in different fish farms they come from, they behave very, very similar. So when you get to be a great F1 angler, and, and, and Bagger Bennett is probably recognised as the best F1 angler, they will, he'll know what to do wherever he goes and fishes from. Yeah, he'll fish the same rigs, the same thickness lines, the same size hooks, the same depths, the very, very much uh, creature of habit of F1. Well, we've heard from uh, Andy Scott and we've heard from Peter Stevenson. Let's uh, find out what's happening in the world of Claire Thomas and her anglers. Well, the reigning UK women's champion Sarah Taylor was off to a barnstormer of a start here on debut in the main draw of the Fishermania final, up into seventh place with three weigh-ins concluded. But it's not been an easy half hour for the Doctor Who aficionado. She didn't actually manage to bag a thing in that last window, so her total weight will remain the same. Plenty of fishing left to come, though, and she's a very cool customer. So we'll check back shortly, see how she's getting on. Hopefully she's still in the mix to make a little bit of history here today. I hope I haven't cursed her by talking to her. No, you'll be fine. I think it's only, for, only fair at some point that we actually mic up Andy Power and have a word with Andy because we've had a, a word in the ear live on air with most of the anglers so far. I don't think she'd be too concerned because nobody's running away with it yet. But, um, and she's there hanging on in at a reasonable distance away, I think, still, isn't she, Keith? Yeah, you saw what she just did then when she put her bait in fed and then she rolled her pole over. That's the, the kind of slapping effect that Art was talking about. And that slapping replicates the loose feed going in and the, the inquisitive F1s come up to see what it is, hopefully see your bait and hopefully grab it quick enough to hook themselves. The self-hookers. <laughs> no apology necessary. Uh, peg 23, Harry Bignall, the champion, is beginning to get busy. And 31 one. years of age with Dale Shepherd, but uh, maybe the most prolific angler has been Andy Power. Will the ninth final be the lucky one? He's been the runner-up twice, which today would earn him £10,000, but he's got his eyes on 50 grand, which is what the champion takes home. Again, that was another barbel, and if you see him, he was stood up then, uh, Rob, to land that fish, and it's because when you're playing a barbel, they never give up fighting and you can't sort of get their heads up to the surface, they just go round and round in circle. And you have to really pull them a lot harder than any other fish to get them to come to the top of the net. Well, this is the view from above. It is the drone above the Snake Lake at Westwood Lakes. We are in the heart of Lincolnshire, as you can tell. Flat, pleasant weather, little breeze, and two and a half thousand fixated fishing fans 25 anglers competing for the biggest trophy in UK angling. And I know we're being watched around the world as well. Hi to you over there in Europe and the viewers watching us live in Canada. That's peg 25, Paul Wright, he's at one end and at the other end will be Andrew Dyson on peg number one. T tell us about the, the, the blockers, Keith. They, nobody has a free area, do they? No, that's right. So next to peg 25, the next peg up, two pegs up, so everybody's got the same, same amount of gap, mm -hmm. or one peg up on 25, two pegs up on one. There'll be an, an angler fishing who's been employed, recruited, just to fish, to fish properly, to fish competitively. 
for the day, so the anglers on 1 and 25 don't have a bit of lake to themselves. The level of the lake is a little bit lower than I think the, the owner would like it to be. It's pro it could probably do with another 10 centimetres of water, but it's been so dry up here, he's not been able to get the water level up. There's one of the aerators we were talking about. That's the other one, that's the paddle type aerator. Yeah, and there you can see, that's the perfect description. You can see the angler at the bottom of the shot and the blocker at the top of the shot. Tough job being a blocker. Oh, it's terrible. I've tried for it every year, they say, no, yeah. I can't do it. Are we blocky being a blocker, that's why. That's one blocker next to peg one and the other blocker at the other end um, next to peg 25, effectively peg 26. Exactly. Yeah. That's to keep things fair. Little indication of uh, the professionalism of what he's supposed to wear. It's not an amateur sport. A lot of these guys go off into full time coaching. Andy May, who's our expert on site today, says that he's booked up to the year 2025. Popular man. Unbelievable, that is, isn't it? And they, you can see there, if, why Andy Power's catching barbel is because he's fishing where barbel live. Mm -hmm. The easy is that. Peg 19 is a known area. It's not permanent Peg 19, but Peg 19 a day is a known area for barbel. And Art Helby, who's on 15, it's a bit of a surprise because he's sharing similar sorts of water with Andy Bennett. Yes. Like, the, yeah. the, the scum line that was in front of Andy, I mean, it looked like mushy peas in front of him. It was green and bubbly on the top. So that scum line has actually spread a bit, and it's, it, in fact, it's just blown away now. The wind has changed slightly. It's just dissipated a bit. But that was just about on the edge of Art's peg. Maybe it was the scum line in Andy Bennett's peg the fish didn't like. Maybe. maybe. This is peg 23. Harry Bignall, our reigning champion. Last year, he had 85.22 kilos. That's an F1. Things That's are looking up for him. He's, sniff he's sneaking a few out as well. Yeah. He's sneaking a few out. The last three or four times we've gone to Harry with the fish. The last way Harry got to just under five kilos. He's got a total weight at the moment, I'm right insane, of 17.25 kilos. The, the thing is, Rob, as well, he's catching fish now at this time of day when the people who was in front are saying, we're struggling now, I'm having to make changes, where he's been keeping an early distance between them, yep. keeping a reasonable distance between them and starting to catch them and, and push on towards them. I'm prepared to be wrong, but I'm fairly sure I just saw him put a worm head on the hook. Right. So he's threaded a worm onto the hook and nipped it off, so just the head's on, and he's probably feeding caster, which are very similar, they're both reddish in colour, similar sort of size, bit of worm and onto the caster. But when you strike with the caster, you destroy it, so you have to put a new one on. If you can strike with a worm head, it stays on the hook and stays in good condition, so you can just drop it in again. So it's a, a real speed fishing technique. Right, we've had four weigh-ins, and we've had a change of leader again. They're taking it in turns. It was Andy Power, it is now Art Hilmy again. We didn't manage to distract him. Less than a kilo between Andy Power now in second place. Art Hilmy is uh, the, well, say the new leader. He's the leader again. He keeps nipping ahead. It's like a good 1500 meter race at the Olympics. Andy Dyson on peg number one has crept up into uh, third place with 3.6 kilos. And it was a very decent weight in the last half an hour for Paul Wright. Paul, I think I'm right in saying, got the best weight in the last half an hour of uh, 5.2 kilos. That's taken him into sixth place. Uh, and Jamie Hughes is still at the, uh, on the top half of the leaderboard. But our three times champion is currently in 13th place. Andy Bennett, the, uh, the favourite, with many of those in the know, is currently in 12th place. At what point do we start to discount people? <laughs> these asking. guys will want to know 15, 14 to 25. They're not discounted for their section. Mm -hmm. Their section, yeah. You, you've got to think that the fishing here is pretty consistent. There's, there's a lot of fish here. So you've got to start thinking that, as Steve said, if you're five fish behind, you've got to catch six fish to get in front, even if the person you're fishing with doesn't catch any. So if they catch five, you've got to catch 11 to be in front. So when you start to get a catch-up game, there's no 10 or 15 pound fishing. It. You can't just go for a broke, we said before, didn't we, with a big one. You can't go for broke. You've just got to keep doing what you're doing and hope it's your turn to have a real fast run of fish. And conditions as well have been consistent. Sometimes when we do this, during the course of five hours, the sun goes in. Thunderstorms. Yeah, we've yeah. had thunderstorms, yeah. yeah. The rain comes down. But it, it's been pretty even so far, hasn't it? It's been very temperate. 
you know, the, the wind was forecast... I knew that was a bigger word for it. Well, there you go. The wind was forecast to be considerably stronger than it actually is. And we, we were forecast for, for light cloud in, and intermittent sun, which is more... It's, it's, it's hazy sunshine, is it? It's not direct. The shadows are grey rather than black. It's the kind of conditions I used to love really fishing. Uh, my I think it, if, it, if it, the, the, the F1s do turn up shallow, and you, you people who are really good and very quick, such as Andy Bennett, Jamie Hughes, Kirsten, that they they still get in with a chance. But it's looking very doubtful that that's really going to work to, to some degree. Uh, it, it, it just ain't happening yet at the minute. But we're on for hundred pound. We're on for that oh, that yeah. sort of. Uh, and we're on for four or five people to get a hundred pounds. Yes, when, yes. You know, when it's going to be close, the, the person in 18th probably can't win now. Yep. But the people in... That's the top, bad news for Warren Jennings. Yeah, it? well, 19th, 20th and, and other numbers below that yep. may apply. Well, this is how things have panned out for Art Hilmy on peg 15, our, our current leader. Yep. And you can see it, it's, it's declined slightly, but it's declined where most other anglers have declined. But we've seen Paul Wright... Andy Dyson and Harry Bignall, they, I bet if you look at their Manhattan, it's actually going in the other Opposite direction. Way, yeah. So that's, and, and that's where you start thinking at the top, what can I do to maintain the catch rate I've had previously? Because those that are catching up don't have to worry about that because they know they're closing the gap. They're catching fish at the right time of day. Yes. They're, they are now catching fish and starting to pull them in. And they'll just, the, the, the current leaders just start thinking, I need to do something to yep. change. And that change quite often might be detrimental to where they are. It may be, said, 15 or 20 minutes when they don't put a fish in the net. Well, well here that's... to see a fish being caught. This is peg number one. This is Andy Dyson in his debut. He said it's his first real attempt at getting to the final of Fisher Mania. He's had a great start. He qualified at Old Huff back in April. There's certainly more fish at that end of the lake. And when you speak to everybody that, uh, about how this lake shaped and where the fish are generally, that end of the lake is usually really very poor. And when you walk around, obviously that's where the speaker system is, that's where the cars run by there. It's quite a busy area down there, and that was another thing that put most of the people off when they're down there, that they wouldn't be so good. Not admit too many fans around, Dyson, he's in a vacuum. He's up that arm and they can't get to him, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be oh, bring yeah. up later on. <laughs> Did you notice I didn't say anything then? Because Claire had already used it. I said, oh yeah. no. That's another one. Big H. That's a carp. Harry yeah. Bignall. So th there's plenty of fish down there, Rob, and it's just a matter of time before they sneak them back in. Best part of two kilos there, I would think, Steve. Yeah, definitely. Now let's see. You might see him turning a worm over. Look. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely looks like a worm. Yeah. Well, easy does it. I did suggest that it's only fair that we have a chat with Andy Powell because we've had a chat with all of the others at the, the top end of the leaderboard. After the break, we'll be getting into the, the mind, into the head of the man down there on peg 19 to the great start to Fishermania, Andy Powell. Well, it's a very busy weekend here on Sky Sports. You're currently watching Fishermania 2022, a live from Westwood Lakes in Boston, Lincolnshire, the epicenter of the fishing world this weekend. Later on this evening, we have live dance. The world match players got to the semi-final stage. Join the crew at eight o'clock on Sky Sports Action. Well, they all have nicknames. We're going to now talk to the Somerset spotter, Andy the Power Power. Well, I know he's a little reticent to talk as he's angling, but Andy, when you're second in the leaderboard and you've had a great start to Fishermania, unfortunately, had to be a little bit dis distracting to you. But I know as they put the microphone on you and put the ear, but it, it, it didn't upset you because you caught a fish as we were in a commercial break. I oh, know you've brought me a little bit of luck, so. Uh... <laughs> well, we can, you know, we can keep that in all afternoon for a fee. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, but yeah, it was a d decent start. I just lost my way a little bit. I struggled to catch, but I've started to catch a couple more now, so hopefully it will keep going. Do you we think the fish spooked out, Andy? What's that, sorry? Did you think the fish spooked out, or did you catch all that were there? I think they were spooked. There was a lot of commotion on the bank, people running around, 
kind of excited, I think, because I was catching, so that, that sort of ruined it on my short line. So I've had to go across now and get in a couple of fish. Do you, do you think they've, they'll come back to short line, uh, Andy? Hopefully, yeah. They hopefully get used to the noise and the pressure on the bank, and uh, hopefully we get a little run I've, there late. I've noticed that they're keeping a little bit further away from you now, so maybe that a little bit late on for them to come back on that short line. Yeah. Hopefully. Are the barbel you're catching over as well now? Odd ones, yeah. A few F1s, odd cart. So he's still putting fish in nice and steady then? Yeah, we, we had a, a dodgy half an hour where I just couldn't catch whatever I did, but I'm um, getting a few bites now. So. Notice you're feeding over there with the catapult while you were catching short, Andy. Were you feeding maggot over as well? I've gone for casters over. Right. And I've fished maggot short because of natural baits because it's a, a deeper peg that the barbel seem to live in. Oops, what's that one? Are you having any problem with foul luck? Because I know everybody gets problems here. Um, it's not too bad, to be fair. Um, is, it, is, it, is it fishing how you thought it would? Um, it's, it's how I hoped it would, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure where we'd catch many barbel, but my first three fish were barbel, so it was sort of game on then. But now we're, we're struggling a little bit now, so... I think it's when when you look around the rest of the lake, it's like swapped and changed about. People who were catching very little at the start have started to catch more later on. Like Harry down at the bottom corner in the, in the twenties, they and peg one, they've started catching. So there's some fish down at that bottom end, and it's sort of evened itself out a bit now. They're starting to narrow up the lead between you guys. Yeah. Do you think it'll it'll come good later on for you? I hope so. Yeah. I mean. I just hope them barb will come back on the short line because when they were there it was brilliant. Yeah, we could see you striking quite a lot, you're getting quite a few indications of lifting yeah. a lot. I've got one on now, <laughs> probably a barbel. Just like that, magic. <laughs> I know you said to me this morning you're going to have to set your uh, stall out to catch your uh, barbel. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, great sound effects. <laughs> Nothing like a fish hitting the back of the net there. Better than anything we can say. And a barbel. So your plan's working. Um, see how much luck we brought you there, Andy? What was that, sorry? You see how much we luck we brought you? Since we put the microphone and the headphones on you. You do realise they're going to stay on all afternoon if you continue. There, well, you were one and well, less than one and a half kilos behind Art Hilmy. Mm. Absolute study in concentration. Thank you very much for letting us into your world. Cheers, mate. We no will worries. be back with you during the course of the afternoon. Okay. Cheers, Andy. Brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant from Andy Powder. How many sports can you get into the mind and get a, get a, a self-commentary from the angler in the middle of a major exactly. sporting event. And there's his Manhattan where he said he'd, he'd lost his way a little bit, that, that fourth sector, and he started to catch again. So it, it'll, be, it'll be pleased that he's, he's doing that now and pushing on a bit. And the worm head as well. Yes. It's, it's quite an assuming guy, unassuming guy, isn't he, Andy? Lovely really quiet, yep. very, very, very focused in what he does, no matter what it is. Yep. And just very, very, very good as an angler. Yeah, very competent. On everything. Yes. Very competent you know, doesn't matter whether he's chucking out a fit from match fishing perspective, doesn't matter if he's fishing a waggler, a feeder, I, I can't Everything. speak for his stick float fishing, but I dare say that's pretty good as well. Uh, he's won matches on, on uh, natural venues yeah. for years. Yeah. This is Peg One, Andy Dyson, currently in third place with a cumulative catch of 20.6 kilos, so around five kilos behind the leader, Art Hilmy. But, but when you look at the, the, that end of the lake, is certainly picking up. Yes. There's more fish being caught down there than anywhere. Yes. Well, Jamie Hughes, I mean, the best advice I can give to anybody in life is don't bet. But a couple of the guys back in Bromber on the Wirral, Lewis and Deck, uh, had a little flutter on Jamie. And Jamie is currently, where is Jamie Hughes? He's currently in, well, an unlucky 13th place. So follow my advice, don't bet. But then again, don't bet against Jamie Hughes making a great comeback no. and taking the title no. for the fourth time. I remember saying the other year, Rob, that uh, he caught like three fish really quick. He says, 
now he's on a roll, there's no stopping them. I mean, they've had no more fish. <laughs> so you never 23 know. reigning champion, Harry Bignall. He has been busy, consistent. Decent fish as well. Yeah, they're carp as well. It's really weird here, Steve, compared to most commercial fisheries, because it's one of those lakes that sells its own pellet, and F1s are fish that aren't wild. They've never been wild. No. They've been produced as a food crop. They're now used as a sporting crop as well. So when they're delivered to their final destination, they've only ever ate pellets. Yes. So why aren't pellets the go-to bait on here? Uh, one of the things is about our baits, i.e. pellets. When you watch carp, and that's including F1's feed, when they swallow, say, three or four pellets, they have to crunch them up in, in, the, in the back of the throat. And then they spend quite a bit of time digesting that because it's hard. It has, to, it has to soak up a little bit. And it's a bit like you having a three, uh, three Rivita biscuits. You can only eat so many and you can't eat anything else. Other so, biscuits are available. <laughs> and I don't really look like I eat too many of them. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Right, but, but because it's dry, it's different to natural baits like maggots and casters. They can consume massive amounts without having to stop and once digest they, it. Once they've broken the skin of a maggot or a castor or a there's worm, nothing in it. they drink it. Yes, there's nothing in it. So, so, so they can consume a lot more. Mm. They don't have to sit and wait to, that digestive time to start uh, fishing again. Or feeding again. Peg 21. Greg Wellsby, who has been uh, down here practicing. Last Sunday, he had a, a great afternoon. He was only four pegs away from what is today peg 21. He's another one of the, uh, the anglers making his debut in the Fisher Mania final. He said he's been watching Fisher Mania on television for the best part of a decade. Well, you've heard from Keith and you've heard uh, from Andy May. You've heard from Cookie, but let's go back down and hear from one of the bank runners who is uh, down, well, close to the stage with Andy Scott. Yeah. Rob, we're down in fourth position, Adam Richards at 14, who's just been consistently catching. I think we're speaking about everybody else along this bank. We haven't spoke too much about Adam Richards. He's bank runner, Nick Speeds with me. Nick, is it going how you thought it would be? Fourth place, he seems pretty happy at the moment. Adam's very settled, he's doing really well, he knows what, it, what the plan is and it was always going to be evident that the middle of the match was going to have a bit of a lull and that's exactly what's happening now. He, he expected that, he's doing really well, he's got his plan and to be honest with you, it's working really well. Tactics wise, is it playing out how you thought it would be? We've seen one or two anglers come into the margins or switch tactics. Is Adam sticking to the game plan or has he changed? Well, he's sticking to his plan, but because the pressure on the bank side is completely different than what he's been practicing, he always expected that this was going to happen. So, yeah, he's definitely sticking to his plan and it's working. The fishing just is a little bit more calmed down than what he'd expected, to be honest with you. And I think a lot of anglers feel the same as well. I only got a brief chat with him last night. What is he like as a character? He seems very modest at the moment. <laughs> Doesn't seem overexcited. Uh, I don't want to jinx it. He's got a good crowd behind him as well, behind his peg. Adam's very cool, calm and collected. You know, he's concentrated, he's in the zone. And I think, you know, when you're in this final, you, you really are focused, you've got your blinkers on. And Adam really, really wants to win this event. And just before I let you go, this, this barbecue that we're talking about last night, he's put all the pressure on you. You're a former chef. You were in charge of doing the barbecue last night. Didn't want him to break, uh, to burn his hands, I should say. Although he had the cheek to complain about the chicken, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he moaned about, you know, it wasn't cooked enough or something like that. <laughs> but it was lovely. Yeah. yeah, we had a big plate full of food. So, yeah. Well, it's stood him in good stead so far. Get back to him. Well done so far. All right, good to hear Andy Dyson doing so well. Andy's uh, hoping to invest in his gardening business if he does win the £50,000 that goes with the trophy for taking Fishermania 2022. <coughs> Hopefully in the background you could hear the, uh, the hooter go off, which signals that we are ready for the weigh-in number five. Remember, we have a weigh-in every 30 <coughs> minutes. The cumulative total of how many fish the 25 anglers have caught current during the course of the afternoon. Give us an idea who's going to be the champion. Let's go down and find out what is in the bag with Claire Thomas. Welcome along to peg number one. Well, the locals reckoned this would be a pretty good spot for angling, and so it's proving. On debut, Andy Dyson is having a rip roarer. He's up in third place, so up amongst the medals. 
And once these scales are up and running, we should have an idea of how he did in that round. Can you let us... We're just getting the fish into the basket. We'll get them hooked up shortly. And see what Andy can do to narrow the gap on Andy Power and Art Helmy, who are up in second and first place. Three kilos, 225. Well, not his... Well, not his biggest haul of the day, but those numbers keep increasing. So we'll head over to peg two, where Peter is waiting. Yeah, lots of interest now in this particular catch. Out you come, man. Let's have a look. This is uh, Andy Power, who talked to us uh, a short while ago. Thought that he'd maybe had uh, a little bit of a wobble at some point during the morning, but we're now getting towards, what, halfway mark? Way number five. Three or four big ones in there. Let's have a see what the scales say. Okay, we have got four kilos, 625. Four kilos, 625 grams. Thanks, Alan. Okay, so down here with Art Hilmi, the net came straight out of the water with a weight of 3.675. So my quick arithmetic makes that 29.475. 29.475 for Art Hilmi this time round. Well, at the moment, we have no idea of uh, how it is developing at the top of the leaderboard. It is so incredibly tight between Art Hilmy, Andy Power, Andy Dyson, Adam Richards as well. It's, it's, it's gripping, isn't it? This is going to go right down to the wire. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> I really do. Um, it didn't look like that after the first two ways, but the... the, the the lower pegs are catching up. That end, the other end of the lake, is starting to be more productive. If you remember, we, I said that they wanted about 120 pound, and there'd be six people over 100 pound, and I think that's what it's going to look like. It might be a little bit more actually than 120 pound. I think it's yeah. going to come down to a stickleback at the end of it. Isn't it? <laughs> I hope so. I really do hope so. I really hope it gives a bit more excitement to the end. If there's just like ounces between two and three people. But, but you can sense the tension as we as we go out there to the anglers, and they're doing the weigh-ins, and they're a little bit unsure, and they're they're, right, they're they're concentrating on the fish, but they want to know what's going on around them as well. If you think back to when we when the, the previous ones, we were sat there looking. And he said, he's took the lead, he's had three fish, three fish. Some of these have got eight, nine, ten fish. So you, even, even us here sat here and we've seen what we're seeing, don't know who's really going to be, be the lead. One of them guys down at the bottom, Harry, might have shot right up there. We have to look pressure. at the pictures on the, 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 the weights that we give them because we can't tell, you can't judge. We've seen how many fish we've seen Harry catch this last little bit between four the two five. ways. Four yeah. or five. Four or five proper fish as well. But no idea what he's got in total no, weight. No. Well, Claire Thomas has uh, been a, a busy reporter this afternoon. She's been keeping a track of what's happening on pegs one to eight. She's also had a, a chat with Jamie Cook, who's the CEO of the Angling Trust. And, and they're very big at the Angling Trust into sustainability. Fishermania is famously the longest running event on Sky Sports and that longevity is something to celebrate and also to protect. So I thought I'd catch up with Jamie Cook, CEO of the Angling Trust, to talk a little bit about what this sport is doing to make sure that those waterways stay healthy. Jamie, record-breaking temperatures earlier on in the week. Just how much does that affect these ecosystems? Well, fish are... Um fish are delicate species and we need to protect them so from our point of view as anglers these commercial fisheries like this have put aerators in we can monitor dissolved oxygen to make sure that actually they're protected and on rivers where you haven't got that control we're running the same things monitoring the conditions and actually lots of the clubs stop the fishing through those periods when it's really hot just for the fish welfare and well-being because we don't want to put them under stress that's unnecessary at points when they're struggling. So that's the natural environment, but what about the hardware? What about the equipment that you use in this sport? How could that be better for our planet? Well, we're doing a huge amount. I mean, we, we run a, a campaign uh, around anglers against pollution um, and work alongside surfers against sewage in the end sewage coalition. And 
campaign around government around because the fish are a dividend of a clean environment and we need that and the trade have moved huge amounts in recent years and looking at sustainable packaging angling's obviously a, a you'll see with the the floats and in different spheres the lures and things like that that have plastic manufacture but the manufacturers are putting a lot of effort into sustainable development and as as we need clean environments it's really important to us as an industry what about anglers at home what can those watching on do to protect this sport so anglers against litter is a big thing david bellamy's uh, talked in the past about anglers being the custodians of our waterways without which they'd be used as sewers and natural england do a survey where four percent of the the well the english community volunteer in environmental based work in angling that's 57 percent so anglers are huge custodians of the environment so if you're an angler watching this you can go out look at the angling trust website for the anglers against litter campaign take five is a brilliant initiative where you can go and pick up litter in your local waterway and yeah it, it protect these environments because as we say fish won't be there without the protection of of anglers and and the environment they need to survive and survive well, it sounds very much as though angling is a sport tackling environmental issues head on. Let's hope we see fishermania on our screens for years to come and fish in our waters too. Thank you, Claire. Great to hear from Jamie Cook as well and the, the wonderful world work they're doing to develop angling around the country. I was just looking actually at uh, John Alexander before who started fishing in East Park in Hull. I used to look at that out of my school window. Also, fishing in River Hull, not so far away, was Art Hilmy who has been up there at the top of the leaderboard for most of the afternoon. We're still doing our sums behind the scenes. We'll give you the leaderboard in a second or two. We're basically Saturday afternoon, we're at the, the halfway point. He was leading after four weigh-ins. Will he be the leader after five weigh-ins? Might be the leader after six because he's just caught another fish, Keith. They're catching consistent, as, as Andy Power said. It's dropped off a little bit, but they're still catching consistently. But I don't think they're now catching as many is at the other end of the lake. I no. think people like Harry Big, Adam Richards has come on strong. You know, I, uh, I, I don't know how Paul Wright did in that last way, but they were catching really well in that area. Paul Wright is on, I know it's a peg you fancied, peg number 25. The last man to uh, find out where he would be placed this Saturday afternoon. He, uh, in the last wing, was in 10th place. But he's had a decent last half an hour over five kilos yeah, and he's got two kilos more than that half hour than no. art no, it doesn't take long two kilos more every no. half hour to start catching up and, and he, start making you look around you know when you're the man at the top of the pile you start to when, look around yes you start to make decisions and sometimes the wrong decisions when you're worried about people coming in from behind catching you up well, it's important to have a an experienced bank runner keeping things neat and tidy and informed of how things are going on elsewhere around the Snake Lake here at Westwood Lakes in Lincolnshire. Saturday afternoon, normally you've seen Jeff Stelling on your, your Sky Sports screens giving you the half time scores. Well, it's half time in Fishermania. We've had five weigh ins of 10 during the course of this five hour match. A reminder that it's 50 grams to the winner. They don't really care about that, it's just the trophy. And here is the breaking news. At the halfway point, Art Helmy has regained the lead, 29.475 kilos, 375 grams ahead of Andy Power, who was there, he's taking in turns every half an hour, these two. Maybe okay. we should extend it to midnight, see who's got the staying power. Look how close the next four are, though. Yeah. Look what that happened. Gap is definitely Paul Wright shown. and where they're from. Paul yeah. Wright. 23-25. Yep. Andy Dyson, all that end of the and lake, one. the next three. 25 and one are back to back. And James Howarth on two as well. And, yeah. and and they've they've come from lower down the pack, catching them up. So obviously they're putting more each half an hour into the scales now, on the scales now to, to close that gap. And Harry Bignall, last year's champion, as you say, peg 23 is a hot peg. We've seen him catching a lot of very decent sized fish, and he has gone from eighth place to third in the last half an hour. I, I, I should like to see a Manhattan of Harry uh, against uh, uh, the first ones to see how the changes, they've sneaked down and they're sneaking up. We'll have our team working on that for you. Your wish, your command is their wish or something like that. As anyway. it should be. Look at the difference between third and ninth. Yeah. A couple of kilos and you're there. Yeah. 
think we should rank can we rank up? Ah, to be fair, if the top 13, I think they're all still in with a really good chance. Yep. These need a, need a good a good half an hour. They want an eight kilo half an hour. Yeah. Some very accomplished anglers, some big names in positions 14 to 25, but it's tight at the top between Art Hilmy, Andy Power, Harry Bignall is on a charge, Paul Wright on a very hot peg, Andy Dice not so far away as the crow flies. The crow doesn't have to fly <laughs> very far between those two, does he? <laughs> you saw Felix there, up with 16 kilos. He was stone cold last, wasn't he, at the beginning? There's the man who's doing the catching up. Well, only one man has ever won it back to back. There was Andy Bennett back in 19, 2019 and 2020. Harry Bignall, 31 years of age, won it last year. And it was a life-changing experience when he became Fishermania champion. Well, I reckon I was probably about 10 or 11 when I first started. Um, just local, really. I've got like a little canal near me called the Beck, Beverly Beck. So I just started going on there with just with a little whip. I didn't even use a float, just had a hook length with a bit of bread on, on a hook. And just like dipped it in, watching, because the water was dead clear. Just watching the roach eat the bread, then striking and catching one. It's just all started from there, really. Like, yeah, ever since I started fishing, I've always known about Fishermania because it's the one that's on Sky, it's the one that everyone talks about. But I reckon the most memorable one for me was when uh, Jamie won it for the first time and he caught all them barbell. I reckon that was the most memorable one for me, obviously, apart from my last year winning it myself. So, yeah, the first one was probably then. <sighs> Couldn't have gone any better, could it? I mean, it was just, if you had a dream match, that had been it, that had been it. Because after like an hour, it was sort of like, you know, it was just done really, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? Um, I reckon it'll be very different this year. I think there'll be a few more people in contention, definitely. Um, but how it'll pan out, I've got no idea. It's the first time it's ever been on a venue like this, that I think anyway. I think, yeah, it's the first time it's ever been on a snake lake. And things with snake lakes, they're usually quite wind dominated. So, you know, I would, I would imagine there'll be a lot of fish in the wind, but he's left the area raters on as well, which is, another reason for them to sort of huddle into one area but I think there'll be fish caught all over don't get me wrong you know the field in this I don't think I've ever seen a stronger fishermania lineup than this I know there'll be, there might be a few people that you know people aren't heard of but let me tell you now these are some serious boys on this match it's a proper fishing match this um, and the winner they're going to have to fish the match of the life to win this match I'm telling you now a superstar of angling Harry Bignall in third place at the moment. Lights, cameras, action, maker. We've had a lot this afternoon. And as we've been listening to Harry there, you asked to see his uh, development during the course of the afternoon. We call it a Manhattan. And this is the skyline for Harry Bignall. Going in the right direction. As you see, yeah, he's, he's maintained slightly behind the leaders. Then he's, he's two good waves and then a proper way in there. And, and another one like that. And he's going to really put the guys in front under pressure. And the slightly change, as Keith just said, the wind's changed slightly. It's got a little bit more breezy than what it was. So maybe that's another thing that's having an effect down that end of the lake. It's gone to almost 90 degrees. But you look at that, and, and that's the way you want to be going yes. during a match, because yeah. you know we're, we're entering that middle period that sometimes is the doldrums, isn't it? You get a good start, and you, you're hoping always for a great finish. But when you start you catch increases during the middle of the match, one more good way in. When we, sp when we spoke to Nick Speed, Nick Speed said that during the middle of the match, everybody were expecting a lull. Yeah. And he says, we're in that period now. Well, our is not. Exactly. Our is not. I suspect that any second uh, we're going to be able to hearing from him because, as you can see, our, uh, he's, he's doing a great job in our, our sound operator there, in, in Mike and Harry up. Yeah. Like, He's been trained, 365 no, days, he's yeah. been working on this, not to disturb our champion angler. <laughs> Harry can't hear us yet. He's not distracted. Well done, Sid, who's our sound op. <clears throat> As a sound engineer... Yeah, he's very he's quiet, Sid. He doesn't speak loudly. That's why we call him Hissing, hissing Sid. Sid yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just beat me to that one. <laughs> <laughs> it could be worse. Look at this. It's when his sound You don't get this in the trouble. Premier League, do you? Well, Harry's a Yorkshireman. I don't think you'd need that on him. You'd be able to hear him up here anyway. So. <laughs> Sid is doing a brilliant I job think there. Harry, 
he doesn't realise it's going on. He's in the zone. Harry, can you hear us now? He's playing the fish, I think. Yeah, he's got a fish. Okay, we'll, we'll just... Yeah. Somebody have a word with Sid, just like Sid, stand back, Sid. Yeah. We'll just listen to Harry catch <laughs> the fish. <laughs> what? Where else do you Not really, that? mate. No. Just while you're lining up your t shirt. Hello, Rob, you there? Just a reminder your microphone okay, is live, uh, Harry, but we're going to listen to you. <laughs> Back to Harry in a second or two as he concentrates on that fish and tries not to be distracted by Sid the sound man. Is this peg nine? John Jones, we saw briefly there. And uh, alongside John is Sarah Taylor, the women's national champion. Sarah had a quite a decent start, four kilos in weigh-in number three, then a very quiet half an hour. But uh, she's come back with just over a kilo. And uh, you never know, she may be on a charge again. One of the emerging talents in the world of angling. And a great advert for fishing. Graduated with a degree in media and journalism, spends her week filming, talking about fishing, talks a good game and plays a very good game as well. She told me the other day she doesn't like fishing in the winter. <laughs> she packs up. I when it gets cold, it. comes out again in the spring. Fair weather fisherwoman. Yeah, unheard of. She, she actually said to me, I couldn't imagine sitting down for five hours and only catching 10 pound of F1. <laughs> now Steve and I, especially me, Steve less so, come from a generation where we could have caught 10 pound of F1s to last us through the winter. That's right. We'd have finished up as millionaires. Right. Looks well, lovely, doesn't it? What a beautiful sight. Keith Arthur, I think, has been recruited by the Lincolnshire Tourist Board, but it is a beautiful <laughs> afternoon. Hot, humid, just a slight breeze. But most importantly, we are seeing an awful lot of fish being caught at the Westwood Lakes on the outskirts of Boston, Lincolnshire. live at Westwood Lakes. Reminder of what we have on offer plenty of cricket. It's cricket season, it's cricket weather here in Lincolnshire. Tomorrow the third One Day International, England against South Africa join the team at 10.30 on Sky Sports Cricket Channel. Stay with them on Monday is the third Women's T20, England against South Africa as well. And then on Wednesday, six o'clock, Sky Sports Cricket is the place to be. Well, the place to be this afternoon, if you're into angling, is Westwood Lakes in Lincolnshire. He knows that his reign is about to be over. Or is it? He is the king of Fishermania, the 2021 champion, arrived all smiles. What a year it's been for Harry Bignall. He's had a slowish start. But he's on an upward curve. An employee of the month at Sky Sports is Sid the Soundman who could be a safe cracker. <laughs> he has been working diligently on getting uh, Harry mic'd up and the earpiece why, in the... Why, why, why are Hold you up. doing right here? Get out of the it's way, Sid. Get out of the way, Sid. Cheers, Paul. What's up? Harry, remind you, you are live. I, I hope that wasn't a fish that was lost and I hope we're not going to catch a few curse words. Yeah. I think it's... Um unsettling them a little bit with everyone stood behind me but I suppose it's, it's what you expect really isn't it? We'll stay with you briefly mate because you've had an, an excellent uh, improvement, it was a slowish start wasn't it but you started catching? Yeah I've started to catch a few on caster short but to be honest it's the only place in my peg where I can actually get, get bites, clean bites anywhere, it's deep everywhere else so I've just got one on that, it's just, it's just steady away mate. It's not, it's not concentrating, right, concentrating. I don't know where I am on the leaderboard do you? Yeah. <laughs> you want to know where you are on the leaderboard? Well, yeah. Well, last time we had a weigh-in, you were in eighth place. Yeah. But we've had one since, and you have moved up there, which is the reason we're speaking to you. You're mm -hmm. currently in third. In where, sorry? Third. 
I'm in first, am I? Third. Number three. Number three. Number three. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Just behind Andy Power, you've had 24.375. <coughs> Andy, 29.1. Art, 29.475. So oh, okay. about five kilos behind. Right, but okay. the, the difference is that you're catching quicker than anybody else at the minute. Yeah. And obviously that's why. Well, that, well, that, I don't think I am, mate. I think that, Paul Wright's well, catching quicker than me, definitely. Well, in, in, unless his weigh-ins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think there'll be. A, I might drop down, mate. I think so. I've had a bit of a bad. Well, the last last weigh, just to tell you where you are, Harry. You had a, you had the best weight by far. Mm. You had seven kilos in the last weigh-in, yeah. which is almost twi twice as much as those around you. Mm. Yeah. If you need a little pep talk, and Paul had <laughs> five kilos, five four, I think. Yeah. So, so at minute, you you are one that's starting to pull it together. You, the, the thing is, you know what it's going to be like. The more fish you catch, the closer you go up that leaderboard, yeah. the more people you're going to have around you. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the yeah. things you have to pull up with, I reckon. Yeah. And yeah. you're yeah. catching carp as well. Just, that's just let him catch. Let him catch. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we catch, mate, is catch. That's what we want. Yeah. We're catching small fish. But yeah, it's steady away, mate. Like I say, just keep going and hopefully they rock up properly. They haven't rocked up yet properly at all. They're just it's bits and bobs, that's all it is. Well, you're doing what you do, aren't you? Yeah. Cheers, mate. Cheers. You're right. Do you know when, when we had the draw the other day, he just cut me off the internet? He can't do that now because he's live on Sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I didn't actually mean to do that to you. I, 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 I was only laughing. joking, mate. I'm only joking. <laughs> but yeah. People do that to me all the time. Who was that? Is that Cookie I can hear in background? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Steve, how are we doing? All right, mate. Good. Watching there. Uh, if he doing... could phone a friend and Cookie was a friend, <laughs> what would you ask him? Say again. If you could ask Cookie some advice now as a former champion like yourself, what would you ask him? What would I ask him for? If I'd ask, ask him for some, mm. some advice, he said. Adv oh, advice. I don't know, mate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Throw balls of soap in everybody else's bait. <laughs> yeah, go throw some money in there. <laughs> you use your match bait, Harry? Um, yeah, I've had about five pounds of casters so far. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted to come and do, and it's and that's what all I was going to do, mate, is just do this. So. Yeah. Obviously, you just need it to. You need them to rock up on it. If they rock up on it, it could be great. Last hour and a half, but if they don't, they don't. We we'll just see what happens, mate. If you remember this morning, we said you want. You said you wanted 120 to 125. I think, I, I think you're going to need to win today. I think you're going to need 100 pound, mate. 100 well, you're going to end. You're on. You're heading for that. Yeah. Uh, you're oh, heading yeah, yeah. for more than that. Actually, I think you're slightly in front of that. You just need to keep doing what you're doing, Harry. Yeah. I will do, mate. I, you know what I mean? It's the problem is right. The, the, this is the issue. The wind's coming southwesterly, but it's also coming southerly as well. So it's like when the wind's blowing at me and I've got some ripple, I can catch them. But when it's flat, like it's kind of like it kind of is now, they're just like they, they just go dead scatty, and you can't catch them properly on the bottom. They want to come up and they go around the back of that island. I don't know really what's going on in terms of where they're going, but they're just not feeding when it's flat. So. The shape of the lake's what makes the wind more tricky as well, isn't it? Because you can see it eddying, it seems to be blowing different directions in different parts of the lake. And it's actually the shape of the bank that does it. But I can understand exactly what you're saying. Once that the surface of the water's diffused and they can't see up so much, yeah. they definitely concentrate better. Yeah, 100% there. It's the, it, wind's massive, isn't it, and everything, yeah. in fishing, it's just huge. Yep. Um, but, you know, just hopefully. Fingers crossed. Well, uh, they'll turn up properly on this line, mate, and then uh, <coughs> catch another 45, 50 pound. But it's not looking like it. Well, well, you, you, your man Adam's proving that you've, you, you've starting to catch more than anybody else at the right time. You was keeping and maintaining uh, in first half. All right. The thing, the thing is, right, is this venue is absolutely rammed with fish, like proper rammed, and it's shallow. So if you start putting bait all over the place, you're just you're just going to be everywhere. Do you know what I mean? You're not yeah. going to catch anything. Like you're not going to be able to read the line for long enough. You can't see really what's happening. You're not fishing a line for long enough to understand what's happening in your peg. So I think you've just got to fish one or two lines, try and feed enough bait to gather them into your peg properly, and then when they arrive, just clatter them. But you know, it's all well, well, and, well and good saying that. But at the moment, mate, it's it's, it's slowing down big time. But, but, but when you look round, it's looks like where Andy Bennett is. Andy's mm. really, really struggling. Yet everybody said that he was going to be uh, the man to beat. You see, I've just felt up one there now, Steve. Can you see? It's just, yeah. You know what I, mean? lo lo I think lots of people have had that issue, Harry. Yeah. It's the way it is. I know that's just because of the amount of people that's on the bank, as you know. Yeah. 
yeah, and yeah, yeah. film Death crews film. and car. You don't have this disturbance here normally. No, I don't. it's just too many in it. They're not used to it, are they? But Definitely you, not used to it at all. But, but you're doing you're doing as well as anybody else, and you're pushing people. Yeah. Where you've got your plan, it's working to your plan. Other people haven't started to change there to try and yeah. not let you get that much closer. Yeah, definitely, mate. Just, just keep, keep doing what you're doing, Harry. Yeah, cheers, bro. Nice one. Cheers, Harry. All right, see you in a bit. Harry, that is okay. absolutely brilliant. Right, right. How many sports can you get an insight into the mind <laughs> of a champion? Hey. Harry, currently in third place, had well, by far the best weigh-in in the last half an hour, 7.1 kilos. He's currently in third place behind Andy Power. He's 4.75, 4.725 kilos behind the lead. Andy Power in second place, just a very, very small fish behind Art Hilmy, who is the current leader on peg number 15. Harry on peg number 23. Right, let's go back down to the water side and get an insight in how things are developing and join Claire Thomas. Thanks very much, Rob. Fantastic insight there. And I'm hoping to get a little bit more from this man, Rich Chapman, who is bank runner to three-time champion Jamie Hughes. What an honour. How exciting that must be. Are you learning as much from him as you are contributing towards his campaign today? I don't think we're contrib contributing a lot, to be fair. I think it's more just with him. It, he knows what he's doing fishing-wise. It's just about trying to keep him calm and not making any silly decisions. But you're not, you're not there to tell him how to fish. You're just there to kind of keep him on track and not doing anything silly. Well, you mentioned doing things silly. That must be quite easy to do with all the distractions that Jamie has to put up with because there is a sizable crowd here at peg number five. Is it a blessing and a curse that he's got the reputation that he does? Yeah, it's, it's great that obviously people want to watch him and everything and want to get hat signed and things like that. But I think it does definitely the first couple of weigh-ins when there was a bit more noise. It's all settled down a bit now but it was definitely having a bit of an effect on it, but it seems to be calming down a bit now. It's just dropped on that short line and sneaking a couple more out. Well, hopefully Jamie continues to climb the leaderboard. You've just mentioned weigh-ins, Rich. We're getting the fifth one of the day underway. So let's head to Andy Scott, who is on the other side of the lake. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Still down at 15, still with Art Hilmy. Harry O'Sullivan, bank runner, has got the net out of the water. Let's have a look. Uh, this is like an NBA game. It's you go, we go, you go, we go with Andy Power. That's a good spread of carp in there as well. There can't be much between them. 375 grams. I'm going to be right on the steward's shoulder here. Boris, let's have a look. Let's let this settle. Four. 4.475. 4.475. So I don't want this on me, so I'm going to wait for the steward's arithmetic. <laughs> the pressure of adding up live on air is too much for me. 33.950. 33 33.950 for Art Hilmy, the current leader down in 15. So, Peter, over to you. What can you tell us? Okay, let's see how those figures match up. Matt is a uh, bank runner. Come on. In you go. Let's see where we go. Fish in the bag. Get that on the scales. Okay, we have got six kilo, 400 dead. Happy? Six kilo, 400 dead. Decent <coughs> half an hour. And uh, Claire, are you there to update us on your side? I am indeed. I'm still here at peg number five where Jamie Hughes, making his 13th Fishermania Grand Final appearance, has had a really good last 10 minutes or so. Four fish reeled in. Let's find out what that results in. 3.5 on the scale. So he was on 18.875 before this one. That is a sizable contribution towards his tally for the day. So Jamie Hughes still in the running and looking for that historic fourth title. Tough at the top. It's tight at the top after six weigh-ins of Fishermania. Remember, if you're just joining in or joining us this afternoon, we have 10 weigh-ins every half an hour. The cumulative total, the calculation of how many fish have been caught during the course of the afternoon decides who will take home the £50,000. They've come from far and wide, from Frankfurt in Germany. It's Felix Schumann. Oh, alongside him, sorry, is uh, André Schipper who has come over from uh, the Netherlands. 
who qualified from Snake Lake de Berenquil. He's had a, a quiet start. I've been averaging around two and a half kilos every half an hour. So he's absolutely enjoying the experience. Came over on the ferry to Harwich and he's having a fishing holiday as well as competing in the final. And knows that the folk will be watching back at home across the, the North Sea. Is Art still doing what he does? Now I look at the match results every week and just recently he has been at the, at the top or in the frame of virtually every match that he's been in. And yeah. you, you get those runs of form, Steve, don't you? Yeah, and you have to make some while... Yes, make over while the sunshine. While sunshine, yeah. yeah. And uh, he, he is doing. Because that bubble bursts at some time. Yes. And it's who comes back best are the people that last longest in the sport. Sometimes people don't come back and they give up. People never remember them that come second as well, no. Keith. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. I've won a couple, you know. <laughs> Not for Germanias necessarily, but... Uh, uh, 42 years ago, my, first, my most famous second. Which was that, Keith? Division One National. Division One. Art Helmy was born 42 years ago. There you go, see. <laughs> well, he's our current leader, Art Helmy, who is the, the debutant in Fisher Mania, and he is absolutely lapping it up. As you're saying, Keith, he, he has been in excellent form in recent weeks, and he's got, got experience of this lake as well, so he will know how to, to, to form his tactics during the course of the day. For sure. And, and, do you know, it's quite often the case that people that come to a lake or a fishery late on, people that grow up on a fishery, know what they know and they tend to do what they know and are reluctant to change but if you come on as a newcomer you try your own things and sometimes they work and you, or you can modify what the other people do because they can't see it happening you, you, you must notice that Steve you fish the UK champs yeah. and it's not often the local on the venue lives the, wins the UK champs quite, quite often what happens if you, if you imagine that somebody come here today and fish with sweet corn and he won and he, he came next week and won again all of a sudden the only method you can use to win at this venue is sweet corn, yeah. which is not true. It's just he's, he's done it right on the right occasions. So everybody fishes sweet corn, and then somebody will come and fish with maggots, and then it's one on maggots. So we, 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 we all follow trends. Jeff Ringer and the PVA bag at Earlswood. Yeah. yeah, same thing. He was the first one used it one week, three used it the second week, the third week. Everybody's everybody using it. it. That's right. And is it because he hasn't put all his eggs in his one basket? He's leaving everything open. Yep. He can refine it. He's, he's, he's got it. He's not got, like Harry said, not feeding everywhere. He's refined it to a few areas, a couple of areas, distance apart, and Andy Power, where they know they can catch. Well, there's a slight wind, but winds are not changing at Westwood Lakes. I can tell you, have just had one great scoring from Christian Jones. Eight, oh, eight and a half kilos. But will that be enough to take him into the top five? It's been Andy Power and Art Hilmy who have been dominating Fishermania 2022. When we come back from the break, we'll tell you how things are panning out after six weights. Almost 3,000 spectators have assembled at Westwood Fishing Lakes in Boston, Lincolnshire. Many of them envious that they are not out there centre stage in what we call the Snake Lake, competing for £50,000 in the biggest honour in UK fishing, which is the Fishermania 2022 title. One of the many big events we have on Sky Sports this weekend. Live tomorrow, the French Grand Prix, 12.30, Sky Sports, Formula One channel also in Ultra HD. Well, we want to know who's on pole, if you excuse the fishing pun, after six weigh-ins. I know Art Hilmi can hear me, and I've got some bad news for Art, who has been leading for most of the afternoon. He's just a whisker, 1.55 kilos behind Andy Power. They've been swapping and changing as uh, the afternoon has been going on. We've had six weigh-ins now. Jimmy Brooks has had a very good 
uh, last half an hour, 6.65 kilos in the last half an hour on peg 12 to go into third place. He slowed down a little bit for Andy Dyson, he got 4.675 kilos. Paul Wright is catching, Harry Bignall, maybe a little bit distracted by Sid the Soundman and having a chat with our uh, studio guests. And Adam Richards got a good four kilos in the last half an hour. But the angler who's had the biggest ride in the last half an hour with over eight and a half kilos in 30 minutes of fishing is Christian Jones, who went from 14th place to eighth place. If he gets another eight kilos in the next half an hour, then he becomes a contender. Well, that is peg 10. Christian Jones, only 23 years of age, who has been in Fishermany before in 2019, when he got 24 kilos. He's just caught eight kilos in half an hour. That's, that's the, well, it's the most impressive catch we've had all afternoon. Yeah, if you could put 18 pounds in, in old money, in half an hour's fishing, that, that's, that's phenomenal. Especially as it's coming, as the fishing for many people has quietened down a little bit. We're into the second half now, and this is the second half of the leaderboard, and unfortunately a number of these anglers could be discounted now, or they've really got to get uh, a trot on Andy Bennett, much fancied legend in this sport, twice the champion, currently in 14th place. Uh, Danny Keenan down there at the bottom. What is good to see though is everybody is catching. We, we've had years where anglers have got very, very little in the net, so at least there's been action wherever you go on the lake. We know that. My mate Steve Cook knows that. <laughs> he knows what it's like to have nothing in the net. Yep, I know what it's like. <laughs> well, one of the risers, it's like the charts on the Sunday afternoon, so I used to love that, listening to see what the risers would be. Going up into third place, I think it was in eighth place last time we looked, was uh, Jimmy Brooks. He's had a very decent catch of 6.65 kilos to go on to 28.875 kilos. So he's now only five kilos off the leader, Andy Power, and that is Jimmy Brooks, who's down there on peg 12, making a bit of a charge run in the second half. Do you think, Steve, you said earlier on that you felt the F1s might get used to it? Yeah. And it behaves more like it normally does. Do you think that's coming to pass? I mean, Jimmy Brooks knows the place inside out. He's a local, he's... he's He's catching well how he normally catches. And earlier on, obviously, he wasn't catching how he normally catches. And Christian catches. as well. And Christian doing well. F uh, fishing for F1s. Yeah. Um, because of the fishing shallow, when you're fishing shallow, you can get like a, a colossal weight very quickly. We said at the very start you were looking at 120 pounds. They're already close to 80 pounds, the, the leader. So it's looking on, on line for that. You know you said before that the glasses are there so they don't have the glare off the water. With Jimmy, they're hiding a shiner. He had a, a, a horrific five-a-side injury oh. earlier in the week, but he said nothing was going to keep him out of the final. And he's gone through the pain barrier. And there's in Manhattan, a bit of a quiet one after the first initial first half hour away. But he's holding his own, isn't he, now? Yeah, they're just coming back and I, I wonder if... if what you said, if the F1s are getting used to the crowds, they're coming up in the water, they're stuck. Harry doesn't want them up in the water because he's catching carp, he wants them down on the bottom. But do you think the anglers that are maybe thought he couldn't compete with F1s? He's not a regular F1 angler. So, who knows? I, I, I thought at this end was where the F1s were going to be. I yeah. Thought that, that's why Andy was, everyone was saying that it's not worth having a bet on Andy because Andy's going to walk. Yeah. But there's, there's still time for this to swap and change. You know, it's got, it, it, as a spectator sport, this will be probably one at best that we've got with that. Yeah. It is crazy, isn't it? The number of people when I tell them I'm, I'm working on Fisher Mania, and they say, does anybody go there and watch it? And you say, yeah, it's a spectator <laughs> People are fighting for tickets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't, but how many, you won't believe how many people's asked me, say, have you got any tickets back? Yep, me too. How, have you got any tickets? We can't get tickets. It's colossal. Because before, it, it wasn't a, a, an issue. Because it was that bowl shape, they just come and pile the safe self up. Yeah. And th there was no issue to the amount of people, but parking problems here means that it's got to restrict it. Well, around two and a half thousand, we've got the golden ticket to come and be on the water's edge today. 
and very respectful as well to the anglers. Absolutely. Everybody here knows exactly what's going on. They give them the space. Oh, the spectators are great, Rob. You know, we, we, we've had people talking to us and around and about us most of the day. They've all been calm and respectful and moved away when we're on air. It's a lovely, lovely crowd. And something else about this fishery that's different from most, I'm trying to think if it's all the other venues, how many other Fishermania finals of the world you can see houses? And we're actually that close to, to Wibberton in Boston here. We can yeah. see the houses of local, local estate. They're, they're just literally across the grass. I'm actually wondering whether it's the biggest sporting event ever to take place in Lincolnshire. In Wibberton. <laughs> it is in Wibberton, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Right, this is the top three. This is the, uh, the, like the play school boxes. And what can we see through the square windows? We can see Andy Power in first place, or the rectangular windows, windows if we're going to be exact. Andy Power, 35.5 kilos after six wanes, is leading. Second place, Art Hilmy by 1.55 kilos. But making a charge in the last half an hour, currently in bronze position, is Jimmy Brooks with 6.65 <coughs> kilos. Gives him a total during the course of the afternoon of 28.875 kilos. If you're just joining in, this is Fisher Mania. Andy would take home a big trophy and 50,000 pounds. Second place would get Art Hilmy, 10,000 pounds. And Jimmy Brooks on peg 12, may be in for one of the section prizes for £2,000. A lot of money on offer, but they all want to see their reflection in the trophy come around 4.40 this afternoon. We say it every year that it's not about the money, and I can tell you now, you can ask any one of them, but it's that trophy. Mm -hmm. It's that trophy, because it's, it's a one-off thing. You can only be one with it. They're all different. Everyone's a different trophy. The money's good. The money's, you know, it's, it's a nice amount now, but it, it, it's not that. It's what you guys do to it. You Sky Sports make, make this by televised, putting cameras in people's face, talking to them live like we have been doing, it makes this competition so special. It is a distraction, but it's a distraction you want, because it means you're at the pinnacle the, of angling. The, if somebody lost it because we, we did something and he lost the fish and he didn't win it, he'd it, be gutted. But he'd be back next year doing the same thing and hoping to be in that position for that to happen again. It's so special, it's a special event. And unless you're fish, a fisherman and fish it, you, you'll never understand. No chance for me and Keith. You might have a chance next no, year. No, I, I think I've had Go it. beyond the seven <laughs> qualifiers that you had in uh, 2022. Our uh, pundit today, Steve Cook, one of the esteemed champions of Fishermania back in 1999. Who will it be in 2022? Andy Powell, peg 19. Not too far away from him, Art Hilmy in second place and making a charge is Jimmy Brooks. There's confirmation of what's on offer this afternoon. The section winners, there are five sections. Each section winner is going to take home £2,000. The runner-up would get £10,000, which is a consolation, I suppose. And it was interesting when we saw Harry Bignall before, when he won a cheque for 50 grand in one hand and the trophy in the other hand, all he could do was look at the trophy. When you look at these three uh, uh, that's fishing now, and draw. Two of them's fishing the same, trying to catch F1 shallow, and Andy's fishing for his barbell across. So you've got two different methods, but all competing for the same. Uh, oh, we found spot. Andy again, and I thought he had a. They've all got anglers bladders, Keith, haven't they? <laughs> we, we thought we'd lost him, and he disappeared. <laughs> but he's not. He's not going anywhere until at least 4:30 this afternoon. He's, uh, he's in the zone, as they say. And you do get in this, and you forget about everything else, Steve. Don't you? It's just you and your float or you and your tip. I mean, I was never much of a tip angler, but it, it, it was me and my float and I yeah. wanted to, you know, you, you could look away and see things, but you knew what was going on there anyway. Well, you can see uh, it's, it's not a, a fashion statement for Art Hilmy on his collar there. Art is uh, mic'd up for sound. He's, he can hear every word that we're saying as well. And I know Art, when we went to the last commercial break and we were having the way and you wanted to know exactly what the difference is, we can confirm that he's, well, just over one and a half kilos between yourself and Andy Power. Yeah, I heard What's the that. plan, man? Yeah, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. They seem to have come back on this shallow line. So I'm, um, I'm just going to plug away. Keep putting fish in there. How many fish have you got in your net for this way already? I've got oh. six. You've got six already? Yeah. I think that'll push you back to somewhere near lead at the minute. And he's just put one in his net, but I, oh, think, right. I, don't, I think he's only had the one. I think. Has, has Jimmy had many this uh, half hour? Uh, I, I haven't noticed actually because that that should be on him, but I can see in behind me. I've seen you putting them in. So. Yeah. Just keep so you're looking it. right down the side. Art, did you catch right in the edge? I caught one, but it <coughs> just doesn't feel right at the moment. Yeah. 
So I'm going to leave it. Hopefully I don't have to use it, but it's there as an option. All right, she said at the time it, it had been down there for a very long time. Yeah. Um, for that, for you to use it as a method, and, and I thought you might be just resting money your lines for a few minutes. Yeah, I just, like I said, I just had the one F1, mm. and um, normally on here, if the, if they're in your edge, it goes straight away. Mm. That was the feeling I got. Yeah. D do you think, on a personal note, for you, it's fish different to how you expected? Um, to be honest, every time I was practicing, because I, I started practicing here when John had qualified, just to help me as his bank runner. And they always seem to draw up the, up the top end, and it seemed to be a much smaller stamp of F1s up the top end, and you'd always get some good weights from around here. This is the furthest round I've been. I was on Christian's peg on the practice match on Sunday, and I finished third, but I actually ran out of bait with uh, three and a half hours left. <laughs> so I know I, was, I, know I could have done a, a bit more, um, but I kept that to myself. And um, yeah, it seems to be fishing exactly how I, as I expected. How much did you use? Uh, I had four pints on Sunday, four pints of casters. Yeah. So how many have you brought today, a gallon? I've brought 12. 12. I'm not planning on using them. <laughs> I think I've used about six so far today. Okay. And it seems about standard, because that was sort of what um, Harry said he'd use, Steve, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I could hear him actually. Oh, could you? Yeah, he likes a moan, doesn't he? He's trying to moan the fish on. <laughs> oh, I know some anglers who've made a career out of moaning. Some Which... anglers are never happy unless they're miserable. I think he's just so intense, you know? Yeah. Oh, he loves it, doesn't he? Yeah. That's, you know, my very old, good old mate Steve Gardner was exactly the same. <laughs> Real great character, fabulous sense of humour, but as miserable as anything when he was fishing. And e the easiest person in the world to wind up, not that I'm very good at winding people up. <laughs> it is a, it's a character though, isn't it? Some yeah, people that's just, right. that, that, that's how they concentrate, that's how they work. And he's just netting one now. Is he? How yeah. many is that, is that? Uh, I've only seen him have the two, but obviously oh, right. I'm, I'm, I haven't been watching all the time. Yeah, but, yeah. but he's a barbel, so. It's Babel versus F1s today, isn't it? Yeah. It looks and Harry's way. getting caught. Oh, right. It looks that way. You just got to keep putting your fish in your net and keep concentrating right, on doing yeah. what you're doing. Now that I've got this ripple back, it seems to be a bit better. And Harry said exactly, well, you probably heard him. Yeah, he said did, exactly yeah. the same thing. When it yeah. goes calm, the fish are there, but the bites are finicky and iffy yeah. and, and he's foul looking. When it goes ripply, then they get their heads down and really start to munch. Yeah. Well, to make things even, Art, we are now miking up Andy Power, who's over there on peg 19. He's yeah, just get, caught a fish. Get Andy Mayer to go and stamp on his platform. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you uh, angling with a smile on your face. And Jimmy Brooks is on the charge as well in third place. We're getting close to the final 90 minutes of Fishermania. And, well, we are seconds away from weigh-in number seven. We are live in Lincolnshire, it's Fishermania 2020. We're into the second half now and things are changing at the top of the leaderboard. We are due weigh-in number seven in a couple of moments' time. A reminder, a very busy weekend here on Sky Sports. Tomorrow is the Women's World Match Play, one o'clock Sky Sports action. And then tomorrow evening from nine o'clock, same channel, the World Match Play final. It is £50,000 and the trophy that will be the envy of every angler, well, I was going to say in the UK, but Europe as well. I know we're being watched around the world. They're watching in clubhouses of golf courses in the Costa del Sol this afternoon, as well as Canada. They're having a family party over in Ireland as well for Danny Keenan. Not a lot to celebrate at the moment. And the current leader is Andy Power to make things fair. Andy has now got a microphone and a headphone as well and we're hoping not to distract him and a reminder that you are live on Sky Sports. He's, he's a very politely spoken man, he's Andy Absolutely. Power. What's it like to be at the top of the pile at the moment, Andy? Am I top, am I? You are by one and a half kilos. Oh, close then. A total of 35.5 kilos. Art Hilmi is 33.95. 
Does and that mean your bank run is now sacked permanent? Uh, maybe, yeah. I might get Neil McKinnon back. <laughs> No, I thought you were getting rid of Neil McKinnon now, because you've never been at the leader point in this part in a fisher main, yeah? That's a fair point, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to put ideas in your head or anything. What's that? I didn't want to put any ideas in your head or oh, anything. Oh, no, no. So he, wasn't, he wasn't recruiting himself, Andy. <laughs> How, how's it going, mate? Is it... Um... Uh, it's uh, difficult, really, because every time I think of changing, um, I, I catch a barbell, so it's, it's difficult to sort of stick with one line. Sorry, the sound's gone, I can't hear anything. You still, you still hear you? Cookie was saying there that you, obviously you, you finished runner-up twice. What have you learned from that to take you into this final straight? Sorry, I couldn't hear anything then. We'll, we'll get Sid the sound man back on, so he's, he's a marvel. Are you hearing us now, aren't you? It's back now, yeah, you're back. He's back now. You've just heard the... Uh, the who to go off in the background. Question was, you, you obviously you finished runner-up twice, you've been so close twice. What have you learned from those two occasions to take you now into this final straight? Um, just sort of keep your head cool, really. Um, I've been in this situation quite a few times with other matches and been close to winning. <coughs> and um, it doesn't pay to get hot and flustered, so just stick what I'm doing. There's not a lot else I can do, really. Just hope the fish come back. And... Uh, Hopefully we get over the finish line in the first. It just alternated between your two lines. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, um, like I said, it's difficult to sort of do anything else because I don't want to come off these lines and cost myself some time. But you know, we're leading at the minute, so I guess we've just got to stick with it. And it's got you to where you are now, aren't they? Them two lines. So. Yeah. Providing you've still got life there, where there's life, there's hope, and if you're getting signs and indications and the occasional fish, then stick with it. Have you had any short again, uh, Andy, at all? Literally, just before you mic'd me up, I had two fish short, and then it, it, when they were micing me up, it went dead then, really quiet, so I've just gone over across to see if we can carry on catching, but hopefully we'll, when it goes quiet again, hopefully we'll catch some short. Well, Andy, I know you're desperate to find out how others are around you are doing. 24 other anglers uh, do the way in now let's go down looking after pegs one to eight is claire thomas thanks rob i'm back at peg number one where i've spent a lot of time today and that is because andy dyson is having the debut of dreams up on the biggest stage of them all and right as i arrived here he caught something resembling moby dick so this could be a very good way in indeed and so it proves seven kilo Sorry. Seven kilo, nine fifty. A fantastic haul for Andy Dyson. He's right in the mix. So let's hear from another Andy. Andy Scott, over to you. Yeah, Claire, I'm down at 12 with the man on the move, Jimmy Brooks. 6.650 last time at sixth weigh-in. He hasn't stopped catching. He's on a hot run. Let's get uh, his bank runner, Adam Playford, to bring that net over. Let's have confirmation of this. It's no exaggeration. I, take, I took a walk over to 12. And everyone was saying Jimmy Brooks is on a run. Let's see, some, there's some decent sized fish in there. You can see you have one very decent sized mirror carp. So Jimmy Brooks was in third with 28.875. Not quite the seven kilo that's just come out. On the other side of the lake, 5.250 on the seventh to weigh in. We're just going to get confirmation of this. So Jimmy Brooks moves to 34.125. 34.125 down here in 12 with Jimmy Brooks on the move. Well, it's not going to be enough to take Jimmy into top place. It could take him above Art Hilmy, but we know that Art Hilmy does have a, a decent number of fish in the keep net in the last half an hour. Some of those anglers didn't want to know what was going on. Some of them want to know exactly what is going on. It's hugely psychological. Harry Bignall's just had a, a weight of 3.5 kilos, which momentarily takes him into third place. It's definitely slowed down from what it was, though. His surge has slowed, hasn't it? He had a couple of fives on fives and sixes, yes. didn't he, Harry? Yeah. Peg 25, Paul Wright. 147 pounds at Lindholm Lakes. 
to qualify for the final. This Back kind of May. fishing as well, same kind of fishing as what he's got today. <laughs> Chase me. That's a characteristic of F1s, that's what <coughs> we do. If, if you look then, that was up to the side of its cheek, yeah. you want hooked in that's the mouth. Why, that's why it wouldn't come up, yeah. But that's the br brown goldfish side of the genes, isn't it? They, brown goldfish stroke crucian, so fight that way. Lots of activity around the Snake Lake. Let's find what's happening uh, on those high numbers between 19 and 25 with Peter Stevenson. Yeah, Paul Wright, he was uh, a birthday man earlier in the week. This will be a terrific present if he can pull this one off. Let's just uh, get the very latest. His uh, bank runner, Michael, just pulling out from there. He's had a really good couple of hours. He's all been five, six kilo hauls in the last uh, couple of hours. So let's just see if uh, that stays up with that. Here we go. Just tip all these in and we'll just see if Paul Wright can keep this little bit of momentum going. Nice to get on a roll. Here we go. Let's just see. Five or six in the last couple. Three kilo, 250. Three kilo, 250 has gone down a little bit from the, the last couple. Let's find out uh, how life's doing in this lovely sunshine with Andy Scott. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Back down at 15. Art heal me for the way in now. Bank runner Harry Brooks bring this over, and it really is you go, I go with Andy Power at the moment. So let's see. Plenty of fish in there. 4.475 last time. So let's see. We'll be going to Andy Power straight after this. So this will give us an indication if there is a change again at the top of the leaderboard. So all eyes on these scales here. Six point two two five. Six point six point two two five. It seems to be the outside of the eight kilos that we had from Kieran Jones last round. Sixes and fives are consistent catches on this side of the lake. Forty. We've we've gone past forty. Forty point one seven five for Art Hillme down here at fifteen. Well, they're crunching numbers behind the scenes. For now, that takes Art Hillme possibly back into top place. Andy Dyson had had a good half an hour. He had just under eight kilos, which took him to the top of the pile. But that was just while they were working out with Andy Power. And Art had got Christian Jones has again moved up there with 6.4 kilos. OK catches for Paul Wright and, uh, and for Harry Bignall as well, with just, uh, just over three kilos for the two of them. And this is why we're here to see fish caught. Where are we now? This is, looks like we're down at peg 25. This is Paul Wright. Paul is currently in fifth place with 31.4 kilos. Just over three kilos in the last weigh-in. That is uh, approaching weigh-in number eight. And this is a picture of concentration. Man versus fish. Watching power. When you when you fight when you're fighting a fish Nothing when you're playing a fish like that, that's Wait, all you see. Is more. you and the fish. This is James Howarth, by the way. And uh, it's a big hello to wife Lauren, who I'm sure would be here today, but she's not feeling so well, so she'll be supporting James from uh, the comfort of the sofa, hoping that he wins because he's promised a, a house <coughs> deposit and a holiday. She's going to keep him to his word if he takes home the £25,000. 50, Rob, 50. 50,000. Devaluing. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's going to keep half himself. Oh, that's what he told me later, <laughs> earlier on. <laughs> it's a little deal we had. I know he can't hear me, but I don't want to talk and disturb him. Well done. Well done. Right. Let's get back to Peter Stevenson. Hi Rob, yeah just done a personal best to do that 400 metres from Paul Wright to find uh, Andy down here. Seems a long time ago, since 9 o'clock when we arrived and he was the first angler I spoke to. Let's see the latest haul and just find out how the uh, stats are starting to add up. Getting very, very, very exciting. There's a big crowd gathered here. 
just to uh, witness the weigh-ins. But these are these weigh-ins starting to run out now. It's starting to get tense. Okay, we have three kilos, five hundred. Three kilos, four hundred and seventy-five grams. Three kilos. There you go. That's the latest grams. offering from uh, Andy Power. We wait and see how the day's going to pan out. Well, less than 80 minutes left in Fishermania 2022. An hour and 90 minutes in many sports sounds an awful long time. To the anglers out there, it won't seem time enough, Keith. No, it never, there never is enough time. But there's too much time if you're winning and not quite enough time if you're, if you're close. You've just got to hope that you keep catching. You've just got to keep, try and keep your concentration up, try and keep those fish coming. You're, now you you should be well into things now and you just hope they don't change and Andy's got his stall set as he said he's got his line on line close and his line far and he's just trying to keep both of those lines buzzing at the same time and you see he's catching in bursts he'll catch two or three fish then he doesn't catch a fish well he'll change his line even if it's only just for a minute or two but it, the, the method is because he's fishing on the bottom trying to catch them barbel it's always a little bit slower than those who are fishing shallow because you're bringing so many fish into your peg the flick it over once get a F1 on and they're feeding for the next one. So yeah. it's, if they come shallow, they come a lot quicker than what he's doing. But, but the bigger fish, yeah. but the bigger fish what Andy's catching. Yeah. It's been as he, said, he, he felt where he was, he had no chance of catching enough F1s. Peg one, to, to Andy dies. And to compete anyway. No, no, no. Andy in the last half an hour guys had just under eight <clears throat> kilos in the net, which has taken him up the leaderboard. And some of that might be because he's got ripple on now, which he never had before. So it's yep. a change in wind direction. During this weigh-in, we've seen the lead, just this weigh-in, <laughs> the leaderboard has changed four times. Mm -hmm. Just in this weigh-in. Top of the leaderboard, I meant, has changed yes. four times. Not all, it's all changed. But top of the leaderboard has changed four times. Momentarily, Andy Dyson was at the top of the leaderboard, but that's Correct. as we were weighing the fish for Andy Power and Andy Dyson. And I think now all can be confirmed and all can be revealed. After seven weigh-ins, this is the state of play. Art Hilmy has again got a couple of strides ahead of Andy Power. 1.2 kilos difference. He's going like one and a half, 1.2, one. I've got a feeling that by half past four this afternoon, it's gonna be just a, just a few grams. Andy Dyson has had a very decent half an hour though, just under eight kilos, 7.95 kilos to take into a cumulative total during the course of the afternoon of 36.45 kilos. So it's looking very busy down there on peg one, as it has done for Paul Wright as well, who had 3.2 kilos. Christian Jones again, in the last two weighs for Christian Jones, is at eight and six. He's at almost 15 kilos in an hour of fishing. He's only got to keep that rate up and he's, he's, he's notching up again, isn't he? He's getting up there. Similar, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Brooks and Andy Dyson, they're, they're just doing enough to, well, not only keep in touch, but, but I think if you're not in top seven, Keith, now, my gut feeling is that you're out of there. Top seven, let me see. So you're down to Harry. He's 31, he's 30 kilo. You're 10 kilo yeah, behind. Ten, yes, that's a lot to make up. So I, I think they're out of it. One to seven, yeah. you think? Yeah, realistically, I think it's one to seven. Jamie Hughes, surprisingly, down in 13th place. He's normally quite modest, but he really did fancy the peg that he got. And these are the guys that are just out here now enjoying the sandwiches, the sunshine, and having a chat with the spectators on their shoulders. It just shows you what does bookies know about fishing. <laughs> really. Andy Bennett and two favourites uh, a mile out of it. A lot Hilmy was uh, in the top three with the bookies at the start of the day because he is a form fisherman. Andy Power has been there or thereabouts, twice silver position, currently 1.2 kilos behind Art Hilmy. In third position, making a bit of a charge on peg one is Andy Dyson. Jimmy Brooks, sounds like a country and western singer. He's currently <laughs> in fourth place. And Christian Jones, another one about a young anglers, but an experienced angler as well, just had uh, just under six and a half kilos in the last weigh-in, who is lurking on their shoulders. It's making for an exciting finish, Rob. 
that's for sure. I wonder if Art can still hear us. Give us a nod if you can. Ah, uh, he knows exactly <laughs> what's going on. And if Andy can still hear us. I guess not. Well, Andy can. Half a smile from Andy. A huge grin from Art. Andy Dyson currently in third place. If he continues like this, we'll be miking him up as well. Okay. We don't want to disturb you for too long, but first of all, let's have a quick chat with okay. Art. I know you wanted to know what was going on yeah, around you. How does it feel to be just edging it at the moment? Um, yeah, it's good. I'd rather be in front than behind. Good point. Yeah. Well, it's just, uh, it'd be nice if the match finishes now. From a, from a fishing point of view, Art, you, you've done it how you wanted to do it, yeah. and it's working. Yeah. You're in front, you've just got two more ways to go. Yeah. What more could you ask for at this point in time? Nothing really. Do you know what? I just need to have a similar couple of half hours like I've had all day, and that should be enough. The, there's one thing, the, the top three is making for a real fishing spectacular. Oh, yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. You, you're pushing each other all, all the way, which is, for all us watching, is making it really good. But for you sat on that box, it's a bit nerve-wracking, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It'd be nice if this ripple stays for the rest of the match. Oh, thanks very much for giving us an insight. Four pegs away, peg 19, second place, a fraction behind you. Keep swapping places at the top of the leaderboard is Andy Power. Have you changed your mind, Andy, about wanting to know what's going on around you? <laughs> I can see him out the corner of my eye, if another fish. <laughs> that means he can see you with another fish as well, mate, don't worry. Are there still uh, barbel you're catching, Andy? Um, last few, I haven't had a barbel for a while, the last few fish have been caught, to be fair. Right. Um, but I've, I've had to wait a long time in between bites and it's just... Um, yeah, because they're catching shallow, it's, they're catching quicker, aren't they? Yeah, it's, yeah, and I'm sat here waiting. Yeah. Just to uh, open the float goes under. Is, is that what you're going to stick till till end now, or...? Um, it depends, really. Um, Unless you force into something. What's that, sorry? Unless you force into making a decision, you're going to stick or...? Yeah, I mean... The thing is, it doesn't take me much to, you know, put eight kilo on the scales in one sort of half an hour session because they're big fish. And if I, if I can get a little run of them, then that'll be it, I think. But it's just uh, lining them up properly. I don't know where they were, but that was what Art said exactly the same. He said, well, on a little run of fish, a good an eight kilo way, and then he's home and dry. Yeah. So you're both on the same thoughts where well, that's not true. Yeah, but I mean, I, I guess he's got to clutch a lot more numbers of fish than me, really. Is that sledging? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can hear each other. It's, it's, it's like cricket, where we've got the microphone in the stumps and we can hear what they're saying. Art Hilney. Yeah, I can hear him. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> That's through the headphones and not because of, there's a, a lovely silence down there at the waterside. Are you getting signs, Andy? Are you getting indications of swirls and things? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the last five minutes has been good. There's a few more fish there at the minute. I've got to change this one. Bands come off. It's a great point you make as well, Andy Power, because Andy Dyson, who's in third place, got just under eight kilos in the last half an hour and has moved up into third place, but the camera's trained on Art Hilmy and Andy Power. One of these guys is going to be taking home 50 grand. Well, you never know. Could be Jimmy Brooks, could be Andy Dyson, could be Christian Jones. Well, geographically, they're not too far away. In the Snake Shape Lake, westward in Lincolnshire, Keith. Exactly. And Art, as you can see on the map, there is the extreme top right corner, 15. And Andy is just at the start of the straight, coming um, south of him on peg 19. And similar sort of distance apart from the, the, their, their pegs to the far bank. Geographically, the pegs look the same. The wind's having a different effect. It's blowing probably almost straight at Andy Power now. 
whereas slightly um, horizontally How many are in, uh, in, in art swing. He's probably got a bit more rip on his art. The highest point of these lakes are the islands in the middle. Usually the, the lakes are dug and it will produce a berm on the, the banks themselves. But when Alan dug Falcon Lake in particular, the, the, the spoil went into the middle. So the highest point's the island. So that's sheltering Andy from no. the majority of the wind. It seems to have slowed down a little bit. Yeah. But for everybody, just a little bit. Yeah. Keep your eyes on him there. The sun came out a bit, it's gone in a bit now. It, it right. was very warm for a few minutes, wasn't it? And then all of a sudden they just put a couple of fish together, start yeah. a little run, go in and come on. Are you willing one on there? Oh, yeah. You're willing one on. I'll do a Harry and moan one on. <laughs> <laughs> No love lost between the uh, <laughs> East Yorkshire neighbours. <laughs> it's a Yorkshire thing. It's rubbish here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't get a bite. <laughs> well, Art on peg 15 has promised his big pal John Alexander over on peg 4 that should either of them win, they're going to split oh, the £50,000, so it will be £25,000 each, Keith. Sorry. Um, I mean, one thing I, 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 about today really is that uh, I should like it to be a lad who's never won it before when, and it looks like that's what it's going to be. You know, it gives them that experience rather than somebody who's won it before. And it looks like that's where we're going to be today. We do have two previous champions in the field. Jamie Hughes won it in 13, 15, 17. Andy Bennett went in 20 and 21. We've got Andy May who's giving us our demonstrations in 2016. Rob Hitchens won it in 2004, and he's the bank runner for Perry Stone, and some guy called Steve Cook won it back in 1999. He's educating us with his wisdom this afternoon. Looking enviously at those angles yeah, as well, aren't you? You're, right. you're enjoying what you're doing, but you're wishing you were... I'd sooner be there. Yeah? I'd sooner be there, yeah. How different is it now to how it was then? How different is fishing evolved Massive. in those, those Massive. 23 years? massive to compete now against these lads at uh, uh, F1 fishing it's a young man's game it's physically demanding when they're catching 200 and 300 pound constant moving shipping in and out fishing 16 meters slapping feeding I always used to say when you fish rivers you'd speak to some of the lads and they'd say I've used a gallon of maggots the reality was they dropped four pints under the feet and only fed four these lads actually feed 10 and yeah, 12 yeah, pints yeah. actually feed so it's very very busy monotonous type of fishing but relentless Monto monotonous if I could say monotonous could be magnificent <laughs> but like you said uh, Rob I I'd love to have been sat there to probably today I could have competed because this sort of weight is, is no problem virtually everybody and that men or women can quite comfortably catch it it's the decision making where these lads are really good because they do it so often do it on a regular basis and make decisions very quick and don't think should I do that should I, I might do it in a minute they just do it and make massive changes or small changes and make massive changes to the, the results Sarah Taylor our women's champion had a decent half an hour by the way she had just over four kilos she's uh, currently she moved up four places she's currently uh, in 16th place but the cameras are trained on Art Hilmy peg 15 leading Andy Power peg 19 by 1.2 <coughs> kilos and Art is looking busy I'm not going to say what I think because I won't want to put kibosh on either one of them but, but, but go on I, I think it's looking good for Art if I'm honest oh I think his pegs that could be up. the motivation but, that Andy Power needs at the right time you yeah. know and, Andy's not out of it by a long way but Andy's waiting far longer for bites Art's putting fish in I know the smaller fish but he's putting fish in on a regular basis and you know it started as a breeze it's now quite a got a significant wind isn't it it, it was going to pick up this afternoon and it's, you notice it's changed quite dramatic it was blowing to sort of into our right eye when we started it's now blowing almost into our left ear so it's gone round almost 90 degrees this afternoon almost to where it was yesterday Steve but yeah uh, one thing about today it's 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 a uh, um, nip and tuck at the minute there's there's 
nothing in it really. No. And today's competition is not going to be over till that final whistle goes, no. that's for sure. And while, you, you, as you say quite rightly, Art is con catching consistently, if Andy gets three fish, that's Art's half hour wiped out. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's gone a little bit quiet for Andy Powell. There's been a bit of a power cut. And uh, Art Hilmi, he's caught a few, so maybe it's an art attack. You may be having one. He nearly smiled. But we are approaching weigh-in number eight. It's imminent. It's a sweltering Saturday afternoon in the heart of Lincolnshire. We're at Westwood Lakes on the edge of Boston for what I would argue is the biggest ever sporting event in this county. Crowds have congregated since early this morning. You can't get a ticket for love and the money. There have been almost 3,000 anglers who tried to make it to the final. We got it down to the final 25. And there's probably seven that could take home the £50,000 for the first prize and the shiny trophy. An hour to go. We're due way in number eight. Well, that was the Sam. We're into the final hour. If only we had a couple of champions of Fisher Mania, Keith, to give us an yeah. idea of uh, what goes into the mentality going into the final 60 minutes. The fish in the oh, no, no, sorry. No, you, 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 yeah. you just stand there and look for it. Yeah. 99. Andy May has joined us. He's been giving his wisdom and entertaining us. So, was it 2016? 2016. Yeah. Bang yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. So, you've been there, you've done it, you've won it. You've yes. got a t shirt that's a bit baggy on you now. <laughs> very, very baggy on me now, thank you. Yeah, yeah you fill that one well. <laughs> so, going into this final hour. Yeah. What's going through the, 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 the mind of the lads? I think they can hear us as well. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, it's, it's sticking to the guns now, I think. Rather than swapping and changing, sticking to what they're doing. The likes of Art, he's fished that one line and he's just fished absolutely superb. He's just done it right from start to finish. It's been amazing to watch. Obviously, there's a few anglers starting to make a bit of a comeback as well. You know, the bigger fish have started to feed, the bigger carp, the bigger barbel are still starting to feed. F1s haven't really shown. Um, and it's, it's just going to make for a, an awesome finish. I know you're a fishing coach, you're a mine coach as well, and they will be listening to you and, and hanging on to every single word. But what they want to know is exactly what the weights are in the bag. Let's go down for our weigh-ins. First of all, it's to Claire Thomas. Thanks very much, Rob. Well, debutant Andy Dyson really is putting the carp in carpe diem. It's his first time on this big stage and he is making it count. Wife Shelley and four kids are watching on at home with that shiny new Sky Sports subscription and they will be so proud of Dad, who is up in third place and by the looks of it has got a couple of good-sized fish in that basket now. Let's have a look and see what he can do when it comes to closing the gap on second and first place. Four kilos, one, two, five. There you have it, 4.125 for Andy Dyson. Let's hear how the other medalists are going. Over to second place. Yeah, it's down to fine margins now. Maybe a little bit of luck, looking at whether your, your angler's flustered or phased. I've got to say, Andy Powers looked cool and calm and composed all day since we got here early doors. Matt, not for the first time this afternoon, and certainly not the last. Get those fish out of the water and let's uh, see what we're looking at now. Like I say, margins getting very, very tight now. This and two of the weigh-ins to go. There's so many pairs of eyes on this uh, meter reading, it's untrue. Okay. Here we go. There was a few in there. Let's have a look at the, uh, okay. the number. Here we go. Four kilo, 400. Four kilo, 400. Let's see if Andy Scott has got any better than that. Back at 15, Arta Hilmi, all eyes on him, bank runner. Uh, Harry O'Sullivan, they're just, they've just actually got a fish at the moment, so Harry's just predisposed. Okay, let's, let's bring this net out of the water. Just talking about consistency here, so over the seven wains that we've had, Art Hilmi has had three six kilo pluses, one eight kilo plus, and the only time he's dipped below four kilos was in that 
one uh, 25 to 2 window. Plenty of carp. Let's see. Consistency is key. What are we looking at here? Let's let this settle. Four point. 4.725. Boris confirms 4.725 again. So let's just see what that totals up to. 44.900 for Art Hilmi down here at 15. Still catching consistently. And he's got chicken in out there, wasn't he? He wasn't doing the calculations. He's living it to the experts there. And all around the lake here, there are people number crunching. And he's saying, Keith, it's coming down to very, very fine margins. But he's nearly there with 100 pounds. That's 99 yeah. pounds he's got, in his, he's, he's got in his total net now, which is what we were saying. We said under 220 pounds yeah. that you'd need. I, I, I think Art's got it in bag, really, if I'm honest. I think he's just slowly catching out he wants to catch he's done it all day and I think he'll just keep putting up fishing net four kilo five kilo it did just be enough I think he's maintained the gap there hasn't he because the yeah. other weights we saw yeah. were four two four seven so he's maintaining that kind of gap I've only seen Andy Power catch two but I've only watched him for a couple of seconds I don't know whether he's had any more than that what do you think Andy do you I think, think I think that's it obviously the fish are all similar stamp aren't they so obviously it's going to take some some bigger fish I know Andy Dyson's had a few bigger fish but because they're all sort of like similar size they can't really pull anything back on art so what it's size are they catching? What size are the fish they're catching? It's difficult to see from there. They they're sort of like, like around a kilo. Most of them are around a kilo, yeah. As big as that. They, yeah, don't, yeah, they yeah. don't look quite that big for No, the, the, the chunky fish, so, yeah, mm. it's good. And because he's fishing shallow, I think he just, he just flips it over and he gets one. That's it. It's straight back a, in and gets another one straight away. It, as you might know, it's my favourite way of fishing the old white really? world ever. Just because you can, you know, feed that bait, get them competing, and it's just a fantastic way of keeping them there. You know what I mean? When they're getting there competing for that food, it's brilliant. Over on peg one, Andy Dyson, who is currently in third place, is catching again. I can tell you in the last weigh-in, we're now getting weights through. It was a decent half an hour for Harry Bignall, who got 4.775 kilos, takes him up to 35.675. And Paul Wright had 4.275, takes him to 35.6. The leader, remember, was Art Hilmi with 49.175. <laughs> He's just a consistent catcher. Yeah. They're all that same ballpark, aren't they? They're four and a half kilo, that ten pound in old money ballpark. The thing is, is like Dyson, they're, they're catching proper carp, mm. where Art's catching the F1s. Yep. The bigger fish, but the, 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 they're not catching them as quick as Art. No, he's probably he's catching two or three into. But I think with, uh, with, with Andy, where he is, Andy Dyson, obviously he's slightly up that arm, sheltered a little bit more, and that's where the bigger fish might potentially gather. So. Yeah, it's still, it's exciting, it's all to go, isn't it? It's all to play for, it's brilliant. It really is. Which is what we were hoping for. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's not a one-horse race, no, or two, one peg. This, it's I can't still... remember uh, a final like this, it's uh, just been brilliant. 1996 was quite like this. 1996, uh, <laughs> no, I can't remember that. Can't you remember were, then, Keith. You were school then, you were school. Except, I might have had air then. Except, I reckon I had air Except then, it was one with something like six and a half kilos. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Because there was, there was it was all weighed in old money, there was 14 ounces separating the top six. Oh, blooming that. Right, Steve okay. Ringer was second and dropped a skimmer with like seconds to go. Oh, right, you don't remind him about that, do you, Steve? No, no, <laughs> not much. No, because we were sharing. <laughs> well, let's get down to the lakeside and uh, hear from Claire Thomas, who is with one of the bank runners, I believe. I am indeed. I'm back at Peg One where we really are camped out because the Andy Dyson story is evolving nicely. Martin, his bank runner, is with me now and I can't help but notice the two of you are really dancing along to that music. Yeah, we're loving it. We're loving it. He's getting plenty of bites. He's doing things right. We feel like we're on the right lines at the right times and yeah, he's loving it. You mentioned that he's got the right lines. Yeah. You also said to me earlier that he's getting his rotation right. Yeah. What do you mean by that and how much of a part have you had to play in that decision making? Well, it's all on Andy down. He's the angler, isn't he? But we've noticed there's a pattern. We nick two fish from the edge and then we've got to go short again. And it's just a case of just rotating them, two lines, just keep them coming. He's making his debut here today, but he doesn't look like it. He looks very to the manner born. Was he excited ahead of this? Nervous? Where was he on that scale? Yeah, he was excited. He, he was the build up to it was brilliant because the draw was on Tuesday, so he had a lot of time to look forward to it. So, yeah, suits him. 
Now, there's only an hour left. Not much time to make inroads on that leaderboard, but enough time. What's he going to do to close the gap on first? He's going to catch carp. <laughs> simple. <laughs> that simple. simple. That, that simple. I guess it really is actually quite a simple competition, Fishermania. Yeah. Catch as much as you can, as quick as you can. Any final wise words you'll be giving to him? Just catch as many as you can. Well, there we go. We're saying the same <laughs> thing over and over here, but then I guess it is five hours of fishing, yeah, so it does get a bit repetitive. Rob and Co, back to you. Thanks very much, Claire. Simple. Stay sharp, catch carp. Catch as much as you can, as quick as you can. <laughs> He's in again, Rob. He's got another one. Actually, what you've got to do is make it last five hours. You know, you can, catch, you can sometimes catch too quickly, can't you, Andy? And, yeah. And, and Fizzles you, out later on. Exactly. You want to protect your swims and then go on at the right times. Yeah. You know, and that's what these anglers are uh, so skilled at doing, so you, that's another You just have to leave rock. a couple of fish there, Keith, feeding, to draw other feeding fish yeah. in. Well, that's if you notice when you uh, stuck into one, he's feeding straight yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Andy's in again as well, the power. Yeah, it's obviously the prime in the swims all the time. It's so important, obviously, in match fishing to keep swims on the go. You know, as a coach, obviously, I'm, I'm teaching this all the time. Keep the swims on the go. So if one swim dies, you can go into somewhere else. Feeding's everything, Andy, isn't it? It is. Feeding and presentation. It's everything. Yeah. Massive. The two biggest things I'd say in fishing, and then confidence and obviously accuracy. Yeah. But yeah, definitely feeding presentation. Sandy Power catching on peg 19. But the leader is Art Hilmy on peg 15. He's trying to match him fish for fish. There he is, he's got one in. That's Art, I think. I'm sure it is. Is this Art again? I'm sure it is, yeah. That's a lovely ripple there now, it's turned into a bit of a roll along it's lovely, there, it's isn't a it? perfect ripple. So a slightly smaller fish but F1s and obviously F1s being <laughs> shoal fish, yeah. you know, it just ticked over all day. Lovely. Because that's all he's done all day. Do you reckon mind if I go and ask him for a go? <laughs> just like 10 minutes, <laughs> <Just> go. <laughs> he's just done it how he wanted to do it's, it. Yeah, exactly. From start to finish, it looks like start to finish. He's a su superb angler, especially shallow fishing. He's just stuck to his game plan and obviously he's made it work. Did you, have you coached him? No. No. No, I can't I take wish he had it done. Uh, he probably taught me the way he's going. <laughs> yeah, I'll have learned something off him, Steve, definitely. <clears throat> he's only, his, his name's only come to the fore the last couple of years, though. I was going to say, that, last couple he's, of years. He's quite yeah. a newcomer. Definitely. I remember drawing next to him at uh, Partridge. He loves Partridge Lakes. Mm. Obviously, my local. And he absolutely smashed me to bits. Did he really? <laughs> yeah, he did. So obviously straight over and asked him how he did it and yeah, such a lovely bloke as well. He is a lovely bloke. He I just spoke to him this morning for the first time. He's absolutely smashing he is. But why do you think he, he, he bettered you that day, Andy? I don't want to go into it, to be fair, Keith. So uh, <laughs> on to the next question, <laughs> no, really. It was, it, was, it was a serious question. What did he do that you didn't? Or what uh, did you do that he didn't? Drew a better peg. Now I'm, I'm going to put it down to the wind and the ripple. Yeah. Yeah. And presentation, feeding, and, feeding. <laughs> and he landed them quicker. But and he got them in that, quicker, yeah. <laughs> apart from that, no. There you go. Oh, it is difficult though, isn't it? You, you know, you, you try and so he's, now he's catching deep there. Yeah, you, 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 bigger fish as well, Andy Dyson. You, you try and work out why that there is that difference. That that and it, it's it's a tiny amount. When it, you look at the, the difference in the top of the leader, which one or two fish? It's different styles for the anglers as well, yeah. Keith. Obviously, Andy Dyson. I know Andy really well. He fishes up my way at the old fisheries, uh, and he, he loves this short line for bigger fish. You know, carp. Whereas Art, obviously, he stuck his uh, game plan on fishing shallow. Art's oh, got another. Um, um, yeah, so it's brilliant. This is Peg 15, leader, Art Hilmy. That's a better one, isn't it? Every time we put a camera on him, he's catching a fish, on, which is the idea of the afternoon, really, I guess, isn't it? It's a bit bigger, that one. Yeah, it is. Lovely. It's nice to see that he's, you know, he's, he's stuck to his guns all the way through. It's brilliant. Obviously, just changing the Don't depth. But, you know, obviously, when you get into that rhythm and you get used to knowing what you're looking for, a couple of inches either way, up and yeah. down, you know. It makes a massive deep, difference, Oh, it? it's ridiculous. You wouldn't believe that you wouldn't. from getting no bites at a foot well, deep, coming to 10 inch, and yeah. all of a sudden you're catching one every drop in. Well, yeah. you wouldn't Just believe the difference, as, as Art said, between laying your bait on the water yeah. and lowering your bait into the water. Yeah, so yeah. obviously, and obviously different rigs will do different things, but slapping the rig over with a little bulk, it's going down really quick, yeah. and you're catching them that last two or three inches, whereas you're lowering it down, obviously the fish come in to take your bait and they can't get away from it, so they hook themselves, but it doesn't necessarily fall as much as natural, because yeah. you can't lower it into natural as what it, what it is when you're slapping the rig over. There it is again, into another one. It's really exciting stuff for this last 
That no, bulk you talked about is quite important there, Andy, as well, isn't it? Because the, the, the weight will pull the float down, yeah. whereas if you fish strung out, yeah. the bait pulls the shot down. Yeah, so the difference, so obviously if you're fishing strung out, you want to slap the rig over, hold the float tight, hold yes. a real tight line to it so it's falling natural. Whereas with a boat one like that, you almost want to slap it, lift the float back over so it's going straight down yes. the line and the fish tend to hook themselves like that. Well, that's Art Hilmi, who's like a human octopus. He's so busy. For the first time this afternoon, as we've had eight weigh-ins, there is no change in the top three. Andy Dyson still in the third place. In the last half an hour, he got 2.7 kilos. Andy Power got 4.4 kilos, but in the last weigh-in, Art Hilmi had a weigh of 4.725 kilos, which gives him a lead at the moment of just over one and a half kilos from his bitter rival this afternoon, Andy Power. It's tight at the top. Six kilos difference between Christian Jones, who's in fourth place, who had another decent half an hour. Again, he had the best of any angler in the last 30 minutes. He had 5.35 kilos. Before that, he had a six. Before that, he had an eight. So he's maybe quietly coming up on the outside, but it appears it's going to be the two Andes and Art Hilmi, the A team at the top of the board. A reminder that these guys are still here. They have worked their socks off to make it to the final of Fishermania 2022, but now it's just a case of enjoying the, the last hour or so of Fishermania and catching some fish. That's how they all started in the first place. It's a sport, it's a pastime, but for these three, it is incredibly serious. Art Hilmi from East Yorkshire, the leader, the man who has been in fantastic form in the opens in recent weeks. He's on a charge, Andy Power. Most people will be happy with second, but he's sick of it. He's finished in silver position on two occasions in the finals of Fishermania. And in third place on hot peg number one is Andy Dyson. Art. The only issue for Art is that he's got to get it in the keep net get his bait out there again, and he has just been continuous. Yep, relentless. Oh, nice. At least this time, and I know it's not much consolation, but at least Andy will have 10 grand compensation. This time, if he's second Andy Power. I think. Well, we'll in fourth place, and don't rule him out, is Christian Jones, who's on peg number 10. He has been consistent and he's been averaging somewhere between six and eight kilos. He's only got two more weigh-ins, we're into the final hour of course of Fishermania. It goes down to the wire. It's how many fish they have in five hours of continuous fishing. There'll be no extension beyond that final hoot up. Look at that, eight and a half kilos, almost six and a half kilos, almost five and a half kilos. I don't you think want an extension, you want injury time, stoppage time, uh, anything. I, if, if I'm honest, looking at what they've got already, I think it's between top three. Mm. I think he's just that little bit too far behind, even with eight kilos every well, weighing to I'm catch up, because they're going to catch four or five where, where yeah. they're doing. He's had 5-3 last way, so say five and a half, so he had 11 on to his, he's got 49. Yeah. You had eight, nine, which Arts had two ways, added together, four, four and a half, say, twice, then Arts four kilos. Yeah. So uh, Christian's uh, got to have an outstanding time and Arts got to break up length. Uh, uh, Well, the tradition in Fishermania is that the anglers, if they're in the lead, uh, have to stick on a microphone, put a, an earphone in one of their ears, and be slightly distracted by listening to us just bleating on and filling <laughs> the air time. They don't want to hear from us, they want to hear from the guys who are out there lakeside. And I don't want to distract Art Hillman. The only thing that could distract him is maybe us talking to him. Art, my goodness, you are living the dream. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Go on, Art, you're having a proper run now, mate, aren't you? I'm not complaining, Andy. Go on, lad. You going to ask, mate, yeah? Go on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not with you, mate. I've just, to these, <laughs> I've just said to these boys, you'd let me come and have 10 minutes, wouldn't you? Hey. Leave your rig set Help me sling some of these casters in. Oh, mate. I'm, no, I'll be on far bank, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have 10 minutes after it, Max. Leave your rigs on, mate. <laughs> oh, you're doing awesome, mate. So, Brilliant. so good. Brilliant. Nice steady match, isn't it? So what, what's been best rig? So you like your little, um, obviously your, your crystal dibber and your little yeah. bulk and your... Yeah, just swapping, swapping between that crystal dibber and this norm, this smaller dibber, it's a 0.1 float. Right. Um, 
and just just working it, Lord. Yeah, brilliant, mate. And trying to hold the fish here so they don't swim off. Yes, we don't want them next to you getting them, do we? No, definitely not. Oh, not to me left. Mate, you're doing an awesome job of keeping them there. Brilliant. It's so good to see. Just seeing from here, Art, you've had probably the strongest last little session than you've had so far. Yeah, it, to be honest, that quiet, that quiet patch in the middle, it was when the ripple went. Um, and now the ripple's back, as long as it's there, should should just keep be able to keep putting the odd fish in. Have you, have you tried on the bottom underneath them at all? Have you, I mean, I've felt no, I'm like you, I don't have a plummet. What's a what? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't mean, know. Just everywhere's 14 inches, mate, isn't it? That'll do. What, it's not 14 foot in here? <laughs> You'll find out when you jump in, pal. <laughs> hey. Let's not rule out Andy Power. Andy can <laughs> hear every single word you're saying, and Andy is only one and a half kilos behind Art Hilmy. Is there anything we can say to help you? And what can you do? Um, go on, stamp on Artemis Pole. <laughs> <laughs> go on, the power. You're doing awesome as well, and great to watch, mate. Yeah, struggling in the wind a bit. Struggling to hold the pole, so it's looking a bit difficult at the minute. You're really working at it though, mate, and you're going across and then coming back short and then going across again. Yeah. A couple working at it. How was, uh, how was the, the barbel situation going? Are you still getting the odd barbel every now and again, or is it mainly <laughs> F1's carp now? Um, it's either a little carp or a barbel, but it, you know, the barbel won't sort of... There's not loads and loads of them to line right. them up. Yeah, yeah. You're not really... You don't really know what you're going to catch next, to be fair. It could nice. be an F1 or carp. But even the carp on that big, to be fair. It's got really strong that wind now, hasn't it? Yeah, struggling a bit. Oh, go on. Is that how quick the bites have been coming, and or are you having to wait for them a little bit? Um. Ooh, bit of both. Oh, yeah, oh, that was nice. Nobody likes you that. <laughs> Yeah, just keep doing it, mate. There'll be another one there waiting for you. <laughs> Andy Power, currently second place, 43.375 kilos. One and a half kilos behind Art Hilmy with two weigh-ins remaining. Fisher Mania 2020. Andy Dyson shouldn't be discounted in third place. He's um, 40.665 kilos behind Art Hilmy. And Christian Jones is uh, on a bit of a charge, currently in fourth place. <clears throat> this is uh, just a couple of minutes ago on peg number one. Andy Dyson currently in third place. Just over four kilos behind the leader, Art Hilmy, with time running out. As we're in the final straight of Fisher Mania 2022. That's multitasking. It's a nice fish, yeah. That's a proper one, isn't it? It's fish in depth as well. Yeah. It's a bit, just in case you don't know, it's about a metre, Andy. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fish. Yeah, I wouldn't know. No, no problem. Andy never fished between, was it May and October, you never fish on the bottom? Oh, earlier than that, Keith. Probably <laughs> March and December. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go not only for two months. That's it. Yeah, not with Sandy. He loves that, that line, that short line. It comes really good for him wherever he goes. He just like, he really does make it work. It's most. a strong line in a lot of a lot of venues towards the end of a match. It is, so but they finish in three or five. Quite. Yeah, they're surprising how they're there with them. Nets coming out. Yeah. I really didn't think that it'd be like that, but it just shows oh. you how they're all, how they're all catching on different methods as yeah. well. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's been intriguing it because the three of them have obviously drawn very different areas. Yeah, the, the although it's a. a the, the lake's virtually the same size wherever you go, the same depth wherever you go. The topography of it makes it different. The way yeah. the wind blows, the way the sun hits it. And each three, each, all three of those have obviously made the right decision yeah. for their peg on the day. Yeah. I mean, Andy Power said, I can't win it with their funds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got issue. to fish for barbel because they're here. So Andy's gone straight out and he's got one now. Again. Just not quick enough or big enough. No. Yeah, well, positive for power. Andy Power, yeah. second place. Needs to close the gap on Art Hillmeet. We have two weigh-ins left. 
We're into the crucial time now in Fisher Mania. Who will take home the trophy? But more importantly, well, I guess maybe more importantly to the family, the £50,000 first prize. There are two weigh-ins remaining at Fisher Mania 2020. He's not exactly a runaway leader, but he's a consistent leader, Art Hilmy. This was as we were away on the break. Guess what? Art Hilmy caught yet another fish. He is so prolific. He's been incredible. Liverpool fan, isn't he? He's like the Mo Salah of fishing. This is the state of play before the next weigh-in, 44.9 kilos. That's gonna go up considerably. And in second place is Andy Power, 43.375 kilos. And it's been a little bit quieter there on peg 19. Well, this is a magnificent event. There are so many that think they are experts when it comes to putting on, but there's nobody more expert than uh, our team at Matchroom who spend a whole year organising this and the brains behind the whole operation is now with Claire Thomas. She is indeed and she has masterminded an incredibly competitive fisher mania. So Emily, just tell me how delighted are you that we've got about half an hour of fishing left and you could throw a net over the top four or five anglers? Well, it's fantastic, isn't it? We've got a great stage here at Westwood Lakes and like we said, we've got it it's competitive in the top four. And sometimes you lose that little bit of fisher mania. There can be one person running away with it. It's quite hard to stay track on that, but I think it's been fantastic for the viewers at home who are seeing all of these live scoring coming through seeing the reporting happening staying engaged but you've got the live spectators here as well walking around with the live scores saying right who's in the lead we've got some music here the atmosphere is really nice it's getting me thinking about what we're going to do for next year to make it even more exciting should we get some you know formula one grandstands in or a live dj sort of thing so yeah it's really fantastic and competitive exactly what we want I'm personally waiting for that trademark matchroom golden buzzer to make an appearance somewhere in the middle of the lake for the anglers to swim out to and bang at some point. We've got 25 anglers in the field for the first time this year. You must also be delighted with the presence of Sarah Taylor and Charlie Law, the youth champion. There are so many storylines. Yeah, I don't know about the golden buzzer yet. We're, uh, we sometimes have to draw the line between being too gimmicky um, at times, but I don't know, maybe there's a one way in, the one half hour way in where you hit the golden buzz and you get double weight. I don't know, I could be, uh, Barry might be sitting there going, no, 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 what are you doing to this beautiful sport? But look, it's great. In previous years, we've had the junior event, we've had the ladies event, and now all of a sudden it's like, no, we have one main event and that's open to everyone. We get the ladies champion in him, we get the national and youth champion in as well. And it's being competitive for them, um, which is, it, that's what should be happening. And anyone who's watching this, the younger generation, the next gen, they'll be saying, right, I want to get involved in this. It's 50,000 pounds for the winner. 10,000 for the runner-up and also we added in the sneaky little bonus of the section winner as well so it's 2,000 for each section winner and it just keeps people engaged with the tournament making sure they're still fighting for going there's the klaxon <laughs> there is the klaxon indeed and as you mentioned it's a life-changing amount of money a life-changing half hour coming up right here on Sky Sports let's get through to that penultimate weigh-in well, you can see Claire Thomas enjoying her first Fisher Mania. My first day at Sky was 1995. Was Fisher Mania. Welcome to the family and how it has evolved over the years. In what, half an hour's time? Oh, my goodness, the afternoon has flown. Somebody will be taking home the trophy and £50,000. The way things stand, it will be Art Hilmy because he has got the lead and he has been catching. But there's a, a real rush on for second place. This is Andy Dyson on peg one, who had 40.665 kilos, and he has caught. In second place is Andy Power over there on peg 19, and he has been a little busy. Unfortunately for Andy, he's just been little rather than very busy. And Art Hilmy has just been catching every few seconds. Let's get a feel of what is happening down there on the main stage. Um, join Andy Scott. Down at 10, we're ready to weigh in Christian Jones. Bank runner Kieran Marsden is going to bring that net out. And I just have to say, I hope Christian's not going to kick himself. He had that three, four and five uh, weigh-ins. That might have cost him uh, because six, seven and eight. How about this? 8.5, 6.4, 5.3. They reckon this one could be this this one could be near a 10. 
Let's see. Let's just see, there's some big fish in here. There's some big mirrors in here. Is this charge gonna be too late? Let's just have a look. Could second place be under threat? So it's not the 10 that we thought, but it is. Eight kilos, 50 grams. Eight kilos, 50 grams. So another one over eight kilos for Christian Jones, a 23 year old from Ellesmere Port. He's got good support, they're willing him on. Let's, uh, um, put pressure here. Pressure with these maths, I don't want to do it live. So obviously what I've done is I've just stood to the side and let everybody else do the maths. But we, all jokes aside, we want to get this right. Forty six point four two five for Christian. Forty six four two five down here at ten. Claire, let's get over to you. I'm not even going to attempt that arithmetic, Andy, but what I am going to do is keep you on top of this way and taking place down here at peg number one, where Andy Dyson is having a day and a debut to remember. Martin, his bank runners, just bringing the fish over. We've got two weigh-ins left and Dyson's still very much in with the shout and that was an absolutely heaving net full of fish. It'll be fascinating to see how much that adds up to. So we'll just come around here and take a peek at this screen. Oh, it's up over eight by the looks of it. Eight kilo, 75. Well, a fantastic sprint finish from a man who has looked really comfortable on this biggest of stages. So too, I believe, is the angler who's with Peter. Yeah, well, I can tell you there are phones, there are calculators in the crowd behind me going into overdrive. It's all about the big totals now. Matt, can we just see how uh, Andy's gone on in the last half an hour? He was telling me earlier that Andy, a veteran of 40 finals, so uh, he knows what he has to do, he knows what's at stake and uh, let's just see what he's managed to get in the bag this time round. There we go, some yeah. really big totals coming in uh, in his penultimate way in. Let's see how uh, Andy's going. We have one kilo. One kilo, seven seven five. Okay. One there kilo, seven seven five. Oh, okay. That's where we are. Over to you. It is getting tight at the top. It looks like Army is extending his lead, and the trophy in fifty thousand pounds will be making its way to East Yorkshire. He is one of uh, fourteen debutants out of the twenty-five anglers in the final, but he's a form fisherman at the moment. In third place is Andy Dyson on peg number one, who's making a late charge. Another one of our first timers when it comes to the final. Squeeze between them in second place, Andy Power, but less than two kilos was his last catch. Looks like the 50 grand and the trophy could be going to Art Hilmy. That's what Steve Cooker was saying. But there's quite a race on now for second place. Harry Bigler, by the way, had 2.275 kilos. Let's go down back to the water side. Andy Scott. Back at 15, Art Hilmy, he's had a great round. Every time I've come over, there's a fish. I think every time you've cut to it in the truck, this is a big load. Could this be the winning load? Just consistency. How many times have we said that today? Consistency is key, consistency is king. Plenty of carp there. So let's have a look. All eyes on the scales here. Where were we last time? 44.9 Art Hilmy after eight. Eight kilo, zero, two, five. Eight kilo, zero, two, five. Look at the crowd behind 15. That's, that's a great round for Art Hilmy. He's gone 6.2, 4.7, now 8.025. That makes his total at the moment 52.925 down here at 15. And he knows that, and he can hear it, and he's not cracking a smile yet. Oh, he's trying. We can't distract him. Oh, if this was cricket, you'd go to the clubhouse, have a pint and declare. 
I want to know the scores. Ju just don't jump in at end because you'll break your ankles. Yeah, just give it a little <laughs> step out. Just, just paddle a little bit. It still stands a fish there, right? It's uh, just a bit quiet, but then they come back in spells. Yeah. Just not, you're just not panicking. There's one now. Cool, isn't you? There's one yeah. now. There's one now. Come so on, talk us through it. Talk us through it. Well, it's just about keeping the rig tight because obviously the rules here dictate that you can't you can't fish over shorted. You, you've got to have it's restricted how far you can have between your float and your hook and so on. So it's just keeping the line tight because these F1s are ravenous but they're also very clever. Are you getting them swirling now, or are you just, obviously they're just taking it, so you're getting competing? To be honest Andy, want? I'm looking for signs, but the, the ripples, you know when it's hard to tell when they're swirling, because the ripples are that, that heavy. Yeah. Early on it was like that, and then all of a sudden you see them disappear, and then you've got to up the feed or change the pattern. Nice. Looks like a back shot there Andy. Yeah. Back shots, obviously, Art mentioned then keeping everything nice and tight, and you, you've got to use back shots. Uh, that comes to the fore more and more, even for shallow fishing. Normally, yeah. obviously, you're restricted um, with your, your limit, pull tip to float. Um, having that back shot on is just keeping it extra tight so the fish just basically they take your bait, suck your bait in, and then they're the, the hooked instantly. They hook themselves? Yeah, you, just hook themselves. Your back shot forces you to keep a yes, tight line yeah, as yeah, your float yeah. sinks, so you've got to keep it tight. You're either obviously, depending on the wind, which way the wind's going or the undertow, you either want a tight L or a tight J shape on the rig, and yeah, it uh, really but is. Cameras are currently trained on Peg One, which is uh, Andy Dyson, who is well, currently top of the leaderboard with 48.74 kilos. But that art is because we actually haven't yet uh, made it official. He's got quite nice a few carp hoovering up in his peg, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Bigger fish and he's catching up that arm there. It's so it's 50% bigger than Art's. Yes. Yeah, it's just that little bit quieter up there, isn't it? Obviously, yeah. Art's got a you know, catch sort of two, maybe three fish for, for one of Andy's. So yeah. it's a right exciting finish, this, isn't it? It will be. I tell you. 20 minutes remaining oh, here at Westwood Lakes Christian in Lincolnshire. Well. Christian Jones is on a charge. He's had a very good second half to Fishermania. He's got 21 minutes left to continue this charge and to work his socks off. £50,000 for the winner, £10,000 for second place, uh, £2,000 for your sections. He's got his eyes on a prize. Oh, decent fish. Decent fish as well. I think they're from down edge, Keith. I think he's yeah. catching fish down edge carp. That's yeah. where his eight kilos come from last time. Did it? I think so. However, every time we put a camera on Art Hilmy and they're just trained on him constantly, he catches a fish. He's doing what we brought the whole circus to town for, if to see could, him entertain. If you could do a perfect match and, and say a fish a perfect match, he has. Mm. One, one, basically one method, shallow for F1s and he stuck to his guns all the way through through his little quiet spell yeah. up to his good spells and he just made it work and fished it properly. I think anyone else may have panicked you know in um, in that state where obviously he started off catching well and then uh, he's gone quieter so they might have panicked and picked more rigs up but Art's just stuck to it. Art wants to know what the lead is. Okay Art, let me tell you, you have got 52.925 kilos which is 4.185 ahead of Andy Dyson who has moved into second place on peg one. Christian Jones is on a charge on 46.425 after just over eight kilos in the last half an hour. Pearl Andy Power has moved from second place down into fourth place, only 1.775 kilos in the last half an hour. Decent half an hour for Paul Wright and Jimmy Brooks, both had over five kilos, as did James Howarth, who's moved now into eighth place. So Art Hilmy, and has over a four kilo lead with time running out as we head to the final buzzer. Should I tell you something interesting? You've probably well, you've told not me interesting well, things on that, don't stop now. <laughs> but you've probably not noticed it on the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. The top five weights are each top weight in their section. So the fish have come from all around the lakes. Can you see that, Andy? Yeah. That's yeah. really, that, that's special, isn't it? That? It is, really is. I can't, it's, it's never been. It's um, never been like that. A fishermania like this, no. It's so good. I so said the charger that these boys are putting in now, obviously Andy Dyson and Christian Jones, it's still lots to play for all this, oh, isn't yeah. it? Oh yeah. really is. Andy's just slowed down a little I bit. I think Andy Dyson's got to do something, have a 
pretty good last 15 I minutes. The fact that Andy obviously is on them, them slightly bigger fish, he's uh, going to push him. He is. Yeah, but obviously Art's still Art's still catching as well. So yeah, exciting, isn't it? It's brilliant. Love it. <laughs> we're sure, <isn't> it? <laughs> We've had nine weigh-ins. We we're due one more. Up and down the country, down, yes. almost 3,000 anglers have competed in Fishermania to make it down to the, the final 25, 22 heats. We've got the ladies champion, the next gen champion, the reigning champion. They've come from the Netherlands, they have come from Germany. It has been quite a competition this afternoon. And poor Andy Power has been there in the top two all afternoon until the last half an hour. There are no words. No. All right. But you've got to find some. I think the conditions did for him, didn't he? Because he's yeah. fishing longer than the others. He's got more difficulty fishing, we, keeping his pulse. We slow, mentioned yeah. about how the wind had changed. Yeah. It had come more across and into Absolutely. his face and got stronger. Yep. And, and that's what's finished him off. Yep. And it's made Art's peg stronger. Mm. I'll tell you what we've not done, though. We, we, and I know it's about not the right time to really get technical. We've not spoken about the, the pulling the elastic, the puller bungs on the elastic, yeah. which has enabled these fish to be landed so much faster without bullying them. Yeah. So you use a lighter elastic, but you can shorten it yeah. while you're fighting them. Whereas in the old days, you'd have had a more powerful elastic to bully them and maybe even break the line or, or for the fish to pull off. Yeah, but now you can use a lighter elastic and shorten it because these, these new elastics stretch times 12. I mean, massive amount of stretch. Reduce the amount of stretch, get the fish in quicker, and there's Chris with another one. In form, peg 10, Christian yeah. Jones. As you know, last weigh in over eight kilos. That's twice he's had eight kilos. And we've just seen him put two and a half. He's on for another eight net. kilo this time. Yeah, I'm say he's had three calf, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's catching down there, catching calf. And when is the rock up down the edge. Yeah. Six kilos behind the leader, Art Hilmy, surely not. He would, uh, he would want to, I would think he'd need 12 kilos. Squeeze between them yeah. in the top three is Andy Dyson <coughs> on peg one. I mean, so he's over four kilos one. behind Art Hilmy. He's had at least one big carp, hasn't he, Andy? Possibly yeah. two. It is. It's the first time we've seen Art without a fish on, isn't it, this time? To be fair, he ain't got no bait on. He's not fishing. He's not in the water. He's, he's, he's normally coming back with the fish, isn't he? <coughs> 16 tense minutes remaining at Westwood Lakes. Is it beyond Andy Dyson? Is it too much for Christian Jones? Can Andy Power get himself back into the top two where he's been all afternoon and take home £10,000? Will Art Hilmy hold his nerve and continue catching? Or does he declare way out at the top of the leaderboard with time running out? Our debutant in the final. Who do you think it's worse for, Andy? Art. It's definitely worse for Art because obviously he's at the top, he's got to stay there, but he knows he's got two anglers in Andy Dyson and Christian Jones really chasing him down. And obviously the size of his fish, with shallow fishing, um, certainly with how he's feeding it and his rigs, it's not really geared for carp. And then he knows that obviously Christian and, uh, and Andy Dyson are catching carp, they're fishing, patient fishing, setting little traps on the bottom and just waiting for them for the bigger fish. Um, but obviously, he's, he's just relying on numbers. So he has Christian, so he's, he's got at least four, hasn't he? This, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Peg 10, Christian Jones. <coughs> Currently in third place, 46.425 kilos. Just a couple of kilos behind Andy Dyson in second place. Art Hilmy leading. Andy Power, fourth place. Looks like it's too much for the likes of Paul Wright, Jimmy Brooks. Harry Bignall, last year's champion. What a 12 months it has been. He's had his moments this afternoon, but uh, only one man has ever won back-to-back -back Fisher Manias. It, it looks like he's fishing slop that edge as well. Yeah, he's, he's fishing a little, 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 little bit of ground bait, bait with his casters in. He's cupping that in, dropping it on the top of it, and they're waiting for it. Yeah, oh, so he'll be still catching, by the way, yep. yes. down there, peg 15. That's it. So we're obviously where Art's loose feeding, uh, Christian, uh, he's obviously setting his little traps, he's putting his little bit of feed in, <coughs> setting his traps, so the fish come into that tiny little pile of bait, and obviously the biggest thing they can see there, probably on a worm head or something like that, yep. or a bunch of maggots, is his bait, and they just nail it every time. And he's fishing for one fish at a time, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, they can, I think at the start, obviously, um, you couldn't really do that because you're getting too many fish in yes. your peg, but now when everything has settled down and calmed down, you can, you can do that now. Andy right. Dyson, second place, peg number one, hasn't given up hope, continues catching, wants to get the bait out there, but again, 
artist matching him fish for fish. The art's picking them out of a shoal, isn't he? Rather than fishing for that one at a time, he's, he's yeah. got a shoal of fish there competing and he's trying to catch one or two. fish are generally smaller, but it catches yes. them quicker. Yes. Because of his, because his method that he's using fish and shallow. Exactly. And Andy uh, Dyson, obviously, is catching up bottom, but he's catching them carp. Yeah. Which is probably a carp, he needs two F1s to a carp. Right, I was going to say go nowhere, but you've got about three minutes to head to the kitchen, put the kettle on, get to the bar, wherever you're watching, have a little break, and come back and join us for the finale of Fishermania 2020. to the final straight of Fishermania 2022 and there's a flurry of activity down there on peg number one in the second place is Andy Dyson not enough time on a Saturday afternoon it seems for him nine and a half minutes remaining but he's catching Keith size of that fish as well that's four of arts there it is, and he's already had like at least two what we it, saw before on it is art playing one now as this well is peg yeah. 15 the leader art hill mate this is literally right onto the, the wire, out three, three of them into this. This looks like a better fish as well for art. <clears throat> Do you know what? You can't call it now. You can. Don't you these, can't call these top it. three. No. Christians come from nowhere. Yeah, what a run Christians art, had. Art's just, just plugged steady, away. Steady away. S steady away. Uh, Go on, the power. Yeah, it is coming back as well. Andy Power has been in the top two for eight of the nine weigh-ins that we've had this afternoon. We're approaching weigh-in number 10. For those that haven't seen Fisher mainly before, have you been for the last 27 years? But uh, we get to the final hooter, and it's whatever is in that net goes on to the final count. This is how things stand at the moment. Third place, Christian Jones is on a charge, peg 10, 46.25 kilos. Just ahead of him, second place, Andy Dyson. Art Hilmy, he's just hogged the cameras. Around 53 kilos. It's going to be a lot more than that when we have the final weigh-in. He's just concentrated and done it from start to finish. Yeah. He has, but the other two boys are uh, proper on the ch charge, aren't they? Yeah, it's just with another. So. <laughs> What and that'll be a carp. Though. It will be. It'll be a carp, so it... It'll be at least a kilo and a half, possibly. How far is he behind? He was only about five or six kilo behind, I think, wasn't he? Christian, far behind. Christian was six kilo. Six and a half kilo. Six and a half kilo behind, I, I think, think it's a little bit. Isn't it? He's going to need 12 kilo this way. It's going to be close, it's really close. They're all chunky, decent sized fishes, Captain, aren't they? Yeah, we did predict, if you remember at start, I said there'd be six people who'd be really close and not be much more than mm. £20 between everybody. You're right. And the power's in again, not on his short line. Well, he's on a surge for second, Andy Power, which would be £10,000. He's finished second on two occasions. It will be scant reward for what has been an outstanding afternoon, but things have dried up. Certainly not, though, on peg 15 for that man. Art Hilmy. If you notice the tension to detail, he's adjusted his rig after virtually every fish. Yeah. He's moved that, that um, back shot. The back, back shot. shot. Yeah. He's moved and put his float just how he wants it, pushed his bulk together a little more. It's so ah, important that, obviously, on, yeah. along with uh, feeding, the presentation in your rig, it's got to be absolutely bang on every time. Uh, and the shots they're using, they'll be slightly moving up the line, so just moving them back mm. into place, just so that bait's falling as natural as possible. Yeah, really, the... the, the Look at all the different contrasts, all the fishing as well. The set, down the yeah, everyone's different, Short, everyone's brilliant. different. Yeah. And the second and third can't do no more than just try and push it a little bit, because you no. can't push too much, because no. you destroy your peg. you just got to hope that arts dry up a little bit and Yon pushes on a little bit more. So Andy. We know he's had at least two decent ones, he's just another one. Yeah. 
And he's into one now, look. Yeah. Oh, I'll be praying for that Claxon to go. Yeah. <laughs> Please go. Yeah, it's been for the last three hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Peg one, second place, Andy Dyson. Second place wins £10,000. <clears throat> Considerable amount of money, a lot of fishing gear. The fish are fitter as well, aren't they? They, they pull back, they're not... Um, I, I think because of most of them fish with light rigs to catch F1s and cars, yeah. you have to have marry a nice medium between the two. Yeah, fish, fish too strong for the carp and you'll lose the F1s. Uh, fish too light for the carp and yeah. But obviously the shallow water as well, they just want to charge off. Good oxygenation as well, so they're going to fight harder. Landy says this is his first serious attempt at reaching the final of Fisher Mania and it's going to be an experience like no other. Another decent one. However, on his shoulder is Christian Jones <coughs> on peg 10. He's had a, a sensational second half of this final. Just fishing up against that reinforced bank. So it'll be a tiny again, bit deeper there because the reinforcements are the bank and they've just they rocked up to use one of Art's expressions. Yeah. Generally, they're coming out edge keys because people chuck all the bait in at the, the end, end and the, match, the, yeah. they remember. And Even they they're the not day. supposed to. Yeah, they remember. Then again, people fish the edge for the last half hour because they do that. So the fish are used to rocking up yeah. there to be fed they, anyway. They know it's going to come. Yeah. So you tell me they've got a memory of um, fish. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a half minutes remaining. Well, this is tense, isn't it? There's going to be a new name on the trophy. Likely to be Art Hilmy. Outside chance, it could be Andy Dyson or Christian Jones. Christian. Andy Powell got his sights on second place for a third time. There is a tension in the air around Westwood Lakes. I think Christian's make the comeback of all comebacks here. I really do. Definitely. His last four wanes will be best four wanes for anybody, I think, by far. I think he might overtake that, you know. I think Art's only just got to keep putting fish in. Mm. He's got to, got to keep putting odd fish in. He's got six kilo he's got to pull back. Andy Dyson's in again as well. What's, how far's Andy behind? Andy Dyson. So the four kilo. Four kilo. I tell you what, this is going to be really, really That's, close. Yeah, it's going to be tight. Really close because oh, Art's Art, Art, not caught as many. No, he hasn't got as many this one. No. This is probably his worst half an hour. Certainly in the, the recent times. Andy Dyson, peg one, second place, just over four <coughs> kilos behind the leader, Art Hilmy, with just over two minutes remaining. Does he have one more fish in him? Time for one more, time for two more. This is when you want your bank man to tell you, keep you informed down to seconds. Yeah, you need to see his Yeah, he's looking at his watch. Yeah. I think he can hear every single word you're saying, could yeah. you remember? Well, you, it, it. In fact, I think his bank runner's is running to find that, ringing around to find out what's happening. Yeah. Live. That's Harry Sullivan who's on the phone. Yeah, he's trying to find out what we're him. talking about and how close it is because he, he, he looks like he's had five minutes out without catching. Can he get one more in to secure the £50,000 in the trophy? This is going to be Andy really, Dyson really close. Second, peg one. It is going to be close. And to be honest, we didn't see this coming between yeah, just up one. Art and anyone else, did we? No. We saw no. it between Art and Andy. Go on, Andy Art. Power. <coughs> yeah. He Does really it? wants that hooter now, doesn't he? Yeah. really wants that Claxon now. A minute to go to catch a whopper. But if he puts that in, whoever chasing him has got to catch a fish. Yeah, yeah. That's good. In. That's a better one as well. Nice, a bigger F one. He needs to. He's got time for one more if he's quick. If he goes straight out and it goes under. He's got a pull, Steve, hasn't he? He's got a pull. He's got I, a know pull. pull. I know how to pull. I know how to pull. That's it.
I want to go straight away. You need to go straight away. You need to pull that. You can hear me? <laughs> Hard. In one. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, obviously it. the way they're fighting now, the upper fish now, it's they're gonna really struggle. unlikely they're yeah. going to get them in, in time, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's it now. What an amazing final. It's been amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Competition Brilliant. complete. Awesome. Crowds around Art Hilmi on peg 15. The debutant in the final, the man in form in the country. It has been an absolute masterclass. He doesn't know it yet that he's the champion. We've got to have the official 10th weigh-in. And there has been a charge from Christian Jones <coughs> and Andy Dyson. We don't have, know it yet. Do we, we don't know. Nobody knows. Don't know. Nobody knows. No. I think it's a lot closer than anybody thinks, Rob. Mm. A lot closer. You're back on the fence now because you said before <laughs> that he was going to walk it. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have seen that coming, would you? You could not have seen what's yeah. happened happen. Not with the charges, especially no. that late charge from Christian's been amazing. Yeah. There's the uh, go on the bag, yeah. What an awesome final. Self-taught angler, Art Hilmi. Discovered fishing on the banks of the River Hull. Caught nothing on his first day. Took on board the advice from those around him. Good friends with John Alexander on peg four. Said they'd split the money if they won it. So we say Art Hillman's going to be £50,000 richer. It might be that John Alexander is £25,000 richer. We have to have the official way in. But come whatever, he's had the afternoon of his fishing career. He's loved every single second. Relaxed, controlled. Let's go down and have the final weigh-ins. First of all, we head to Peter Stevenson. Yeah, I can only imagine what Andy Power and his uh, bank run are matter feeling. It's just been one of those days. Halfway through, they were uh, nearly there, looking at 50,000, maybe looking at 10,000. Matt's going to bring the... Uh the net out for the final time. Let's complete the formalities, but it's just not been their day, and uh, they must be cursing their luck at the way that, uh, that money was in the, fi the fingertips halfway through the day, but it has slipped through those fingers as the day has gone on. Confirmation of their final total. Six kilo, one, two, five. Six kilo, one, two, five. There you go, let's get straight over to Andy Scott. I'm down at 10 with the man with all the form coming down the back stretch, Christian Jones, Kieran Marsden. Let's, uh, let's bring that, that net in. I'm out of breath, I've just run down the bank. But it has been breathless down here on 10. So from six onwards, Christian's gone eight, five, six, four, five, three, eight, zero, five, zero. And he was just, he didn't want that klaxon to come. Now that is a big load. All eyes, this is gonna be crucial here. The battle for second. The battle for second. 10. Three, two, five for Christian in the last round. Ten, three, two, five. Let's get this total right. So Christian with an incredible run. Just want to reiterate that from six through ten, he ends up with a total weight of fifty-six point seven five zero after ten. Let's get back over to Claire Thomas. Thanks very much, Andy. We'll let you get your breath back. Well, our breath down here at Peg One has been baited because Andy Dyson has conjured up a real sprint finish down here. There are an awful lot of fish in that net. And he's been a bit of a smiling assassin today, Andy Dyson, dancing away down here, enjoying the tunes from the DJ to his left. But when push has come to shove, he has been all business and put in a debut to remember. Family watching on at home will be eagle-eyed right now, waiting to see what the final tally is. Seven kilos, 600. 7.6 kilos then for the man from crew on debut.
looking happy indeed with his day's work. What a way to acquit himself that on the first time of asking on the biggest stage of the angling world, is he in with a chance of that £10,000 prize? Is he in with a shot at the big time? There are £50,000 to be won, a life-changing amount of money. But of course, one man could beat him to it. Art, I believe, is with Andy. OK, so everyone just needs to calm down here because this, after all those hours of fishing, in what, is what matters. Harry O'Sullivan, for the last time today, let's bring that net up onto the bank. Let's just see. This is going to be close, guys, we think. Three kilo, two, two, five. Three, two, two, five. So let's make sure that we've got that total right before anybody celebrates and the fireworks go off. So, Art Hilmi's final total after 10 is 56.140. I repeat that. After 10, his final weight is 56.140. Harry, you check, sign that off. The, uh, the, the Let's just crunch these numbers. Let's make sure we're right here, guys. Well, a lot of confusion behind the scenes. We've got a lot of amateur mathematicians behind Keith and I. I wouldn't trust my O level in mathematics, but I think we have the story of all stories in Fishermania 2022. The silent assassin came up on the outside, fished in 2019, Christian Jones, a final catch of 10.325 kilos. Of course, there could be another surprise somewhere around the lake, but that is flabbergasting. Unbelievable. You, 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 could, you couldn't write that to finish like that, could you? That last fish is, is added just, just enough. Yeah. And we, we noticed that parts had slowed up that last half an hour. He's been steady away all day, and that's probably been his worst weighing yeah. all it day. Has. It has. Unbelievable. Still don't think he knows, does he? Unbelievable. No, he doesn't. He obviously doesn't know he's won it yet. He knows he's close, but he doesn't know he's won it. He said he was having a comeback of all comebacks. I think he might know. Oh, started smiling. <laughs> Andy May, former champion. Steve Cook, former champion. Have you ever known anything like this before? Your faces when they had that final weigh-in and you were counting on your fingers and your toes. I wasn't counting, I don't do maths. <laughs> we, 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 we knew it was getting close. We knew it was getting yeah. close and just pulling him back. I was working well, your face. But we couldn't. <laughs> your jaw dropped. You couldn't believe it. You really couldn't. Is that because you had a bet on him, Rob? Did you have a bet on Alec? <laughs> My bet might have been on Art. He's a whole boy. We thought it was going back to the banks of the Humber for a second year in a row. Art has had the last well, 90 minutes been sensational. And then he goes quiet in the final wave. And then Christian Go Jones gets 10.325. Nobody expected that. We knew he had a big bag. He's been averaging about eight kilos for the last hour or so. Andy Dyson, and I think word is getting out, and I think the officials are about to make it official that we have a new Fishermania champion. Do I go in there? Yes, you do! <laughs> Christian Jones Brilliant. has made a major splash and is the new Fishermania champion. The story of all stories. Incredible. I've seen every Fishermania, Rob, been involved with quite a few, and I've never seen anything like that. Never. Unbelievable. I've never known a fish. I mean, you like it for weights and how close it was, but especially the finish as well, just to cap it all off. One fish, one fish, one fish either yeah, way exactly. made the difference. Just one fish. Well, in this, awesome.
I was quite convinced that I had that four kilo. Yeah. I was quite convinced he had enough. Yeah. We couldn't quite see him, Keith. Here. We couldn't see him no. because of the crowd got bigger and bigger in this last half an hour. This end, we couldn't see him. And during the break, we were working out. Well, he needs, he needs to catch that twice. He needs to catch yeah, that twice. Yeah. I <laughs> needed just four and a half kilo each way. If Jamie repeated, if, if, yeah. if Christian repeated his weight, yeah. And then suddenly a ten kilo yeah, comes I mean, out. You couldn't, who could protect a ten kilo in the last well, half hour? Over twenty pound in the last half an it's hour. It's not been we a ten kilo catching, all day. Yeah, we knew he was catching big face and cart when they've come in that, that edge. Well, let's get down there and, and sense some of the shock and the adulation on peg number 10 and join Andy Scott. Christian. Just Christian. Chris. Christian, we are live. Come on, come on in from nowhere. Try and just sum up how you're feeling now. What a run. It's yeah. never over until it's yeah. over. Did you think coming down that stretch, I'm on a run here, I can do this. 10, 10 kilos in that last catch. Well, my bank runner, Kieran, kept saying to me, you're too far behind, just fish for second, fish for yeah. second. So I wasn't really thinking, I was just... The edge was good at the end and then I couldn't believe when they said I'd beat Arter it. I couldn't believe it. Unbelievable. Are you getting live scores? Do you know what you've got to do to catch him? And did you think I can yeah. do this? I, I, when it started going down the edge, because they were bigger fish, you're seeing some of the fish I was catching were proper carp. And I know Arter fishing shallow would have been catching more F1. So I knew if they kept coming, I could catch up. But I didn't think I would. It's amazed me, to be fair. Let's just have a look at that run. So from six uh, weighing 8.5, 6.4, 5.3, 8.050, and then 10 yeah. in the last. That's just consistency. You had that little bit of a lull that everybody said would happen, but didn't yeah. bother you. Yeah, well, well, what I thought was, in that time when I had the lull, just try and catch what I could and keep feeding the edge and wait for him to come back. And I started seeing a few fish coming in, and when I dropped back in, so of probably two hours to go, the first fish was a six pound carp, and that got me back into it, you know, straight away. Did it fish how you thought it was going to fish? Because there's a lot of talk going around about all these F1s, but actually yeah. it wasn't the F1s that yeah. won the day. No, it, it was different. I expected shallow fishing for me to play more of a part. I know Arter caught shallow, but I couldn't make it work. So I just decided to bin it off, save me having to you know, swap about too much, just concentrate on two things. And luckily my edge has been good. I want to make sure before we go, we get a, a word with Kieran, who just said that he's too far behind. That's great bank running, yeah. Kieran, in fact, let's bring him in now. Kieran, he just told us live on air, he kept telling me, you're too far behind, you're too far behind, you can't win it, you're fishing for a second. Shows what you know. I was just pushing him all the way to the end. I said to him, I said, um, Art has not caught much this last half an hour. I said, uh, we never thought we was going to win it. No. We both thought that, but in the end, it's turned out it's great, brilliant for him, isn't it? You know? Great performance. <laughs> I just got to say, at 23, you know, yeah. you're an experienced fisher now, obviously yeah, a fishing yeah, coach, yeah. but did you think coming here today that you could do this, you could achieve this with the draw as well, Peg 10, there's a yeah. lot of talk about this this part of the lake. But I, think, I know the lake as well, we fish it a lot in the festival, so we know the lakes, I think that gives us a big advantage. Um, so I did fancy that if I drew a peg, I did have a chance, but I just, you never really believe it's going to happen until it happens, you know what I mean? I still couldn't believe it when they told me at the end. <laughs> I still can't believe it now. <laughs> Listen, they've crunched some serious numbers there, right? You are Fisher Mania 2022 winner. Christian Jones, congratulations to you. Thank you. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. At one point, it looked as though it was between Art Hilmy and Andy Power. Then Andy Power dipped out of the top two. Andy Dyson went on a charge. We knew that Christian Jones was doing well. We just had no idea just how well he was doing. Then a final catch in the last half an hour, he got up to the final seconds of 10.325 kilos. Gives up a weight during the course of the afternoon, five hours of continuous fishing of 56.75 kilos. The magic number which wins him the trophy and £50,000 by, well, 0 0.410 kilos, 400 grams. Commiserations to Art Hilmy, who thought he was going to be at least in Selway. Well, he thought he was going to win it, let's be honest. He thought he had won it. He was taking the T-shirt off. He was ready to go in the water. He's probably spending the money, and he's finished in third place. So all he has to take home are the memories of an incredible and ultimately art-breaking afternoon for, for Art. Unbelievable. But, I mean, what a competitor, what a man. Andy Power in fourth place, had eight good half hours, and then he kind of finally lost it in the last hour. But a true champion, a deserving winner, making a big splash this afternoon at Westwood Lakes, is Chris Jones.
ripples and reverberations around the angling world key. Absolutely, young man. As, as I said, he was Sarah Taylor's teammate in the juniors. It's um, it's it's a remarkable thing. It's it's, it's unprecedented. Not, it's not the sure. win, Keith. It's always won it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not the win. It's Absolutely. always won it. But all, all the top four have fished differently. Yeah. Yeah. So we have four different methods. The top five have all come from different sections. Yeah. It's just a phenomenal venue for this kind of event. Today it's proved anyway. We, we turned up this morning not knowing what we're going to expect. No. We certainly didn't expect that. Nope. 30 minutes to go. We didn't know what no. to expect. Nope. No. 90 seconds to go. We didn't know what to expect. We thought after two hours we had it sorted, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we knew what was happening. <laughs> what yeah. do we know? <laughs> I love what he does. Unbelievable. <laughs> He's going to join us in a few moments. He did say when we asked him before, and if, if you did live the dream and, and you wouldn't fish a mania, what would you do with the, with the money? And he said he's going to invest in a new van. Good boy. <laughs> that would be a special one, wouldn't it? People say it's an old man's sport. 23 years of age. Yep. Was in the final back in 2019. Has been in finals as a teenager. And is, and we'll have to check this, I think he's the youngest ever winner of Fisher Mania. How old was Pete, Pete Black when he won at uh, Hayfield? We'll check, we'll get the yeah, stats. Yeah, you're the youngest 21. looking, Andy, obviously. Oh, thank you yeah, very much. Only on this line up. But look Steve at that, that is yeah, how he won it. Was went quiet. Something. After an hour, went quiet. Had a, must have thought he was out of it after four weigh-ins and then went on a mighty charge. Brilliant. That's a Manhattan. That's the way you want to see it going. Yeah. yeah. They are tough to bits for him. I fish in the same circuit as Christian, so he's such a fantastic a angler. Great young lad. Lovely lad. It's a wise head on young. It's body. just, yeah, just one, one hell of an angler. He's brilliant. Uh, what a performance. I'm still in shock, really. <laughs> I, I, I thought, I got it. It's still in shock. It's just, Do you know him as an angler, Andy? I know him really well. If he's on the same circuit, Does Keith, he? I've known him. I uh, used to coach their sort of like youth team as well uh, with, with Matt Chade. Oh, was that Tame side? Uh, no, with Matt Chade, junior oh, Matt Chade. Chade. Yeah. Uh, and just to see him come up through the ranks with Sarah, as you also already said, uh, it's just brilliant, absolutely tough to bits for him. Um, and he knocked me out in a competition a few weeks ago, but we won't mention that. We won't mention that. <laughs> I think I saw it. Hey, knocked out by no, a champion. No, 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 don't mention it, Keith. <laughs> Told you, it's our subject. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, fresh faced, victorious. 50 grand better off. 50 grand better off, yeah. Comes from Ellesmere Port, another one of our Wirral anglers like the legend, Jamie Hughes, Steve Openshaw, fishes on Andy's, uh, on Steve's uh, lake, should I say. Of course, we've had Sarah Taylor here today, the women's champion. Another one from the, uh, the Sporting Peninsula. I'm claiming him, I live around the corner from him. <laughs> but my goodness gracious. Well done, Charlie Law as well, the junior, he's finished up in 12th place. Brilliant. Winner of the junior national, the youth national. Yeah, he's pushed Jamie all the way as well, hasn't he, next big. Yeah. yeah. Not far yeah. behind him. Great experience for him. Doing some uh, like, like uh, Jamie next big. Yeah, Jamie's beaten by a fish, yeah. basically. Or one it. fish. Alongside him, Andy Dyson, who finished in a very creditable second place. I mean, he must have thought in that final way, in the final half an hour, 7.6 kilos he thought well, hey that's maybe enough to put the pressure on art in fact he went above art hilmy but only into second place and yeah. the man that went head first into the water luckily it's only three foot deep he, he's not the tallest of anglers so he was <laughs> yeah. never in danger it was christian jones and so he joins an illustrious list on the roll of honor the 25th different name in 29 years of Fisher Mania. Andy May, 2016. If we can take it that far back, we will go back to Steve <laughs> Cook in 1999. <laughs> need the widescreen <laughs> TV turn the other way up. <laughs> if my maths are right, 1999 was the year that he was born, I think. Is that the right? new champion. Yeah, that want to make you feel old. Thank you. Well, it could be right. It was a good year, that, for fishing. And it's going to be life-changing, isn't it? Wherever he goes now, people are going to want to talk to him. Like you, Andy, he's going to be signing autographs and Brilliant. posing for photos. Oh, it's fantastic for him. They say at that age as well, a massive... Well, we, we all knew we had a massive future ahead of him, so... Like we said, it's not the fact that he's won it, it's how he's won it, that's the thing. Yeah. I was really impressed with him the last time he qualified, because wasn't he... Was he next to Jamie that day on the far bank of Hayfield? Uh, I'm not sure, Keith, I can't... 
I can't remember. It, it might have been actually. Fish in the pellet. It might. Right? It might have been. Yes. It's got a really cool lad on it. Really has. It like. It, it's like a, a younger Bennett. Is it? Really cool, oh. calm, isn't it? It is, it's just like a mini bugger. Yeah. yeah. And the, 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 the communicate talk to each other a lot, yeah. don't they? they, they, they do. I was straight around there giving him a hug, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so you know, if, how, how long ago was it, Andy May? You'll, you'll remember this. Yeah. When we were told there were no youngsters coming into the school. Oh, I'll tell you what. And the youngsters coming it's, into the school weren't good enough. It really is good. And they're so keen as well. Really, really keen. It's, it's fantastic to see. Yeah, the future's definitely bright. This is yeah, what he is. wants. Yes. That is what every angler in the UK and well beyond wanted to win the trophy. It says Fishermania Champion 2022. They're going to be carving the name of Chris Jones on that. He's making his way around the, or snaking his way around the lakes, heading towards the podium. Remember what was on offer today. 10,000 second price, 2,000 for the section winners, 50,000 pound for the winner. And that's not immaterial, it is life changing, but what they wanted was to get their hands on the trophy. And how good as well for the image of the sport. Sometimes they say, oh, it's your, your daddy, your granddad. This guy is 23 years of age, a proper sportsman. Concentration. I think he's still young enough to fish a youth world championship, isn't he? Yeah. Like 20, under 23s? Yeah, under 20, uh, I think, yeah. Something like I might be 25 feet. Yeah. Loads of ability. Yeah. Loads of ability. There's a generation that's grown up with this type of fishing, snake lakes and F1 fishing, that think like one. And, and Andy's, I, I said this morning that Andy Bennett thinks, thinks yes. like an F1. And he's one of these young generation that are in that category. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Right, I think it's almost time to get over there to the podium. They're getting the successful anglers in place. Andy Scott has made his way up the stairs and let's make it official. Andy Scott, take us away. Well, ladies, well, ladies and, gentlemen, and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause for all of our anglers in what I think you will all agree was a fishermania that will live long in the memory. What a competition. Let's first go to our runner-up who receives a cheque for £10,000 from the Matchroom Multi-Sport Managing Director Emily Fraser from peg number one with a weight of 56.340 kilo. It's Andy Dyson. There can only be one winner in one of the closest and most dramatic finishes we've ever had in this tournament. From peg number 10, with a weight of 56.750 kilos, it's Christian Jones. He receives a cheque for £50,000 and of course the title Fishermania champion of 2022, it's Christian Jones. The king of Fishermania, Chris Jones, 23 years of age, from Ellesmere Port on Merseyside. He's going to be posing for a lot of photos in the years to come and he's going to have to give some consideration on how he spreads the wealth 50,000 pounds but fully deserved for well one of the probably the most magnificent achievement in the history of this okay. incredible event you run into the last hour Rob we were feeling sort of sorry for uh, Andy Power who had led for quite a bit of time was pushing it and pushing it and he dropped off and then Ark up who've been in there all the way through, we thought, that's right, it, it's done. So and then for that to happen, I feel yeah. really sorry for Art to, to be how he was, for us saying, that's it, it's done and dusted. And then for him to come out at traps like that, that last half an hour, unbelievable. It just shows you, that's the beauty of fishing, that's the beauty of yes. our sport. Yes. You, just, you never know. Not in you never 